It has all been coming down to this. We gotta turn big dreams into Without further ado, let's get rolling! Good afternoon, good morning and good evening everybody wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship for the final monthly final of the South America region. It's very bittersweet. I'm big sad as you can see as is Trav. Teddy's still smiling as always. Uh, Trav, I'll start with you. How are you feeling today, mate? I'm on the brink of crying, I will say, you know, it's sad. Last one <laughs> final, you know, Europe yesterday is home region. The last one, I was I was a little bit sad, but this is well and truly the end of the monthly finals for this year. And let's just hope to finish it with a bang. Absolutely. So, Teddy, South America is that very region. Is there anything you've got your eye on today here? Well, there are some big possibilities, especially in SA West. So I'm really excited to see how everything pans out and see that final leaderboard, really. South America is always a good time. Some teams, of course, already locked themselves in for Worlds across the globe. Some still battling it out for that LCQ. And speaking of which, we're going to talk a little bit more about the last chance qualifier because we have also announced where it's going to be and when it's going to be. 7th of October, it's also going to have group stages, which I'm sure to the entire Brawl Stars community, that comes as a huge relief. Many have been asking for it for years. I cannot wait to see how that will fare. And of course, on October over the 8th, that is when those four golden ticket matches for the World Finals will be distributed to those lucky winners. Watch it live over at events.brawlstars.com and of course it'll be over in Katowice in Poland. No live audience, but again, save your money up for those all important World Finals flight tickets. Absolutely so. And here is the leaderboard for South America East. FA Mini Peckers right out on top. Consecutive back-to-back -back monthly final wins mean that they've already locked themselves in for the World Finals and clash by making the top eight this month have also secured their place for the LCQ. But of course, bragging rights, cash, all still up for grabs in this side of the region. Super Anagardis below that, Mystic Esports didn't quite make it this year, but no doubt about it, we'll be back to battle it out next year for sure. And the other side of things as well, we'll take a look at how the region is faring up there because this is where things get really quite interesting. Super Anagardis, despite winning the monthly final last month, did not make it into the semi finals. And that is a huge deal for them. They are currently sitting in that LCQ position, but I've got to watch now from the sidelines in that respect as well. On this side of the region, however, we've got Super Anagardis against Mini Peckers first. That is going to be our first matchup for today. Clash versus Mystic Esports following that. It's going to be similar matches to what we've seen actually in previous months, right, Trap? Yeah, I mean, it is seeming very, very similar, and we've seen the same teams come out on top of them pretty much month in, month out, with, I think, a couple of outliers, but I think, you know, this month, we can be expecting something similar. FA Mini Peckers has just been at the absolute top of the region throughout the whole thing, and Clash being their main rivals, but usually fall short, too. Clash versus Mystic, Super Guys versus Mini Peckers. It's been a deja vu recurring here, but hey, it's the last monthly final of the year. Anything can still happen, Teddy. And of course, make sure that you are tuning in over at event.brawlstars.com. That is where you can sync in your Supercell ID there and make sure that you take advantage of all the exclusive opportunities that VSC is able to offer you in game. Get some rewards and get some bling, get some gold, get some tokens. And most importantly, Teddy, as you know, as you've already claimed, your uh, your Teddy uh, spray from last month now uh, gets those all important exclusive BSC rewards and flex them on your friends, flex them on your oppositions. Our predictions are pretty much in line as they were yesterday as well. We got a bit heated on the casting desk yesterday in the EMEA region, but uh, I'll go with you, Travis. You're always very opinionated when it comes to your predictions. What are we thinking here? I mean, I think it's pretty clean cut, isn't it really? I think Mini Peckers have been at you know the, the pinnacle of this region for so long, as I just said before on the Clash. They been their main competitive, so I think these first two games are pretty clean cut. I imagine the grand finals should be as well, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, anything can happen in this region. Anything can absolutely happen, as we know this region is full of surprises. But again, that's our predictions here on the casting desk. Teddy, give us your thoughts as well, just briefly why you feel like that's going to go the way that you feel. Well, I believe that FA Mini Peckers have yet to drop a single match, not just in monthly finals, but also in monthly qualifiers. 
which like I don't expect them to slow down at this point. It's the final month. I think they take it. Let's talk about Super Mario Gardens first, of course. Had a bit of a troublesome time in these semi-finals up against FA Mini Peckers, but Kaba, Little Ninja, and Hubalea definitely this month trying to turn things around. They've managed to get two sets uh, across the course of this year against this very team, FA Mini Peckers, but it has been a troublesome one, Trav. But uh, I mean, they, they got smiles in their faces. That's what you love to see, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's exactly the point. They're making loads of monthly finals this year. I'm sure they've made quite a lot of cash along the way. Sadly, they won't have made Worlds or LCQ this year, but, you know, they're smiling, they're ready to fight, and hopefully they'll be able to take uh, FA Mini Peckers down this month. And, you know, they've had so much difficulty against this team, and uh, I'm sure just, just once, just once this year, they'd love to pull out something uh, completely miraculous. Anything can happen in South America, but nonetheless, this squad has been a consistency this year, Teddy. Motep, Firecrow, and Pekka, back-to-back monthly finals champions, and they've yet to be dethroned, and that is a huge statement here. Absolutely so. The most dominant team in the region, and honestly, looking at all regions throughout the world, maybe the most dominant team in the world was in their own region. They've been the ones setting up the trends and showing everyone what it takes to be on the top so far undefeated and i'm sure that they're hoping to make the rest of the year so this final monthly final um you know another victory and make sure that they show everyone that they are the team that is undefeated unbeatable in their home region They've been that immovable object from start to finish and looking to end things on that same high. Honestly, FA Mini Peckers are just that team. They are this guy in South America, Trav, and what is it going to take to topple them at this rate? I mean, I don't think there's anything that I can say that's going to help any team beat them, to be fair. I don't know what it takes to beat them. <laughs> seen them being beaten you know like how can you be a team who just constantly wins and constantly shows really no flaws uh they just haven't really had that much come up against them this year and i feel like worlds is definitely going to be the massive massive tester for them to see if it's just you know they they've got everybody completely locked down in this region or they really are just that good of a team yeah, Clash have been able to take them to the fifth and final set twice in the grand final stages, no less, in April and June. But even that was not enough to deter them from just continuing this advance. And Super Runner Gardas, I mean, I, I, again, having gained just those two sets over the course of the year on, on different months, one set each time, I'd like to hope that they can maybe take it to a fifth and final set here today. It's going to take a lot, for sure. I think we were relatively straightforward in terms of our predictions for this one. But nonetheless, you know, Super Runner Gardas sometimes do bring something out of the bag teddy and as we know right when it comes to the format being the power match format you know if you're used to playing power league in game of course and a bit of a veteran there you'll absolutely know how relevant how important how essential it is to get those picks and bands correct on the day and you know with that in mind when it comes down to that draft is there anything that you know if you were coaching super Red regardless from the sidelines that you'd be able to suggest there might be a weakness in the side of fa mini packers well i i don't know specifically what their weakness would be but i think that Taking some risks here would be a good call because it, it's been an entire year. It's been five monthly finals where no one was able to beat them. It, it tried something different, even if it is desperate. Huh? Well, Teddy will catch up with you in just a bit. And Trav, I'll, I'll let you take the lead on this one, mate. You've got, some, uh, <laughs> got something to say about this poll, I feel. I mean, I feel like everybody should have something to say about this poll. 56% to <laughs> so these guys been, Have the community been watching this region for the rest of the year? Or have they just decided to show up today and watch? Because 56% in favor of the heavy, heavy underdogs. I, I was expecting like 95 to 5 or something like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy to rally behind Super Renegades in a big upset here. I feel we're pretty decent at setting the table when it comes to these matches and giving a bit of an insight as to what the previous months has uh, laid out to be. But I get, you know what? hey, I'm all for it. I'm all for the underdog story here as well. I am that percentage on side with Super Renegades here as the bands and the picks come in immediately. That first pick there for every minute peckers for Crystal Arcade being tired, which I quite like there for sure. I love the bands as well for Squeak, for Cordelis and Shelly, absolute musts. Double Spike Band, which is not the craziest things in this side of the region. Spike is a very common pick, actually, in the majority of maps and modes. It's just very versatile and definitely is going to be picked up and stepped up quickly. Crow as well, very, very prevalent in this region also. And uh, for that reason, still on the table here could be a potential idea. But certainly, uh, the Tara is going to be a huge deterrent on this. Speak of the devil, there's the Crow. Makes a lot of sense to me so far. But you're going to pair this with something on those sidelines to match that aggression. 
Rough's roughs, breaking things open, gives themselves a bit of space and time to buff up the, their teammates. Uh, I think that's pretty pretty wise. Yeah, I don't mind what Super Renegades have brought to the table so far. You know, I, I don't really mind Tara as a first pick either. It's just you've kind of got to get control of your lane early on or else you're going to struggle quite heavily. If you get control, if you get that pull, then you're going to be absolutely chilling for pretty much the rest of the game. It's so hard to pinch you out or even aggress the smallest amount when you're putting your life at risk when that, uh, that gravity comes in. So we'll, we'll see if that does play out as it sh probably should with Fico Dominant as laying the majority of the time. And then we're going to see a bow coming in as well. I usually complain about this pick quite a lot, but you know, because there's that kind of one choke point that heads towards the gem mine, throwing the mines down there is going to be a big, big help. Yeah, I'm always wanting to defend it. Honestly, I think it works really, really well. Uh, many teams as well tend to forget about the mines, even after all this time and triggering them. Not necessarily the easiest of things under pressure. And if you don't see them lay down and you may be respawning back into the spawn, if there's a lack of communication there, then it can really show its worth as a pick. And Stu is that aggressive side lane again coming in for the side of a few mini peckers. Again, the uh, the former uh, Zest squad have already locked themselves in for the world finals. So we're going to go now with the third and final pick. and. Again, that spike being banned, which would have been a great brawler to have into the stew. They're going to have something else in mind unless they want to put the roughs on that particular side. But I'm assuming the crow is going to be their mid of choice here. And in terms of aggressive ideas, it just limit, limit them ever so slightly as to what they can realistically go for here. But Poco, maybe they're going to play that in mid then. I mean, I'm not really feeling that that is the pick for me. Or just he's a bit more aggressive. Even like an Otis wouldn't have been the worst thing to have on that on that side lane. But I'm not really feeling this comp, to be honest, on the side of Super Renegadas. Yeah, I'm not sure about it either. I think the Poco's definitely thrown a bit of a spanner in the works for me because... I feel like they could have just had a bit of a better mid, you know, Gus still on the table, something like that. It's always yeah. very solid. Uh, some TPs with Grey or something like that. Still very, very good. I feel like a bit of range definitely would have been quite helpful against this composition that FA Mini Peckers have kind of brought to the table. You know, outranging the bow can just go such a long way and therefore not having to go forwards and, you know, cross the territory where the mines are going to be. But at the end of the day, we'll see if this does pay off. And, you know, we said they have to take risks and maybe the risks that they need to take is, is the poker. You know, so many options realistically there. Brock, Carl, I mean, this, I mean, Carl would probably been my kind of preferred idea here, but nevertheless, it is Super Early Guards that have a bit of mid control so far. Fire Crow, though, Helia for the left hand side. And, oh, there was a little bit of an exchange there where Pekka just was able to close the gap. And again, Super Early Guards will be a bit more cautious around that, immediately losing control and the support from beyond from Motep will force back their Hubley on the right hand side. And now, support from the side of the roughs will push back that Tara. Nevertheless, Firecrow going to continue his advance onto things and just going super in on the aggressive support from Pekka. Lovely clearing up there from many Pekkas. Yeah, I like this from Firecrow. He's got control and he's trying to cycle out these, you know, a nice tank there from Pekka as well for the landing. Gets a lot of that damage out of the way and Firecrow just cycling supers down the side. Three gems laying on the floor though and Cowbear is going to be able to just go forwards and pick up a couple of those to even out this gem count. And how much FA mini Pekka control have had, it's kind of surprising to see that they're not further in the lead. But at the end of the day, Cowbear is doing a great job over that right hand side and Lele Ninja just really struggling against Firecrow here, eventually getting some great connections whilst he doesn't have the super, and that's going to go quite a long way. Quick jump in, and the slow as well to follow will make then Pekka a bit more susceptible to damage, but he's juking nicely and able to heal up now with his squad coming back in. Tara's super available to Motive as well, and that's certainly a concern. It can just be a complete enough game changer. Cowboy is very close to the mid there. It's a bit concerned for him. A bit of poison trickling down, but nonetheless, no support there. It's not really too much. But Calvo can do on the left-hand side. He's got gems as well. And Motep, if he lands this super, it could be devastating. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> talking about landing the super, <laughs> he really doesn't. But at the end of the day, I mean, they're still not in a bad spot. Lele Ninja's going to get a good heal low there. And Firecrow falling quite low, but do get the trade. Bit of an odd jump in there from Lele Ninja to go straight into the spawn. But a takedown over the left and another one over the right-hand side as Pekka picks them up and all the gems topple to the floor. Seven now in the hands of Cowbear and two more lay there. And another one spawns on their side. That's going to be the countdown started if they can grab it. But the, bind the binds are there. Luckily, he avoids them. And I'm not sure if he knew they were there or it was just some very good reaction time. But the countdown should be starting for pretty much either side, but it's actually mini peckers who grab both. All that gem in the middle is so essential for Pekka then to pick up, and that's going to mean that they've got to go on the aggressive. Motive is in the way as well, getting a nice amount of healing as well at the back of the shade. And now the uh, screeching center gets it taken care of, and they've actually been able to reset things. The gems are split, however. Calva's got 10 to his pocket, but Little Ninja on the left hand side has got the one as well. Fibro taking big hits here. That's just the way he gets the kill along the way as well. Beautiful stuff from him, and that will have bought valuable time. Three versus two.
Yeah, another gem over the left and another one from the mid. Pekka there, and they're not going to be able to even this out from the mid. Now they're going to have to aggress, and Calbert 10 and low. He goes down. Lele Ninja needs to recover all those and make something happen with two seconds on the clock. It's just not possible. FA Mini Pekka take the first game, but considering how many kills they were getting, it didn't seem as convincing as I'd have liked. And honestly, considering the comp, and I mean, no discredit to Super Runner Goss as to how they were playing, but it was a little bit all over the place, to be completely honest. And, uh, you know, there's not too much synergy when it comes to this kind of comp, an idea, but nonetheless, the heels at the back of the Poco definitely allowed Calbert just to stay in a more or less position and have a little bit of survivor ability there to add to the equation. Went down a bit too much for my liking, but let's see whether we can see Super Runner Goss iron out some things, because this could easily be a game going their way if they keep this kind of behavior up. It's going to make sure that their mistakes are a little bit less noticeable. That's already a good aggressive stance on the right-hand side, and it's going to be a trade there as well. But it's allowed there, two gems in the pocket. Calvin couldn't quite get that third, but they will spawn on their side now. Motep just bringing the shades in to try to advance on his left-hand side, and he will go down actually for it, over-aggressing there. Spyro tries to match that idea on the right-hand side and doing a better job. Oof, nice. Yeah, that was really nice there. Kind of baited him into it, thinking he was just going to go for the gems and then shot backwards as well. Junk comes in, though, and he seems to do this a few times. He has control, and he just loses it over some overconfidence with his jump, and now many peckers with eight in hand. It's a really difficult position for Super Undergarda to come back from. I mean, he's got the tower pull here as well. Calbert shoots, then he's going to get pulled, and that's exactly what he's done. Super's there avail uh, available as well, but a double pull from Ota, but he still gets traded out. That's nice from Calbert to be able to waste that, but this burn down damage should take down Firecracker, but the healing shade comes in clutch. Really nice. I thought for sure he was going to go down there, but great choice of star power from Mota. Supply drop handed over there from Jubilee on the right-hand side, but it might be a little bit too little too late. This is three seconds on the clock. One final ditch to attempt to jump in. Pekka is on the right-hand side, but not enough time. And that's the FA Mini Pekka's then taking that first set. Pretty comfortable stuff. Yeah, that defi definitely in the second one, it seemed comfortable. The first game was a little bit more, you know, hit or miss. I feel like they had the better comp. They, they definitely had the better players. They've got more wins under the belt. It was quite surprising to not see them take that first game more convincingly, especially with how much of an outdraft in my eyes, at least it was. Uh, so definitely good to see them invent some things and, uh, and take it a bit more convincingly in the second. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a lot of experience that comes on the side of FA Mini Peckers. Absolutely. So always making the grand finals. Not only that, but winning every single one. Super Renegade are still chasing that first the just grand finals appearance of the year. Having gained just two sets in the semi-final stages across the course of the monthly finals. But nonetheless, they're just a little bit better. Like you say, especially in that first game, despite the drafting, which I think is a bit of a weak area, which they should maybe look to try to work on going into this next set. Nonetheless, though, for FA Mini Peckers, it's just business as usual. Not necessarily making too many mistakes, maybe just to give a bit too much control in that first game for the most part. But for every other instance, I think the choice of the Brawlers was a lot more balanced. Had a balance between aggression and control and also the mines for a little bit of uh, area denial and just delaying the onset. Firecrow with 10 takedowns as well. That game had a fantastic round. 234 DPS to his name, 262 to Peckers and five takedowns as well. But that DPS was really nice nicely tunnel on the side of Pekka just to keep uh, the advance there, just keep controlling that mid. Great stuff so far from FA Mini Pekka's, but they've got to keep this up. I mean, it's what we expect, right? We expect great stuff out of this roster, but at the same time, you know, Super Running Goddess, they, they, they put up a bit of a fight, but we'll see if they're able to kind of do something a little bit different again as the, you know, we I think I think it was Teddy who said, if they want to win, they've got to gamble. And I guess they kind of did gamble with the confidence didn't pay off that time. I just want to see them gamble time and time again now. They're going to have to do something similar on Safe Zone if they want to take it because it's such a control-based map. And I feel like FA Mini Peckers with, you know, the experience they've got should be able to control this one quite nicely, but bands are in. Super Renegado is going to get rid of the Eve, the Bell, and the B. I like those bands. And then Ruffs, Bonnie, and Eve on the other side from FA Mini Packers as their bands. We're over to Super Renegado for this first bit. we straight in with Cordelius, which for sure gets us a lot of value, no doubt about it, but primarily into a lot of tankier options. So it's a bit of a catch-21, isn't it, really, when it comes to that particular brawler on a map like this. It's definitely, for me, the best map and mode for this particular brawler, for safe zone. I mean, it just means that FB Mini Peckers now are going to change their strategy and go with a long, more kind of long-ranged approach, I would imagine. 8-bit for sure, for me, would be a lovely way to start things off. And I do like the bands, however. There's going to be six individual brawlers banned out of the equation, so it's going to limit 
things ever so slightly, and that is the first pick. I think every mini pick has written this perfectly. I mean, they just keep their range, keep their distance from this cool dealie. So maybe we'll get a surprise along the way. Maybe it's their third and final pick, and they just want to just kind of commit to the idea. But um, certainly, cool dealie is going to have a little bit of an issue when it comes to the range primarily, and you know, there's not many opportunities to kind of push up in a way that your opposition don't see coming. So I really kind of like the way that this is starting things off, and yeah. I feel like this is a very good starting hand in terms of the follow-up picks. I mean, it could Max wasn't what I was thinking. To be honest, it's definitely daring. It's going to drop off a little bit on this map and mode for sure. But it is going to de bring in a decent amount of speed for the opposition and more Dukes are always going to avail to more potential to, to land your shots and to try to advance upon the safe. To be honest, I was thinking Brock. Like, why not just take yeah. Brock? Huge DPS would have gone down on the safe there. But at the same time, you know, if they take Max, it, now if Super Renegadas go for a couple of sharpshooters, which they probably have to do to be able to face the 8-bit, if Max pops a speed, the sharpshooters aren't going to be connecting many shots. And maybe that's kind of the, the long route they're taking for the side of FA Mini Peckers here. And yeah, Renegadas do go with the Brock. I think that was kind of expected regardless of Max being on the other side, which is, as I said, going to make it a lot harder to hit. Oh, Cordy yeah. and Shelly on the same side. But, you know, at the same time, two best brawlers in the game, but I don't know how confident I am in it. Colette's available, but I feel like Lola wouldn't be a bad shout for this squad. They've kind of, in this region, utilized that brawler a lot, and I think that just keeping range and adding speed to it for sure is going to go a long way, but I mean, Shelly here is always going to have a good time, but it's that additional speed from the max that might be problematic. I mean, Shelly now with that very fast movement speed, um, you know, went up from medium you know, in the past. Tara, yeah, I can understand it. I mean, the shadows on the safe, if left untouched, can do so much damage, but I think there's better options regardless. Nonetheless, I mean, Tara, it's kind of a bit more of like a power league pick to me. You know, kind of when you pair it with a Jesse or something like a Nito, it just does a, a tremendous amount. But at this level of play, I feel like teams should be able to kind of see that kind of strategy a long way and just shut it down early. Now, you're waffling, you are. I'm not sure what you're about. <laughs> you don't mind a Tara pick on safe zone? Like, maybe on another map or something. In like power that. league! Strange, or maybe in like bronze one power league. But I don't know how I feel about it here. You know, it might work and I might be proved wrong considering they haven't got the most range on the side of Super Renegadas. But at the same time, there's, there's better picks. Yeah. There's, there's certainly better picks for sure. Nonetheless, though, let's see. I mean, obviously, mini pickers are doubling down on the idea. Well, that's actually a gadget that would be better served for later. I mean, that's the, pri the primary use of that brawler is to do that on the safe. And I guess most it wants to get a little bit of uh, an advantage coming in, but it's not really proven to be that because ultimately, Calber is getting some shots. 13% now, 15% damage. And the mini pickers going to retake this mid a bit better and get themselves locked in. If they do that, though, on this map, extra credits for Fire Crow potentially. Nope, running the TP. Now, that is a weird, weird choice for me because that is where Apic can get the most amount of value. I can make my peace with not running the plugged in star power, but you want to have extra credits on the safe, no? I would imagine so, yeah, but at the same time, maybe just wants to kind of get away from the Shelly if it's in close range or something like that. I wouldn't mind it. Same with Cordelius, I guess, too, but Pekka's really been the rock here, it seems, the one who's staying alive and staying in the mix, whereas Tara definitely playing a more defensive game. That should be the 8-bit turret going down, now dragged into the realm as Pekka. Kind of wrong that is, and Cowbear just going to survive that one out, have some heals left over from the Mushroom as well, and Motep really not doing too much here. Had a little bit of a defense, but other than that, nothing really. The ninja is lurking on his right hand side and just trying to pack Pekka, but now getting pretty close. Seemed a little bit unsure of himself there as to who was going to be the prime target and didn't really commit to either side. And now Firecrow punishes that action for it. Missed super big time from Motep. You can't be doing that realistically. And yeah, Kalba absolutely deserved to come out on top in that interaction. That is going to be a pretty badly placed damage booster as well as the angles. is perfect there for Hubelier to be able to connect with it. And now into the realm, the Shadow Realm for Firecrow, and he is going to be aggressed quite heavily so. And for me, every mini Pekkas are a bit all over the place, mate. I mean, look at the comp. Like, obviously. Kalva <laughs> <laughs> gonna drag him into the Shadow Realm here. Pick up some mushrooms along the way as well, get some heals from that. Rock shots coming down, and now Motep and Pekka not in a good spot. Firecrow does actually pick up that on the right hand side, but 25 seconds on the clock. If they can get another turret and get up, they're gonna be fine. But Brock goes down, and Pekka needs to reclaim some control here. The turret's there, Leyla Ninja's low, but a super straight to the face takes him down, and he wins that matchup. Shadow Realm from Firecrow. And I just don't know now that he's gonna go down or even be kept in the Shadow Realm that they're gonna have the DPS required, but Motep's gonna pick up but everybody falls. They're going to be able to do it here. Motep's walking forward. In come the shadows. And down goes the safe. Mini Packers win that, but I don't know how. <laughs> 
what a turnaround. I mean, uh, they, they, they seem like they're playing with their food a little bit here, or maybe just confident enough that in those final moments that they can really pull through and have this comp really display what it's capable of doing. I think Super Rider Guard is there, really kind of misjudged things and just didn't really value their lives as much as they absolutely should have, because again, you can just see how much damage it can rain down in such a short period of time, and those are mistakes that you just simply cannot make at this level. Yeah, well, looks like a bit of a better start this time for Super Enigardos as they get a lot more kills. Should be able to pick up Pekka there as well, but actually gets out of range. Kabe trying to make his way forward now, maybe get this super as well, but it's taken down. Google are going to throw a few shots on safe, get that burn down damage as well, but Lele Ninja should fall to Fiker here, and that he does. Has this turret now uh, up and ready for him to TP back to obviously not using those extra credits, so the cheat cartridge will be coming back and does use it there, baits out that, um, baits out that clay pigeon, but at the same time, motep has been dragged into that realm, and that's not going to go well. Now it's Pekka's turn, and this is great from Calbert. Very aggressive stuff, continuing the advance, and the ninja there just for support, goes for fire for as well, keeps him low. We'll get the coverage now, and the support of that damage booster, but the, the shell shock straight through and all, and the ninja comes out on top, speed coming now for Pekka, pushing things forwards, and he's been doing a great job this match, in my opinion, just keeping his team afloat realistically, and getting them into the spots that they need to have to get the value off this draft, as now another connection into the Shadow Realm, Kalba goes in on the aggressive, and just tapping away at Firecrew, but Firecrew comes out on top, with poison trick down now, Oh, but nonetheless, in the meanwhile, his teammates are going on the advance into the safe, getting some good damage for their time, but they are still behind here. They've got to be able to get some damage and claim back this deficit. Yeah, well, does get the kill there as well. Motep comes out on top of that one. Layla Ninja down the left-hand side has his super, though, and now this is established. They're not that far behind either. Only a solid 22%. Jubilee's got a super and might be better off just using it straight onto that turret, but actually not going to. Speed available to Motep there as well. Has the pull, but a jump forward from Cowbear. They might just leave him on safe there. Three go down, and he's staying up top, getting some good damage on safe, but they can't match what the three of them would have at the top. But one of them went down, and we're not seeing the damage coming out of the 8-bit. 26% up top and 46 down below. Yeah, Cordelius is not nearly as much of a concern if left on the safe as it is for an 8-bit within the damage booster. And now Tara coming in as well. Motep just trying to keep positioning power for his teammates to respawn back in then and go on another push. Speed coming in again from Pekka just to keep Motep out of harm's way. And he closed the gap a little bit too much into the Cordelius there, but then was punished for it. Pushing forwards now is Firecrow, but to the credit of Severin Gardas, aware to it. Kubelia still landing shots onto Pekka, but juking around them now and able to heal. This is a big push potentially coming in for Mini Pekka. not much time left to defend it. Yeah, Calbert falls low and he's going to be coming out there. Super goes forward again, and maybe that's just a tank of them, but they need to kill Calbert. He's going to get damage. Turret thrown forward, and this is going to be close. The damage from the booster might just be able to seal this one off, but I think it's going to be a draw. Epic to eight, and Mini Peckers don't take it, but Super Anacardos can't get the damage either. <laughs> so much being rained down on the Super Rare Nagata safe that, again, just the Cordelius left untouched is going to do a little bit. I feel like the majority of that match, Super Rare Nagata didn't really value too much the, the, the power that Cordelius can potentially bring going on the offensive onto the opposition rather than actually landing down the damage. You really need the Brock to do just that and get Hubalea into that spot. And they just didn't really do that enough for me. That's a great start though. Two players down. Super Anagardos can stop the push forwards once they heal forwards now and a great connection as well and into the Shadow Realm yet again. I think Calvin needs to kind of get some mushrooms along the way here and heal back up. But yeah, he will do now. He's grabbed one and advanced towards the safe. Trying to get Pekka on the way as well. Great stuff from him. And that's what you want. Calvin pushing forwards, getting rid of the opposition and then Hubalea behind things, getting the rockets to connect on the safe net, and Sinro now brings the safe down to 66%. Yeah, and a lot of damage being done. Tarapul is available, but at the moment, he's not really hitting many people with it. Down he goes now, though he does pick one up. Healing Shade not going to be in use because he's in that realm. Calbert going to survive this one out as well, but Pekka just trying to get the work done. Shots coming through, and now Calbert does manage to finish him off, but Fikron needs a trade, and he's not even going to get that. Two of them low, but they've got time to heal. Great cycling again from Calbur as the rocket rain over the top will break open all the bush and get the damage most importantly onto the safe. And again, this is looking much, much better for Super Renegades, learning from their mistakes along the way, and claiming back a great amount of damage. Hublet will go down now. Now, Mini Pegas will retake this mid. Super available as well to Motep. If he lands that gravity and it will connect him to Calbur, but around the wall breaks open as well. And now the healing shade will come in and give Firecrow a helping hand as he advances on the safe support from beyond again, connecting nicely. And they're claiming things back very, very quickly in the side of Mini Pegas. As quickly as that, turning things around. Yeah, well, energy should go down now, though, but that band-aid pops and Calbur's very low, gets the takedown and wastes his super. This is a good spot for Mini Pegas, but they are still 30 something percent down. Brock super thrown forwards. Might be able to get the takedown, but he survives on 20 HP. Doesn't use those 
Ooh, the cheat cartridge back to his super, and now this could turn around. Motep's pretty low, but Cowbear does miss a shot there. Lele Ninja, all three of them focusing down. The Tara pull comes through, but they get no finishes. Firecrow's gonna have to come and clean up, it's gonna be devastating for them. Brock's low as well, but the mini the peck is getting damage on safe, and this is them taking the lead with 30 seconds left. Just tumbling out of control here for Super Brenner Garlis. And again, trying to get a few little taps onto the safest called Delius. Not the best use of the particular Broyers. You know, to Calvert's defense has been playing it really nicely. 15 seconds remain now. And every single time that every mini Pegasus have been in this spot, they've been able to get the damage that they need. And with that, they should be able to secure this. They just can land now. Pega moving forwards and fire Chris Staying in position. That is going to be enough for every mini Pegasus this time around to avoid the draw and take the set. I mean, they take the set, but at what cost? Embarrassment is the cost, I feel, because that was not the most convincing of sets, and that was a terrible, terrible draft. I'll put it out there right now, the Max and Tara draft. I mean, I can get behind an 8-bit, but, like, come on. Don't hold back, Trav. Just, just say it how, how it is, how you, you know feel me, about I it, mate. It was back. what we love about you. Back. <laughs> Again, you know, I think there were just better options, better picks. And I think for Super Running Gardens, that was certainly a set which they looked like they could have taken. They just made a few decisions better. I mean, Epic Mini Pegas left a little bit of an open door there for me. I didn't necessarily mind the Tora as much. I'm not saying that it's my choice by any means, but I feel like it, you know, had, it, it had a purpose to serve. But whether Epic Mini Pegas really kind of served the purpose is kind of where I question things. That was a tie and really quite a close one at that. And, in that respect, the Cordelia's damage was essential to be able to recover the round, but I felt the defense was a little bit lack, lacking on the side of Super Runner Garlis. And uh, again, against the Max, against the 8 bit, it's a very, very dominating comp to have to go up against. And look at the difference there in terms of some of the stats between players Firecrow and Kalba on the side of Super Runner Garlis and Epi Mini Packers just really did cut their time of things, didn't they? Realistically, there on the 8 bit and of course on the Cordelius. And that is very convincing stuff. But again, Epi Mini Packers are able to convert these stats into to sets and that's what lasts and that that's what we remember when it comes to monthly finals yeah well i mean cowboy did play that one very well with 17 kills but we will be moving on to gold arm gulch in knockout seeing if they can finish this one off in three or if we're going to see a bit of a comeback starting from super Renegados. and you know they, they, they picked up two of the most two of the best brawls in the game in that previous one and still couldn't bring in the win so i feel like their chances are dwindling but we'll see if they're able to start something special in gold arm gulch Certainly a map and mode where valuing your life is incredibly important. If Super Brenner Gardens can just do just that, the bands are in. Tick, Sprout, and Grom will throw a band out here on the side of FA Mini Peckers. Gene first pick, and also the bands of Bell, Brock, and Bonnie. Super Brenner Gardens. Big fan of the bands for the most part so far for me. I think Bonnie's probably the primary target to, uh, to get out of the way here. Every mini pickers might have a strategy as well up their sleeve here, simply because they just don't want to run into any throwers. I mean, Dynamite potentially, if they really want to land it, is probably the best other option. But I just don't feel like that is going to be the flavor of what they want to go for here. For me, RT, first pick, a great first pick as well for me in Knockout. And it's going to lack a little bit of healing and survivability, but there comes the roughs as well to really advance the firepower. Potentially as well, I mean, when it comes to knockout, you know, you build promotion is sometimes the star power of choice and just having everyone hunkered down behind that um, in terms of the wall break. But over now, Super and Gardas to respond. Yeah, I like, I like Mini Pekka's draft that a little bit more at the moment. You know, RT legs seem able to be popped. If a gene pulls those in, it can be quite devastating. Same with the sandbags that, that Ruffs might be able to bring in unless we see anything a little bit later on down the line from Super and Gardas. Or over these next two picks, obviously, that's going to be able to get rid of those sandbags quickly or you know, punish him for using them. You can see that squeak coming in. Obviously, going to be able to get rid of the sandbags quickly. Shot for a few of these avenues as well with the sticky residue. I do like that pick. At the same time, I'm still kind of siding with these two picks from FA Mini Pekka so far. Yeah, squeak being left open here. I mean, definitely dangerous. But still a lot of vulnerability, though, on the side of Super Renegades. They've got to have something a little bit for those later stages of the game to really hold firm. Cordelia's going to come in. I mean, it's definitely going to be that late stage brawler, but you've got to secure the kills when you go into the realm here. That's one thing that I feel is Cordelia's is a bit of a weakness potential outside of the range, of course, because ultimately, if you're able to land that kill, you're straight out of the realm again and able to cycle. But if you're stuck in the realm for a period of time, you are leaving your teammates high and dry for quite an amount of uh, potential vulnerabilities there. Every mini Pegasus comp just feels a bit more rounded so far for me. And so far, their skill has been unmatched. Rico, can I come in? I mean, it's always my go-to pick. Always on this map. I'll pick it first every day of the week. But 
again, they've got to land the shots. They've got to land the connections and lineups and vision gear, of course, going to help a great deal alongside that. But um, I, I, I'm biased, Trev, here. I'm absolutely biased. I can't really say more than that. I absolutely know you are. I, uh, <laughs> I know you are, because I can't get behind this pick. I just don't think we see it in any other region other than this, the, other than uh, South America. You know, uh, like maybe when this map first came out, we saw quite a lot of Rika, right? It was a different meta then, but currently, Recently, at least, I don't think I've seen Rico on this map for a very, very long time. You know, Bell's Rock, bring it in. I love it. But on a map like this, I feel like it's a little bit less valuable. Uh, the, the Cordelius, however, I feel like this region just doesn't respect it enough, you know, leaving it um, leaving it through the draft and not even picking it through those first three picks. Well, already Peck's in the top spot here. He's going to be absolutely pinched, as he probably should. I don't know quite why he went that far deep into the pocket and left his teammates high and dry, but... Firecrow weak here as well, and a swift takedown of that. Three versus one, and I think Epic Mini Pegasus might need to rethink the way they approach the start of this round because that was just a complete and utter wipeout. <laughs> I mean, Rico just got ran down off the start and couldn't do much about it either. Obviously using a multi-ball launcher instead of the Bouncy Castle, so couldn't get any heals off from that spot either. And we actually see Motep not going to be taking that break star power because of how valuable these walls are to the Rico. And with them batting out three throwers, kind of makes sense for them to take that. So we'll see if this does take a bit of effect in me topping off the, or leveling up the max HP of these brawlers throughout this round. Kabe has his super, so that's going to be pretty good if someone does get into that range. Well, a bit of a stalemate as both sides are hunkered down, but ultimately that is going to favor FA Mini Peckers on that rough sale running the field promotion. It's going to provide more HP over time, and Pum will be against Severina Gardas in that respect. But that Cordelia Super is the key. In fact, Severina Gardas don't even want to go too much on the aggressive in these early stages. They want to wait until the gas starts to close, and then they can start to cycle. Magic Hand now available as well to the Ninja as well. If he connects that, it would be devastating in the support of that squeak. Now. Central Spirits running through, and there's the connection the Capital is searching for, Magic Hand connection as well, and that is going to be tough stuff for Packet left all alone now. Three versus, well, it's two versus one. The connections are there, though. Hubalier is the last one standing. Well, I mean, he was 3v1, and he did a good job to make it a 1v1, but at the end of the day, he didn't manage to bring it back. Super Guard is looking a lot better in this one. I feel like their draft is just pretty decent, I'd say. You know, the Cordelius has really been putting in quite a lot of work, managed to grab someone into the Shadow Realm then. First round, got an early pickup. And overall, they are doing pretty well at the moment. We'll see if they're able to do the same again and start the possibility of a reverse sweep. Well, going in, and that left-hand side still there for Pekka to be able to try to tap away and chip down the ninja. And surely his teammates have been able to communicate as well that the other two are in the mid, so he's a bit safer this time. Pushing forwards continuously slow, but there's a nice residue as well from Hubli on the right-hand side. Calvert's going in, and the sandbags will be a bit of a deterrent for it. Motive comes out on top and able to heal up surely if he doesn't get too on the aggressive. Have to protect a little bit here. Firecrow's position. The ninja as well is having a terrible time of things with that misconnection on the super on the side of Pekka. Could prove costly. Yeah, the gadget's there and Firecrow's just going to use it. You know he's only got three of them for the whole three rounds, so why not just get a kill with any cam? Pekka's going a little bit over-aggressive. Clearly wanted his super there, but also they obviously don't want to feed this Squeak super. I feel like Squeak should just go into the zone here, but uh, trying to get a super of his own considering they've both got theirs is not a bad idea either. Does lose it though in the first round versus Mini Pekka's. Starting to turn things into a much more favorable position now. Learning from some of their mistakes. They've given a game up for Super Anagardos, but not anything more than that. For now, we're on round away from a potential match point situation to make today's grand finals. Sandbags again going down for Motep, and certainly going to be a great thing to utilize at this early stage. Whistle down over time, but nonetheless, every second really does count in knockout. You want to really buy your time towards the gas and start to apply that pressure, especially against the Cordelius and the Gene. They can start to juke their magic hand and just exacerbate that super as well. They've been a fantastic spot, but over time, supply drops will feed themselves over. Peck is already able to benefit from that. Just trying to find the angles here for now. Peck can get super as well. We'll go a long, long way. Both sides just running just trying to fill out the situation. If Leninja gets an opportunity, wouldn't hesitate to try to land it, but nonetheless, ooh, a bit of a miss there, and that's a terrible time for it as the gas comes in. Sam might exploit down as well. Shadow Realm's there, but Calbear's quite low. Might be able to get a few heals, but Pekka picks one up as well. Super down or anywhere and win this one for them. Calbear's going to be able to come out of the realm soon. Takedowns are there, but Pekka just clutches up. The power of the power up and the super goes through. And they manage to take this game, make it match point, and one more for Mini Pekka's to head to the finals.
What a way to make a statement there from Pekka. <laughs> Lovely stuff. And again, you know, I always match the Rico. That's why. <laughs> it can just annihilate things. And just when it matters most, that was a very important game there for FA Mini Packers. And again, Super Cars had their moments. It just feels a bit of the same as we've seen in previous months where not really able to really land the sets as they need to. Can they have a good round here? It'll be somewhat of an alleviation towards things that could still come. But time is trickling away from them. Three versus two on this left-hand side, though. Fire Crows, weak, and a connection there from Hubel Air will keep Mini Pekka down to 846 HP. In the meanwhile, though, rotating around, I think, is the wise call here. Healing up along the way, and now in a much better position to be able to contest things. Yeah, and a jump was forced out of Cowbear as well. Power up straight to Pekka. They want to win this round, and put them only one round away from closing out this game. Fire Crow. He's going to be topping off his max HP there next to the uh, the field promotion of Ruffs, but moving a little bit further down now towards Pekka, who's trying to find some shots into Cowbear. He is, oh, great clip onto Cowbear, but not really able to secure anything just yet. The mark shot and a follow-up onto Jubilee, and he does bring him low, but... The moment it's just a stalemate with these gas closing in though. I feel like now is the time for mini packers to strike and strike they do. Cabez low. Sandbag placed down and he's running away. He doesn't want to feed this. The gadget will finish that off. Lele Ninja's surely gonna accept defeat here. He does. And one round between mini packers and the win. He's been in the grand finals every month this year, winning every single month in those grand finals this year. And wow, one round away from making it yet again. The Titans of the region every mini packers. Doing no wrong, it seems. Still time for mistakes, but Supernicardas have got to now play it perfect to reset things. A supply drop over there to Pekka. It's going to increase what he's able to put out in terms of damage and close the gap potentially on the vulnerabilities of this comp from Supernicardas. And haven't really seen too much from things on their front. Oh, it's good connections so from Motep. Cabo low jumps away just in the nick of time with the range of fire crow and the gadget to follow up. It's beautiful. Three versus two now, and Pekka's in a prime spot. Bouncy there, oh, the takedowns are wonderful. Three versus one, and what can Kalba do about this? I mean, he can't do anything. The spins are coming out of Pekka, the spins are coming out of everybody on the side of Mini Pekka's now, and surely heading for the gas or heading down would be the best idea. Gonna try something in the Shadow Realm. He wants the 1v3, and honestly, you know, you, you can never count uh, according to this out. Motep's going to walk into the uh, gas to no. throw him out the Shadow Realm. And yeah, that's what's going to happen. The RT drops his legs, finishes it off. And the FA Mini Packers are moving to the finals once more. I was ready for that 1v3 Cordelia situation. I'm not going to lie. All of my being wanted that to go through and be the case. But sadly, for Super Anagalas, it wasn't to be. And it was a sweep then. But FA Mini Pekka's the former Zest squad again already locked themselves in for the World Finals so they can sit back and put their feet up. They've done all the hard work this year in previous months, but nonetheless, they want to go into those later stages of the tournament, of the competition, looking in the best possible light. And if they can just make it a clean sheet for the season, it's going to be a huge statement for Super Nintendo Guards again. A rough year, a tough time facing up against this very team five times out of six. And only able to gain two sets to show for it. I do feel for them a bit. I'm sure they'll take a lot of learnings from it as well, but FA Mini Peckers so far still out on top. Yeah, they've just been looking really good all the way through. And to be honest, I really like that last play they did. Obviously, it was a 3v1 against Cornelius, right? But they didn't want to let him chain, so he just went into the gas and just burned himself down straight so the RT could just drop his legs onto it. It was quite smart, actually, just to put him straight into harm's way and not let him cycle that one out as much. Great stuff from them. And a wonderful play from Mini Pekka. Obviously, they wavered a bit in the mid, started to look a bit sketchy in that heist, but managed to bring home the win anyway. Peck with seven kills and the most DPS there. Yeah, really, really nice showing there from Pekka. And that Rico pick, again, just, just saying, just saying. We don't see enough of it, in all honesty, on this map. And um, I, I, I find it to be a really, really good side lane aggressor, but has a lot of vulnerabilities as well, which is why it was a nice placement in terms of the draft. One of the better drafts, I would say, today from FE Mini Pekka's in that respect. A few questionable moments that we've seen already today, but who was the MVP that shone through Pekka? Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, especially if that last set is anything to go by as well. And in terms of the predictions over at events.brawlstars.com, head over there right now. Make sure you get them in for the next match to come. But I mean, I think it's safe to say, well, actually, you know, in terms of the polls, it was one of the closest polls we've ever seen for this matchup. So maybe some of you didn't get your points for that one. 
Yeah, no, I was going to say, it was actually in favor of Super Regal, at least on the polls, which is a little bit unusual, but I imagine it's kind of down to just like FA Mini Pickers not being called Zest anymore, and some teams, uh, some, some yeah. viewers are a little bit like, uh, maybe we'll just go for the one that has the pretty logo. <laughs> maybe that is the thought process of the community trap. Could well be right there. Well, one semi finals down, another still to come in this side of the region. Don't go anywhere. Be right back after a short break. to the Brawl Stars Championship, and welcome back to Teddy. How's it from the sidelines, mate? Uh, quite brutal, to be completely honest. A quick <laughs> one. Uh, but, you know, what else to expect when it's FA Mini Pack as just reigning champions over the region? Exactly that. Well, who knows? Maybe one of these two teams might be able to put a stop to their run of success. And I've got my money on Clash. But nonetheless, Mystic Esports have made the grand finals in the past. It wouldn't be the craziest of scenarios they could do so again. But there is the quarterfinal stages as well as to how these teams got to this position. FE Mini Peckers, of course, with that sweep over Super Nagalos in our last matchup does put them into the today's grand finals. Will it be Clash? Will it be Mystic Esports that joins them? That is the question. Now let's start, of course, with Clash. They've yet to be able to obtain themselves a first monthly finals win of the year. And it's the last monthly final, so it's now or never for them to do so. Two for Edino and Kaya Dog, of course. I mean, these are very, very accomplished players today. No doubt about it. Made four out of five grand finals so far. But again, still chasing their first win. Came very close to it back in April and June against Mini Peggers. A 3-2 scoreline there, but it went against them. This time round, they've got to land it on the mark. Clash have been a little bit inconsistent, a little bit disappointing almost this year, just because we know how good those guys are. We know how much they have achieved in the past and how well they have represented their region. But the region is not over yet. The season is not over yet. Let's see what they can do for the last month. Their opposition, Mystic Esports, former band of the Lucas squad. With the grand finals back in March, and again losing out to FE Mini Peckers as everyone has. <laughs> but <laughs> Benson, Wesley, and Vara today are looking to try to make greatness be that team to put a stop to the win streak of FE Mini Peckers. But Clash are going to be the first one in line to take down Casino as well with a fantastic setup, by the way. I've got to say, big fan of that. Takes one to know one, right? Uh, but again, these are very accomplished players, and they have demonstrated over the past course of the few months that they are able to withstand what Clash can bring to the table. Last month it wasn't to be, but this time round they can get their revenge. This is their chance to make something out of this end of the season. And as you said, they are definitely a team that is a threat to teams like Clash. They've shown it before, they can do it again. Only one way to find out. Gotta mention as well, you know, Clash have locked in their place in the LCQ following getting top eight this month. So they also are able to put their feet up somewhat. I'm sure reflecting on things a little bit and hoping that they would have been able to give a bit more of a run for their money over FA Mini Pickers who locked themselves in for the World Finals. But nonetheless, this is their chance for redemption. Be able to turn things around the final hurdle and go into those stages of the competition looking like a greater threat is absolutely everything still to play for. And of course, bragging rights, cash, all still up for grabs for them. And they're gonna want to be able to do justice on the year and just make sure they end on the biggest high possible. Absolutely. So they did manage to make it to the Grand Finals in March, I believe, talking about Team Mystic. It's been a couple months now, but I'm sure they still have the same goal, win it all. But Clash is going to be in their way, and so far it has been Clash that more often than not were able to take them down. As we line up our first match of this series, 
Again, getting that draft right is really going to be what it is all about. And our first map will be Infinite Doom for Bounty. And there's a 94% over at event.brawlstars.com voting for the side of Clash, the 6% of Mystic Esports. Again, I mean, that is convincing. I don't know whether it's necessarily too reflective on what the previous scorelines have been between these two teams. It is a 3-1, though, in favor of Clash historically. So I can understand it being in favor of Clash, but that is still a bit of a, 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 a small margin in favor of Mystic. I think they've got a better chance than this. Oh, certainly so. But hey, let's be honest, FA Mini Pekas were not the favorites according to even that uh, BrawlStars.com. <laughs> first quarterfinal, so who knows? But our draft is kicking in real fast as we have a Shelly Crow and Cordius man from Clash. Love that. Mystic was a bit of a different approach. Lots of AoE damage out of the way. That's going to be M's uh, that will be taken out as well as Poco and Janet. And a first pick of Tara already. So it seems like zone damage is something they just want out of the mix and then they pick the one of the few brawlers remaining which is Tara. And we'll see the gene on Clash. So pools on both sides. This is going to be a heated game. Absolutely. So a bit of question um, in my mind for the Janet Bandit. It was always the Brawler, which was very prevalent in this region. So I can understand it being more of a regionalized idea. But I mean, drop the base, still OK, despite the nerf to it. And I can understand with a map where it's got this much push, why they want to prioritize it. But that's probably the one that kind of stands out a little bit for me. But it's enough. Bringing in things for the Amber. Yeah, it kind of has to be really on the side of Clash. It's, again, such a prevalent Brawler on this map and be able to take down the bush. And now with the Tara. I think some tankiness wouldn't be a bad shout so far. Obviously, you know, Clash will have that final pick, so it's a bit of a, a riskier option for me. But Bonnie, still available here, can get some great uh, offensive strategy in the Crow's band, so it'd be a nice replacement of it. And certainly, Endless is going to be lurking within that bush as well. Be able to take people by surprise is going to go a long way in this region as well. Max, I mean, it's, it's getting a bit of a rise in this region this month for some reason. And we've seen more Max being played so far today than I think we've seen all, uh, all weekend long. Yeah, it's definitely a brawler that, even though it's not bad, I mean, when has Max ever been bad? But it's also not really that special at the moment. Uh, most regions just simply avoid it or go for different options, especially if you want some higher mobility. There are a lot of brawlers that can do their job uh, uh, just a bit in a more meta way, I guess. Max is definitely an odd one, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> we have the Mortis coming in, and it does a pretty good matchups across the board so far, but there is going to be that third and final pick for Clash to hard counter it, and I'm sure that's going to be the, the way they want to go. It's got to be. I, I mean, they've got to shut this idea down quickly, and if they find the right brawler for it, I mean, there's going to be little that really Pazin's going to be able to do with it. See how they kind of want to respond. It's going to definitely change the, the course of things as far as I'm concerned. I was thinking prior, this brought us like Squeak, for example, brought us like Carl, and now that's not going to be the case. Spike, this is again a very common pick in the South America region, but I think there's better ways of shutting down the Mortis. It's not a bad way at all. Do not get me wrong there. It's definitely up there for sure, but I think maybe even Otis would have done a little bit of a better job nonetheless. Uh, again, that's the side of Clash and what they want to go for on this front. And as long as they stay on the Mortis, it should not be that bad. In of defending things with the max combined with it tara gets gravity pull as well there's a lot that they can combine with the mortis ability to be able to zone out the opposition here so i think clash has got to tread a little bit cautiously here now yeah i'm not the most in love with the spike pick to be honest as much as it is a proper tank counter and it will deal tons of damage to the mortis if it gets up close it's a little bit scary because if he has super i mean look how uh, nimble uh two fires on on that spike and uh, it's just uh, probably that doesn't have a whole lot of HP to work with. So uh, if Pizzino manages to get his super, he can still get too far to nearly half HP just from there. But so far, so good for Clash. They will get the first skill. Pizzino a little bit optimistic with that Mortis push in. Yeah, I like Tufa's positioning there as well, just to kind of stay a little bit back, but also land the shot that, that they needed to take down Fitzin. But now he's coming in yet again and forced immediately back. A nice lamp blow out there as well from Kaido for safe measure as well. 60 HP there to Fitzin's name. And that was, again, another solid defense. I mean, the Mortis could have also deterred a lot of other choices. Mr. P here is a great pick potentially here. And one that just be terrible into a Mortis. So uh, it definitely has costed Clash a little bit in terms of what their strategy probably was going to be in terms of draft. But they're working with it pretty well. Well, for the most part, there is just that one star differential so far, and that could easily turn things around. Magic Hand for Kai Dog is definitely a saving grace in that regard. But if 
Grabaro there gets another super in and hits in just position himself a little bit better. Might be scouting out Dino here and goes in for it. No super to hand either. It's just getting taken down very, very quickly. Yeah, not much assistance either, which I'm not blaming on his teammates necessarily, but he just kind of went in both times on his own without any support. Rabao going to be caught out of position there. And another easy kill for Clash so far. Very convincing for Clash, but with a Mortis, it can't go quickly. Same with a Tara. A good Tara pull or Mortis sweeping in could dish out a lot of damage very quickly. But right now, the clock is what's going to be mattering. 15 seconds left, and Mystic Esports are going to be desperate for some kills. Oh, a bit of a missed dash as well, and it's punished heavily by Kai Dog. And this is going to look like an absolutely perfect round here for Clash. Rabo can't really be able to contest anything here. Everyone is going to be body blocking for their lives. And that is a very solid showing to start things off. And Clash looks very, very comfortable despite that kind of Mortis pick coming in and maybe causing a bit of a stir. It absolutely did not shake Clash. Yeah, I, I really don't hate the idea either of the Mortis, especially, you know, if you land a good Terra pull, pull one, two people, the Mortis is going to swoop in and that is going to be so much value. Problem is they never got to that situation. I don't even know if they got a single Terra pull in that game. And that kind of shows how nicely Clash were able to deal with their game plan. Well, early speed coming in from the max, but then again, once these bushes get burnt, there's really little places to hide for Pitzin and Wesley and... You know, ultimately, Adina going to be cycling off the back of that oil spill for now. And when he gets another super, it's just going to be a bad day again for Mystic. Just trying to find themselves. And a great magic hand. It almost just bled off the side, but they were able to bring it back around again. A land blow up for defense. And it's just not working. Mystic and Esports have got to make some changes here. Missed magic hand there from Kai Dog. So they're going to try to capitalize on that. But with low HP, Barrow can't really push into this anyway. And they've got to make a change. They've got to try to work better as a unit. You know, work Pizzino into the right place at the right time and have that Wesley, you know, gravity super on the side of the Tara come in and really get the value that they're looking for. But they have yet to get a single takedown. These stats are going to be disastrous unless Mystic Esports can start to make some changes. Yeah, vision gear from Kyodog on the chain really at work. Finally, a kill actually coming through here from Mystic. Pizzino trying to go in, but right now he's just burning through those land blowout gadgets. I think there's still two left, maybe just the one for Kyodog, but regardless, there, there's going to be 30 seconds left soon enough, and there's not going to be more than one push for that Mortis, so Kyodog doesn't even need any more gadgets than that. As Mystic are heading downwards for this final push pull onto Pizzino, not going to get a chance to do anything in that position. Brabao is burning down, and Wesley finally falls as well. 12 seconds left, and Clash is steadily in the lead. One singular kill, a chance for Mystic to maybe get one more to add to things, but Clash are just looking so, so good. <laughs> Team wipe in its entirety. Clash finish the set and storm it. I, I mean, Mystic Easels were nowhere to be seen, yet, you know, just underground, 10 feet. I mean, they just didn't adapt along the way, were not able to turn anything much into an opportunity. And I mean, it really did show these stats are going to be pretty disastrous. Yeah, it, it was a really rough run. I, again, I like the idea of the Tara and Mortis combination because if you get a good pull, the Mortis can swoop in, get so much value, chain supers. I get that. But the problem is they didn't get the chance to apply it or execute that plan whatsoever. They were never all three alive, synchronized in a push. The, the Gene was always able to get that information with the vision gear as well. Just making sure to have information non-stop on everyone's whereabouts, no matter if they are in a bush or not. And then the spike as well on two fights, just shutting down any of those aggressive ideas. Lamb blow it as well was so brutal for the Mortis. Every time he swooped in, he was just pushed out just as quickly. Well, I know how the stats are going to be because Wesley got one, everyone else yeah. got zero. That is going to be a fact, <laughs> you know? Yeah, holy stats comparison. I mean, you, in some modes, in some maps, you know, like maybe stats don't say the whole story there. I think it's a great example of where stats say the complete story. Uh, Kai Dog on six, Adina on three, two from four. Pretty split amongst the board and side of Clash, but Mystic Esports really tried to commit to this idea of the Mortis. And, and I, I also hope 
hoping that it would have some moments to shine more than it did. It just did not work. And Clash are just proving that they are that squad that are just a bit more ahead when it comes to strategy, when it comes to how to adapt to a situation. And despite the spike pick not being my favorite, I mean, you can't deny it worked. Going in, though, to Ring of Fire for Hot Zone and a chance for Mystic Eastbulls to get this right. It's certainly not going to be one of the easier maps and modes to really regain that control if you lose it. So that's going to have to be a heavy consideration here when it comes to making those brawler picks count. Bands here as well. Got to be on point. I kind of want to see a crow ban, a squeak ban here for me. I think both two brawlers are very, very rife for pick rates in this region. Cordelia's Shelly as well. We are seeing a lot of those friendly faces already there. Poker to add to the mix as well. So, so far, so good for me. It's going to be Mystic Esports that have got the coin toss. So they will get third and final uh, opportunity here to really you know, land things better in this set. Trying to even things out, making that 1-1. One, one. Do not let Clash get ahead. They realistically cannot afford that to happen here. Bonnie is a very solid first pick, though. I'll rate them that. I like to Bonnie, yeah, if we can come find some great success on this map, both on in a bit of a more defensive manner at a ra range and, and playing distance. But at the same time, you can go really aggressive if someone is isolated or you can get some good value off your jump. That can really relieve some pressure and help your teammates push up that zone. Clash, you can lock in the pan pick now as well, which I think is a really good shout here. Penny is an interesting one because Penny has fallen off really hard. Not really a, a, a sudden fall off. It's been over the course of months and months where it was just very su subtle nerves, uh, nerves. But it feels like right now it's gotten to the point where we don't see it much, if at all, in most regions. It's quite interesting that Clash are deciding to bring it in here. Yeah, I'm I'm not a huge fan, but the turret, if placed correctly, can be quite troublesome. Lou gonna come in now for Mystic Esports as well for that area denial and just buying that valuable time here. Stu is a pick which Clash really do play a great deal, so it could help on those side lanes in terms of aggressiveness. The Pam surely has to play a bit more of a mid roll. The, the vision gear will help out a lot in terms of the bush scouting, but this Patara here would be a great pick for Mystic Esports to consider here. So if you get that kind of like clustered into that corner pocket and at the right time, it can really cause a problem here. They've got the Bonnie, uh, you know, which I think is always a great place to start, but they do have to have more side lane aggressiveness because that is where Clash do tend to thrive. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I was thinking either Stu or that. So going with the Stu, depriving that of Clash in the process, I think it's not a bad shot, but it does leave that Tara open. But ultimately, one of them had to you know, stay and one of them had to go, right? Yeah, I, I like this too. I think it's uh, a bro that can really just make its own space. And when you make your own space, you're going to be helpful to the entire team as well by just relieving some of that pressure and enabling them to get the positioning they want. Final pick from Clash. Let's see what it's going to be. A Mr. P. Kind of like it, to be honest. I think it can do a pretty decent job overall. It's not going to be as solid at locking down that mid area as a Lou would be, but it can still do a very fine job overall. It's some decent matchups against the, the the stew and i think it can do some good work against the lou if it gets it uh, super early enough i think they're harassing porters can be a bit of a problem ammo wise especially for that stew certainly you know i fully agree mr p into bonnie is always going to have a good matchup for the most part it's going to be problematic for the stew to be able to work around as well but adina has got to get this portals ready quite early. He's quite a vulnerable brawler as well to the Bonnie when she has jumped. So certainly depriving Wesley of that utility is going to be a consideration here. But Kai Dog already doing some work there. Pops the gadget. But Wesley's got two consecutive shots now. Three. Can't be far away from Super at all. It's not necessarily the best, but there's low HP on the side of Mystic Eastwells to consider now as well. And the objective for that reason is entirely with Clash now. Approaching 30%. And... That is realistically where things are won and lost. And there goes down the speed zone for Rabur. That's going to help out considerably in terms of mobility and starting to itch things forward. But they've got to start to secure some takedowns into Clash. The portal spawn is now coming in. Might be a problem as well to consider. And Dino going to be stunned by the freeze. Not really too much of a problem yet for Clash. Even though they do have the eyes to deal with, it doesn't really help Mystic to get into that zone and Clash were able to just sustain the damage using that 
healing station from Kyodon. He's very low HP now, might have to consider falling back and healing up for just a little bit, but instead he's gonna keep Wesley at range on the right hand side, and that's even gonna be a better decision, really. Disabling him from sneaking up on that right lane. And so far, so good for a clash. Mystic with just a little bit more control now, but a new place, healing station, and the porters just consi consistently heading upwards have been such a problem. Like how oh, Edinho used the porter base as well there to just tank some more shots. A good jump in from Wesley, but it's just a one for one trade. And Clash are running away with this one. Yeah, they really are. I mean, that was so convincing. And I think for me, Mystic East was just left things so late to try to contest the zone. And that's a bit of the downside to Mr. P. You know, you haven't got the DPS to really go in with that aggressive early start. You've got to really sort of make, you know, things happen over time. And time is not what you have to your advantage in, you know, maps like Ring of Fire and Hot Zone as a, as a game mode. You've got to really try to deter your opposition off the zone as quickly as you can. For that reason, I, I did see sort of pits in pop off a little bit here and get an early super to be able to get things a bit more under control to buy some valuable time for his team. But now low HP and almost goes down there. Wesley though pops a gadget there, gets consecutive shots onto Adino, and if he can just land a few more, maybe go on the aggressive, opens up some space for his team, but his team are down and out for the count. 20, uh, well, two players on the zone. Wesley on the left hand side still taking a lot of shots as well, goes down actually himself and flash are looking so, so good. 10% of the time on the zone for Mystic, but only that's really showed for things. Yeah, it was a very intriguing position for Wesley to be playing his Bonnie on that left-hand side. It's a very awkward spot to have a Bonnie. But right now, they do manage to take back a little bit of control. The jump in from Wesley is gonna pay off. He will find one. That's pretty much all he gets before Kyodong takes him down. But Team Mystic, really not far behind right now. However, that Team Wipe is gonna be giving Clash a little bit of time to build up a healthier lead and get in a more dominant position. Wow, Clash again, still certain governance, the turret down needs to be taken care of, but again, this is not necessarily the best things to have for it. Replaced immediately so by Tupa. It's gonna take, yeah, three shots from Boa. Now goes down himself. Everyone on the side of Mystic is low here. Ready for the pickup here. And it is a clear up for Clash. They put their feet firmly into the mid and the respawns coming for Mystic are not gonna be kind. Penny Turret laying down fire as well as the Porter Spawn is coming in as well. Wesley does make open that right hand side. That could alleviate some pressure, but nonetheless, it's approaching 90% now for Clash and there's no time realistically to defend this. They're gonna try it for it, but it's gonna be a tough ask. Wesley surely gonna be going down actually is able to change back to cannon form, but even then that's not quite gonna be saving him. And Clash close it out in two games. Set two is gonna be theirs and so far, I mean, it's been all but a smooth ride here for Team Mystic as Clash have been really dominant. Yeah, it's uh, it's looking very much so to clash. I cannot lie. I mean, they just seem one step ahead every single time of Mystic. There doesn't seem to be much that they're missing in terms of tricks and drafts have been far, far better. Just more comfortable picks that just work. And Mystic Esports just, you know, are not really able to match that. I did like some of their ideas much more so this time around. Don't get me wrong, but again, it's always a tough map and mode. It really, really is. And I feel like with survivability being a primary resource to Clash's disposal, Penny is probably my least favorite pick on their side of things, to be completely honest. But nonetheless, if it works, it works. And they certainly know this opposition very well and are making it look, I hesitate to say, easy? I, I think you're right, to be honest. I mean, stats show the same thing again. And in set one, it was definitely a massacre, but this one wasn't even that much closer. Sure, Mystic had a bit more of a fighting chance, but even then, Clash really never out of their comfort zone. And I think it, it comes down to everything just going the way of Clash so far. Uh, their drafts have been better. I wouldn't say they've been miles better, but they've been better. Their executions have been much more clean. They're playing better as a team. They're playing better off each other as well and making sure that they're helping each other out, not leaving anyone dry on, on, on the side and, and giving away some, some free matchups. And overall, everything has just been going the way of Clash. Their mechanics have been more in point as well, even in the one-on-ones, it is Clash that's winning them. So right now, Mystic have just not given us all that much to work with. And I have a feeling Clash might just close out in the third set. 
Statistically, things don't look that bad. I guess Provera there had the, the worst time of things and the stupid picks, the one takedown. But nonetheless, Hard Rock Mine could be the final map of this series unless Mystic Esports start to make some changes and start to get a bit ahead of the game here. Clash always look very comfortable, don't they, on cam? I mean, lots of smiles, lots of choking around and stuff, but they still get the results. It is a great kind of team dynamic for that same reason. If you can enjoy things along the way and just whatever works for you, have it work. First pick, Stu, for Mystic. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but nonetheless, some decent bans. Mr. P coming in for Clash. We're at all surprised to see, I was gonna say a spike, but it is banned out. So Surge, a spike, and an 8-bit with bans for Mystic. Shelly, Cordelius, and Ruffs, bans for Clash. I think Bell mid here, for that reason, might not be a bad shout necessarily, but Mr. P gonna be coming in. Gonna have some side lane aggression though, Tara, still very much available here. The takings of Clash, they do want to go for it. We'll be going in with Crow. Don't mind it. It's a very common pick again once in this region. So, for that reason, they are lacking a little bit of DPS on the side of Clash. Now, all we need to see now is a Janet that this is going to be like the most South American draft possible. <laughs> <laughs> you have the Crow, you have the Mr. P, you have the Stu. So far, all brawlers that they just love and have loved throughout the years as well. I mean, Mr. P is one of those brawlers that they've been bringing in for years now, even when he wasn't meta at all in other regions, they were still very happy to bring him on board. But right now, Mr. P is really not in a bad place. Not a top meta pick, for sure, but definitely playable in multiple maps. And I don't see anything wrong in bringing him here into Hard Rock Mine. We'll see the squeak as a reaction now from Mystic. They will have another pick to follow that one up. No, no, not a bad pick. I mean, good control overall, good damage nowadays as well. And RT is going to be a pretty decent mid. So, I like the ideas overall, not necessarily the most mainstream approach, as I wouldn't say RT is going to be one of the go-to's gem carriers at the moment on a hard rock mine, but it's definitely something that I can respect and I can see work. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving the way the Mystic Drops transformed. I'm a bit concerned for the stew with the Mr. P matchup, but we'll see how that fares, but... They've given themselves a much better chance now. I mean, Squeak, if it's available, you just gotta grab it. Sam gonna come in for Clash. I mean, I love it. I, I love that. And just gonna go super on the aggressive as it's gonna have to be for Clash. It, it's, it's, that's, that might have swayed me just a little bit. Uh, and Clash know how to really match that kind of control and aggressive nature to, to the draft. So I think over time, once the Squeak depletes a lot of those gadgets, surely be running the slow down residue for that very reason. That's going to be the biggest deterrent of this Sam for the most part. I mean, Stu can obviously dash away from it and just try to keep it at bay. And I, I really do like it from Clash. They're going to make it work. And the Crow and the Mr. P are still very, very good brawlers. But it could have been more rounded. But there were some good fans there to be taken into consideration also. We are seeing the Crow and Mr. P around the mid area and already too far very aggressive on the top chasing the stew which i don't even know if it's necessary and i think he might realize that at some point as well that he could just go for wesley instead said he will end up going down and dinner low hp nice gadget from wesley and at the end of the day it is going to be mystic with a couple more kills early on and gem wise we're all even the connections but two against the pickup we're going down to wesley in that mid areas the Burma going in onto Wesley. Now the portal spawn is coming in, though. It's going to definitely make him reconsider things. <laughs> Surviving on, though. 568 HP and climbing now. As Tufa goes in yet again, but runs into all three. Gets two of them, though, for his time. And that is going to be a team wipe. The gems, though, most importantly, are dropped for Kaidog. Straight for the takings. Nine out from the mid. One away from countdown. This clash just instantly exploded into action. Beautifully down by Clash. Mystic gonna be desperate to try to stop this countdown. They need a kill on either Kaya Dog or Edinho. Either one would be fine. Rabao trying his best to find that connection, but it's just not gonna be happening. Five seconds left. Wesley is too far away, too low HP, and Clash are too far out. It's gonna be match point for Clash. And you can see now why I like that sound pick so much. It just has that ability to pop off at just the perfect moment in time, especially in gem grab. And now Mystic Eastwolves are in a world of hurt.
They've got no more second chances. This is it, the final showing of the year. And they're looking like they might well be swept. And that's not a way that they want to go out. They want to go out kicking and screaming at the very least. Good connection to Wesley and follow up Gadget as well to secure those three gems. I think there's a good investment early on. Burrow, though, is weak and his teammates do come back for that very reason, but it is a very much a better start for Mystic Esports now. And the question is, can they hold on to this? Can they start to make some learnings happen along the way? Can they try to at least play back a set? Too far. He's going to fall to Brabao on the left-hand side, but there was a kill from Clash on the right side, too. So far, it is a good start from Mystic Esports, but we saw how quickly that can be turned around. Nice gadget from Wesley after that connection, and he's gonna find too far as well. Clash getting a little bit overconfident, and Mystic making sure to make themselves be respected. And right now, they're only a single gem away from a countdown. Edinho is gonna fall. They will actually find a kill as well onto Pitinho, but right now, that means no countdown just yet for Mystic. However, just a single gem would be enough. Oh, look at this control here from Clash, really keeping the pressure on. Just the right time as again, like you say, one jump away from countdown, they've got to hold this. Dino is very low here and marked up as well by the RT of Wesley. Tufa goes in, but can't connect now the uh, gadgets front and gonna heal up now as the breakthrough is there. But Bravoa goes in on the aggressive still the small from Kyadog now though, adding to the equation of problems. Four to nine, two sitting in the mid there as well, but Clash, they just wanna retain that position though. Coming in for safe measure. It's Kai Dog. Eight to nine. Look how much time they pull. Look how much gems they got in the pocket. And Bravo is incredibly low here and slow. Most importantly, is Tuva trying to close the gap. Can't quite manage it. Adidas dancing on this right hand side here. Wesley finally comes in, but the Porto will see him go down. Oh my word, disaster. What a way to go. And Clash are on countdown as a result of it. Beautiful attempt from Mystic Esports in this game. Definitely their best game as well, all day. But the Porter is gonna be our MVP for this one. As Clash take it home with a clean 3-0. They are gonna be joining at the Mini Pekas for what is gonna be the ultimate grand final here in South America East. What a terrible way to go. <laughs> Death by Porter in the sweep. Oh, my word. For Mystic Esports, it's, uh, it wasn't a great day, was it? Uh, I mean, that first set, going back to that Mortis pick for me, definitely uh, was the start of either something great or something a little bit disastrous. And in Gem Grab, it just kind of whistled down and just escalated, spiraled out of control. Oh no, that final kill of it is in this kill cam. Yeah, look at Wes on the right hand side here. Nothing I they can realistically do. He was out, he was out of uh, you know, regular form, so he didn't really have too much. I mean, he could have definitely got, I'm sure he could have got it taken care of though, regardless, right? I mean, did he have to go down? I'm not too sure I have to see it back a bit clearer, but nonetheless, I mean, you hate to see it. Stats wise, it is fairly even at least compared to the previous two sets but it is still going to be slightly in clash's favor actually kills wise they're all even but regardless i mean stats and gem grab are not necessarily always telling the whole story but if you watch the match you saw the whole story unfold and it was definitely clash in the driver's seat from game one all the way to game six it's gonna be six games in a row that they picked up very clean very professional as Kyoto is going to be your voted MVP. Still in my heart, it's going to be that Porter. Because, I mean, you know, he took down the gem carry. That's a pretty solid job for a Porter. But regardless, Clash are moving on to the Grand Finals. Oh, I for one agree. Absolutely so. If there was an option, <laughs> certainly the Porter would have absolutely got the MVP. I'm sure Trav will agree. <laughs> Oh, it brought, it brought a tear to my eye. I was like, oh, they might be starting something really special here. Complete reverse sweep against Clash, and then the portal was just... <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. None of that today. Clash are going to finish it off in a 3-0 sweep, and to be honest, they played it perfectly, so deserved.
Yeah, I mean, you don't really get much better than that, realistically, do you, in terms of, like, the, the uh, games and sets? I mean, Clash, you know, they are that team. And the semifinals have never realistically been much of a challenge, except, you know, going back uh, to that period of time, I think it was back in April, uh, where, you know, they were able to you know, concede a loss for the one time this year. But for Mr. Keeble's Esports today, it just didn't look that, you know, it didn't look that thrilling, did it? Some of the decisions were a little bit questionable. Uh, but at least for the side of event.brawlstars.com, we're looking in a pretty decent spot so far. Uh, up next, we've got FA Mini Pegasus versus Clash as well. And this is where we're actually going to be deviating. Trav, we're going to give you the mic on this one. Well, you know, you know what it is, Ark. I just don't like to copy you. So I went with Clash. You know, they, they've lost five. They may have lost five monthly finals, right? But sometimes you've just got to put your faith in them and they're going to pull through and manage to win one this year because they've got the roster to do so, right? So maybe Mini Peck is just coming into this one feeling a little bit too confident and Clash might be able to take advantage. That was my thought process. Uh, so, 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 you know, we're hoping for Clash. So, 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 Teddy, are you, are you hearing this the way I am as well? So, Trav is passing the blame for, for me to copy his results, but then if he goes against us, you know, then, 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 you know, he's going against the idea of, of, of copying, so therefore that's his reasoning. I, I know, I'm hearing a lot of backtracking here, if I'm not mistaken. I, I am an, an innocent bystander. I am not involved in <laughs> any of those disputes, so I will remain silent. Uh, besides the fact that I'm going uh, F.A. Mini Pegas. Teddy is that child where it's like, mommy and daddy, please stop fighting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Trav, I, I praise you, mate. I do praise you, but let's start with F.A. Mini Pegas because they are the current reigning champions of this entire region. Every month attending a grand finals and every month winning it. Looking to make it six here today and a clean sheet for the season. Motep, Firecrow and Pekka are looking unstoppable, Trav. And I know you're going to talk them down, but that is the reality. They are the stats. Facts, Trav. Facts. It is facts. You know, they've won five. They have won five, but look at the drafts today, right? Look at their drafts. If Clash managed to draft a bit better, then I think they've got a bit of a chance. But I'm not sure if it's kind of just like mini peckers were being way too overconfident and, you know, uh, thought line a bit cocky in that first uh, semi final, and that's why it was a little bit more questionable, especially through their drafts. But at the same time, I feel like Clash did look more convincing when it came to the 3 0 rather than mini peckers 3 0. I, I hear ya. I do hear ya. I, I agree with you, actually, for one. I think Clash has the better drafts. At this stage of the competition, again, it does whistle down to the nitty gritty, and Clash have come very, very close in the past, no doubt about it. At the moment, though, FA Mini Packers do look unshakable despite some of the drafts today. It did look like they were in control towards the ends of every instance, but let's start and talk about Clash because this is the team that are chasing their first monthly finals win of the year in this side of the region. Tufa, Adenio, and Kai of Teddy came incredibly close in April and June in this very position against this very team. Three, two score lines against them. What are you thinking in terms of the score lines today? And, you know, can they maybe claw something back despite you going and siding with me? With what is more likely of an option for FA Mini Packers to make it that? clean sheet absolutely for clash it's, it's been a huge rivalry between themselves and fa mini peckers uh, it feels like especially this year but even already to a certain extent last year they were uh, starting to be a bit in their shadow and it would be huge for them if they managed to get that victory especially you know just before lcq and all that good stuff get the confidence to show that yeah last month we were the best team in the region be scared of us but so far I'm gonna be honest with you. It's been five monthly finals, five times they went the way to FA Mini Pekas. They have not lost a single official match. I, I, I've got to stick with my gut and FA Mini Pekas just, you know, I, I want to see the six out of six. I also do. I'm not gonna lie. I, I would love to see it on the side of FA Mini Pekas, but I'm also one for the underdogs as well. So I'm a bit split, honestly, in terms of decisions, but. I've got to side with what is the most likely or is I going to get grilled by the Twitch chat. Going into Bell's Rock then for knockout. I'm going to leave you guys to it. Trav, Teddy, Trav, take it away. Oh, I mean, I'm not too far. I'm not too far off by the looks of things. 49% still going with Clash against FA Mini Peckers. So clearly, people are starting to warm up to the idea that it's not just a pretty logo that makes a team win because that seemed like it was kind of what happened with the Super Enigado's prediction. Yeah, I don't know what, what, what you mean, though. I think the FA Mini Peckers 
logo is clearly <laughs> superior to the competition. But Bounce Rock is where we're going to be kicking things off. And Great is going to be the first pick for FA Mini Pekas. They banned out all three throwers that you would typically see here. That's Grum, Sprout, and Tick out of the equation. Uh, Clash, they'll be betting out RT, which I think is fairly interesting. I mean, it's a region that does value the RT quite highly. Uh, they also add Shelly and Gene to the mix, which I feel like is just a little bit more common, uh, at least across other regions. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bonnie's still available. I'd imagine that's kind of what Clash should reach for next, especially considering that RT's banned out, which is uh, always a good counter to Bonnie. And there you go. Yeah, they do choose to pick that up. I like these first two picks from Clash. I mean, we know how explosive this uh, this gray pick can be if it sees a chance, if it sees the Vrock being low, anybody being low at that as well, uh, then it's going to be able to lunge forward with the TP and go for it. But so far, I'm kind of a Clash. Yeah, I, I really don't mind their draft. I really don't. I mean, they, they, they're, they're going to be playing around the range. I think it, it might get a little bit scarier if there is a good TP placed in, especially on the Brock. It's not necessarily going to be the best at dealing with it. It will depend on which gadget he's rocking as well. Gus brought into the equation here for FA Mini Packers. I don't mind it. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be superior, like Sharpshooter, compared to the Brock or... Especially the Bonnie. I'm quite curious about how that interaction is going to be working out for FA Mini Packers, but they got another pick to iron out any quirks in their draft. And then we'll have the final pick from Clash. Yeah, well, they're going to go with that B. I like that, especially against the Bonnie. Good matchup down one of those lanes. And with the throwers kind of out of the way, uh, thanks to the Mini Packer drafts, it's going to have a bit of an easier time, especially if they kind of want to keep on going this ranged approach. Um, so, uh, really not sure what they. they, they probably going to go for here. It's a bit of a tough one for them. Pretty much all the range options, the, the, the valid, kind of picked out of the way, and especially with that B, having such a good matchup into the Bonnie and uh, the TP towards the Brock's very good thing. And I know that, yeah, they really like the Mr. P in this region. We did see it a little bit, well, actually quite a lot from Reply Totem yesterday in Europe as well, so definitely um, moving its way further and further into the meta. But I do like that pick. It's going to be good against that B. Yeah, I like it too. I think it can find some very good value against the B, but with the way it's shot works, I mean, it's going to be dealing tons of damage to a low HP brawler like B, but also just the porters. They waste so much ammo, and no one exactly uh, on the side of FM Mini Pekka says the, the, the fastest reload speed either. So it's going to be a good way to just burn through some ammunition. I think it can be a little bit challenging in Knocko to get your porter base in time to really see that value come through, especially in the first uh, round or sometimes even the second. But nevertheless, it is a threatening pick, and oh, early on, Firecore taking a lot of damage. Yeah, some great connections from two for there as well. It's going to be great, obviously, through this mid against the Dino, and range is with the Dino at the moment with these bounces over the top, but not really finding too many connections. This right-hand side so one-sided towards two for them, and Pekka being pushed back down the left as well. Kyodog going to get pulled by Motep, and the final connection is there as well. Kyodog could have jumped away, but even that would have been... Quite a waste for a super. A follow-up from Motep with the TP. I like that he's not scared to just burn it, lock in that first round, get things going for himself and his team. Even though they did have the man advantage, it wasn't necessarily necessary. And too far is gonna go down to the gas, and they still have a super carried over. B super not gonna be the most influential, but it can still be quite deadly if someone gets it within range. Yeah, I'm sure Tufa's a little bit annoyed about his teammates for that previous round because he was hitting shots, not getting hit himself, but the other two lanes kind of just folded pretty quickly and the B doing a good job against the Bonnie here. Obviously, she's quite slow, so the B should be able to connect a good few shots to the 3Ks as well. Slow available, but you know, even if that's placed onto the Bonnie, it can just jump towards it. So it really does need to be another one of these lanes making the move and making the play. We've got the Porters now, and he's going to place them a little bit further back. The walking came back there from Motep. Great connection from him, but he does fall low, and Firecrow being followed up as well. Good, good jump from... from from, uh, from the body, but actually he didn't even get anything but a trade. Psycho is low, but the positioning power with Clash. Yeah, I, I do still kind of like the chances here for Clash, in all honesty. The B Super, even though useful at a closer range, not necessarily going to be the most impactful in that matchup. Becca in trouble. He's being chased as well by the Porter, left in a one versus two now, and he might decide to just settle it in the gas. He's going to do just that, not feed any more super for this third round, but there is going to be a Porter base available immediately for Clash as well. So right now, they're in a pretty good spot. 
Yeah, I mean it's a great spot with the porters. You know they're going to be good against every single one of these oppo uh, every single one of the opposition because of the single projectile that all three of them are going to be putting out. Now the next porter just come in. Still got a couple of gadgets to hand as well, I believe, but might want to use it when it's heading towards the B or something like that. And that's so useful. Looks like it's going to be falling quite low with a few of these here. Spyker are going to use the gadget over there on the left hand side as well, bringing quite low. A couple of those ammo slots being used on the porter once more. Yeah, Motep not entirely sure either where that Porter base has been placed in the bush, so he's not been able to get the connections onto it. Might still try to take it down before we get towards the late game. He's going to go for a pull into Adinho, nearly gets a follow-up as well, but Adinho still stands. Super from Tufa only finds a, finds a single connection onto Fire Crow, and now the TP from Motep, that's going to be Tufa, a sitting duck. Kyoda going aggressive, is able to find a one. Point up teasing that TP and he's gonna go for it. Finds the kill. It's a one versus one. Now the porter base is out of the equation. Pekka with the charge shot. Gets the connection, but another porter base plays down. The TP from Pekka is so low HP though. And he's not able to get that final shot to land. Beautifully done by Clash. Very back and forth, but it is Clash to take the first game. I mean, that Tora could not have come at a better time. The Porter's coming in extremely clutch there against the B, which is kind of expected, but just placing it in front of him perfectly in time to be able to take that final B shot that would have been the killing blow. Clash take the first game. And I mean, they had, a, in my eyes, the better draft for it. It's just as soon as those Porters come down, that's when Mini Pekka start struggling. Yeah, I think not feeding that Porter base is going to be key. We saw in the first round how much easier it was for FA Mini Pekka. Zidinho in a tough position and it was a bit of a bait at the end of the day, but it is going to be a one-for-one -one trade. So not the end of the world, but there is a Porter base placed down and that's not going to be the best here for FA Mini Pekka's. Yeah, Pekka's quite low, but he does get the slow off. This base does still remain, and Mini Pekka's having a terrible time. Adinho can't be too far off another cycle as well. Got a few shots in on the previous one, but I'm sure he'll want to save a few gadgets for, for future rounds, because this, this round should be going their way with the Porters spawning in and tanking so many shots. But the gadget used there by Fikro, I feel like that's a little bit of a waste, but does use another gadget now for Adinho. You know, pretty much push Fikro back and keep him low for near enough the majority of the rest of the game. In goes that rocket fuel as well, and two for just not healing up, kind of leaving Adinho in a bit of a 1v2 here. Yeah, it's interesting how this one is playing out. Firecrow is going to be very low HP. Eventually, Tufa gets the connection, the Rocket Rain as well. And Clash was the first round. Very solid stuff on their end. And right now, FN Mini Packers need to be very careful or they'll be conceding an early set. Well, it's looking good for Clash so far. Shots coming through down this right hand side. And we do have the ports as well. I've only just seen that. Ooh. Walking came back from Mota, but it really doesn't do too much. We're going to see the swap going back for Clash and kind of had these matchups all the way through. Tufa now just throwing some shots down. He's been dominating Fikro pretty much through the whole thing. Walking Kane's going to miss and through come these porters yet again. Yeah, that was the final one as well. TP in from Motep trying to take down MSRP, but it's not going to be successful. Becca gets jumped and he will get a kill, but still one that gets traded here. And Firecrow is in a world of pain. And this one versus two, nothing he can do. Clash, lock this one in, and what a solid opening set from them. Yeah, I mean, that was really great. And, you know, we said we said through the previous game, the, the drafts just look a little bit weird for mini packers today. And I thought, you know, the B into the Bonnie, probably a good pick, right? You're going to be able to hit a fair few shots because uh, of the, the, the range and also the, the speed that Bonnie's going to be walking at. But that Mr. P last pick was just perfect. You really couldn't have asked for a better last pick there. And it kind of slipped my mind that that brawler would have come in. And I feel like it might have slipped mini packers mind as well, because I don't think they'd have drafted the same if they'd have thought about the Mr. P coming through. Yeah, I, 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 for me, the biggest problem on the side of FA Mini Pekka is, well, like, if we look at how much value they found, I felt was, um, I'm confused. I forgot to roll it in for a second. No, Gus, 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 Gus. Gus just didn't feel the most impactful to me. Like, I, I don't think it's a bad brawler at all, but it was kind of just struggling to commit to any fights and... I don't feel like its shield was the most useful to his teammates either. I don't know. I just... I felt like Motep was really trying to get those openings. Pekka was still able to get some good value. Had a good matchup against the Bonnie as well. But Firecrow was just... Yeah, struggling to really find as much value as you would kind of hope from a Gus. And uh, it, it was a really tough draft for them. Yeah, look at that. One kill, 57 DPS. Uh, 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 Tough game and tough opening set here for Mini Pekka's and definitely as well for Firecrow.
Yeah, I mean, I think I think you make a very good point there. I, I, we saw them maybe swap the lanes once and try something different, but instantly Clash clocked onto it and swapped back. So I think that kind of uh, kept them in the driving seat there, right? whereas Mini Peckers, they didn't really make many adjustments throughout at all. The swaps they made, when Clash swapped back, they didn't kind of follow along with it and go with them, and I think that put them at a bit of a disadvantage there as well. But Clash definitely coming out the gate swinging today. Drafted pretty much perfectly, in my opinion, and that last pick really did clutch up for them. Get on Grande for our bounty set. That's going to be our set to map and mode. What we're draft can pretty much be decisive already if you make any big blunders. Curious to see what kind of approach they're going to go for. Throwers are something that we still see here sometimes, and it's something that we saw banned three times by FA Mini Packers in the opening set, and they will ban the tick again. Carl first pick, the rest of their bands were the Squeak and the Gene, Clash banning out Eve, Shelly, and Cordelius. They'll go for a great as their first pick. And so far, I don't mind either. I, I mean, Carl gets the free blue star, super valuable, still gonna be very good at playing around those walls. Great, great at opening, at finding openings. And Penny for me is gonna be a, just a little bit more questionable, not as much of a fan. I mean, we were, I already talked about a little bit in our previous match where I just don't feel like it's necessarily in the, in the best place at the moment. And I personally am not gonna be the biggest fan of it right now in its place in the meta. Yeah, I don't mind it really, but I think, you know, if you're gonna be knocking back with your turret against the Carl, it can be a decent thing. Carl is gonna be going for that blue star, Nita coming in next. And we, you know, we've seen Nita coming on Canal Grande quite a lot. It, very matchup dependent. It either gets a lot of value or no value at all. I think it was Foot yesterday where it was just like, absolutely no value whatsoever in one of the games, but then in another one we saw it get so much. Daryl gonna be coming in from FA Mini Packers as well. and. I mean, they haven't really got that much DPS on the side of Clash so far, but with this last pick, I feel like if they can pick something that's going to be decent against the Carl and Daryl, are going to be doing a decent job anyway. And I just feel like Daryl's a little bit of a weird pick. And, I, you know, I've been saying time and time again that mini packers have maybe been drafting a little bit weirdly today, at least in my eyes. And I think that kind of goes along with the same thing. Like, I don't, I don't hate the Daryl pick, but I just think it's a little bit weird. Uh, it's an interesting one for sure. I like the Maisie though. It's going to be good at shutting down the aggressive ideas from the Daryl and also from the Carl. If he's uh, spinning or up close, that slow especially will be brutal. Pretty much leaves you as a sitting duck. So I kind of like the idea of it. I think Maisie is still a brawler that's not the easiest to, to bring into pro play, but I can definitely see some value here if it's played well. Well, we'll see if it does manage to pull through and get some work done because, you know, it's going to be able to knock that car back as well. Decent match up there. And I mean, it's, it's definitely going to struggle quite a lot when that um, when that Nita Bear comes down. But it's just a question of how many Nita Bears we're going to see. Blue Star obviously going to go the way of FA Mini Peckers with this flying hook into middle, but only two remain now, which means the aggression's not going to be all game long. Blue Star for FA Mini Peckers. So Clash are going to be a little bit on the back foot early on, forcing in the aggression. I mean, the, they knew beforehand that that blue star wasn't gonna be there. This is Carl. It's pretty much a free blue star for every game. It does cost you a gadget, so not exactly free, but you won't be contested for it. Yeah, well, some good shots coming through. Now, flying hook, was that flying hook into the wall there I just saw? I, I'm not sure if you saw that as well, or I'm kind of just absolutely losing it, but the dash forward and the stun, the knockback straight back into him. Kaidog's got a fall there as well, the two for picks on the right, and he's got a free walk by to stay alive. Motep doesn't get anything to trade, and it's four to one. Beautifully done by Clash. What a way to get the lead. FA Mini Pekas, though, found a player out of place, and that is going to be three stars now to their name. Only one behind. They need to find an opening somewhere. Attack from Medinho. The mortar is definitely going to be most useful in those defensive positions if you are pushing up. Can still be used well in offense, but just going to help keep your position at bay just a little bit more. They have the roll to work with. Fire Crow has super as well, but needs to be so incredibly careful of the Maisie super that will just instantly get him out of it. 
Yeah, Tufa's got four, so that's going to be something to be careful with. Pekka's got roll as well, and that is going to be dangerous. Firecrow Coop with the spin and still a flying hook in hand as well. That is going to be a tough matchup to win. Then goes Daryl, the TP's there as well. The Pekka's going to come in. The knockback from Godog. The dash away, but he still gets picked up. The respawn from Adinho, and they do stay on top. Clash take another game and carry on their dominance through this one, but it definitely wasn't comfortable. It was close and it got messy towards the end, but Clash gonna be happy to still take that one regardless. So far, they've got three games in a row, and FA Mini Packers have been real quiet, not nearly fighting as much as we usually see. But let's find out if this next game can be any different. Great tags from Firecrow. He's gonna be like a shot off from Super already. But they're going to be playing it safe for now. As FM Mini Pekka's got that blue start. That means that they can play it a bit more comfortable. But Firecrow still only with a slimmer of health manages to survive that walking cane. Yeah, the grass break and a couple of the walls that went along with it as well is going to be so helpful. And only even scout out one pathway through this time and should make it a little bit easier. One walking cane still remains for two for there as well. And now the TP's there too. But who does he go towards? He's going to use that fire crook, uh, this uh, walking cane, should I say, towards uh, Motep. But really not finding a lot. A little flying hook around the back, roll in as well. Can they get much done? There's the knockbacks there. Peck's going to fall down. Tufa's got the TP, but where's he going to go? Gets one kill. Surely can't get the second. Should go down to Firecrow when he does. But it is only a three deficit, and maybe if Clash can claim this round side, then they might still have a chance of coming back. Yeah, Firecrow would love to go in with that super motep going to the right side on his own. I'm not sure if that is really the move, to be completely honest. Pretty much just giving away two stars for free. Now, certainly, that means that if anyone goes on outside of FA Mini Pekka's, it's going to be Clash back in the lead. And I think he fed a Mortar as well, which makes it a lot trickier in that position because they don't have that much space to maneuver with. And between the Mortar and the Penny Shots that will split up, Fire Pro goes in, but he doesn't manage to go out. TP's going to be away there as well. Can to forget one of the trades. He does get a trade, and that's the lead along with it as well. Pekka goes down, and Mini Pekka's, they're in such a phenomenal position. And then we just saw Fikro go in with the car. I don't know if it's overconfidence or what, but Fikro's going to try and spin in. Kaidon's going to need a super to knock him out of this. He gets him, and he gets Motep low as well. Another knockback's there, but Pekka no goes way. in. He gets one, he gets two, but it is 18 to 17. And somehow, FA Mini Pekka's come out on top. We said it earlier that it would get messy. Game one certainly was, but the second one even crazier towards the end. This time around in favor of FA Mini Peckers as they pick up their first game of the match. Now looking to make it a set. I mean, it's so, so scrappy. We saw kind of over aggression from Mini Peckers when they were in the lead. And then Clash just got cleaned up towards the end there. Ficro definitely overstepping his line just a little bit here and the walking cane's gonna need some value get rid of some of this grass and get rid of a couple of those walls yeah we've seen him land some really good ones before one on two mode gets stacked to one hp but he's still standing mid edina is also low hp pekka and firecrow going in but the tp out and the knockback from the mortar firecrow now in a very tricky situation gonna be hard to get anything out of there it's gonna go down, it will be traded out at least. Motep nearly going down to the mortar there, but eventually manages to take it out. As well, Kadok surviving with 90 HP. It's gonna be huge for Clash, as they keep the lead and don't give away any free stars, but Edinho is gonna fall to find a tricky position as well. He's one shot, has TP, will TP back to safety. And the blue star is gonna give the lead to Clash, because they're all even in stars. And down comes this Mortar now as well, and this is the position that we're in in the first game where Clash just held defense and didn't really move too much. It worked for them in that one, but in the previous game, Mini Peckers had that late game aggression that paid off. Walking came through the wall, Motep dragged him to an unconventional spot, but he does survive it out. No follow ups from Clash from anybody but Tufa. Just trying to work for another one of these TPs because that's going to be one of the things that's going to get them out of these tricky spots. And you're getting hit hard by Ficro. Not going to hit the second though. The Mortar's going to go down. Dash forwards and the not back and he TPs back as well. He gets another one. Perfect from Kodog. Great plays, but Pekka's going to get a kill. Not going to get out though. And now it's seven stars what they need. He used a roll as well to try to get out, which means he won't have it for offense now. Firecrow does have super, but no more flying hooks to get him up close and where he wants to be. The bear is heading upwards as well. Some good damage. Firecrow spinning, but there's the final kill from Kyodog. 
And that is going to be Clash locking in a second set. And the smiles are there as they are closer than they've ever been to winning their first monthly final of the year. I mean, this is a great start from Clash, but to be honest, even in this spot, you just can't count out FE Mini Peckers. They've won against Clash so many times this year. They've had a couple of 3-2s, as Ark mentioned a little bit earlier on, but it's always FE Mini Peckers who come out on top. You've just got to hope that Clash don't get overconfident and they don't, you know, start messing up their drafts, because I feel so far, they've been drafting really well in comparison to FE Mini Peckers. You know, we saw some great things. Somehow they managed to survive this one out, got a couple of trades in the late games, but the second one, it was definitely on the side of FA Mini Peckers when they started to bring things back. But now, it, it, that was just the point of no return, or what could be the point of no return, because it's 2-0, and that's so hard to come back from. Absolutely so. I mean, so much momentum now on the side of Clash. And this next draft is going to be so incredibly important. Stats-wise, it is Clash, which is favorable. And it makes sense. It's Bounty. It's usually one of the game modes that, you know, the stats just tell more of the whole story than in some other more control based modes to found the eighth kills is going to be leading the way Pyro is a lot of dps and i mean it makes sense we've saw the ridiculous call shots that he managed to hit but he just couldn't quite get closure so overall a good job from fa mini packers but not nearly enough that final game was just a beautiful shutdown on the side of clash well, it's going to be double swoosh to see if we decide it in the third or if we go a bit further, if FA Mini Packets can start to bring something back. But something's got to change, something big, because it has been Clash domination so far. We'll see if it changes around in Gem Grab and they start to make this comeback. Three sets in a row is what will be needed by FA Mini Packets. Now Sandy as the first pick from Clash. A bit unconventional, not sure if it'd be one of my first picks, but let's take a bit of a look at the bands. Gene is the return pick from FA Mini Packers there. Bandwise, looking at the Shelly Cordelius and Mr. P from FA Mini Packers. Tara to follow up as well. Double pull coming out of FA Mini Packers. Crow, M's, and Amber bands from Clash. Interesting approach. Been a minute since I have seen double pull. Usually we've been seeing more and more Tara, but in a way, kind of replacing some of the utility kit that the Gene provides with that pull. With just a little bit of more peps to it, a little bit more damage up close as well. See the Nita locked in by Clash. I liked it as well. Sandy here is also something that we used to see quite a lot, and at the moment just don't see it nearly as much anymore. It was traditionally one of the mids on Double Swoosh, but it is a map where it can be a little bit ambiguous what is going to be played mid or what is going to be played lane, and Benny is not going to help with that ambiguity. I mean, this time FA Mini Packers and Mize have got the draft, and I don't think there's any doubt about that, but. This could just be something weird that Clash have tried in scrims and worked. We'll see what Mini Packers have got for their last pick. Double pull so far, and that's got the game-changing capability of pretty much more than any other comp could have. But we'll see if they do choose to go something even more similar. You know, we, we might even see a max and go a massive, massive throwback, but it's going to be a squeak. Sticky residue showing up in the bush, slowing people down, and it's a pretty solid roller all around as well. Yeah, I like it. I think it's a pretty good pick here overall. An interesting draft, for sure, but I'll be siding a little bit more on the side of FA Mini Pekas, but with that being said, I really want to see how Clash are going to play this one out, and I mean, I'd say it would make more sense to have the Penny mid and then play the Sandy on lane, but they're going to be very interchangeable as well if they wish to do so. Yeah, well... We'll see if they are going to start something special or if Clash will be able to close it out because, honestly, I prefer FA Mini, comp, uh, Mini Packers comp in this one by quite a bit. But we know that the amount of spawning that can come in from Clash and the Sandstorm can change a game with a click of the fingers as well. Tufa has flown very nicely under the radar there. Sweet dreams to send him to sleep. Kydox low. The knockback's there from Motep, so at least we know he's not going to be playing those vengeful spirits. And three gem lead for Clash already. Well done for this early start. Becca trying to creep up, trying to find some value towards that first super. Pull from Mota will connect and Tufa goes down. The right side is quite opened up now, which is something that Clash are not necessarily going to be the happiest about. So, not the end of the world just yet. Yeah, definitely not going to be pleased. 
especially with this composition that's so short range at seven with a penny, but the penny's gonna be solidified down that mid. Pekka's gonna be here in the sandstorm. And that's such a good cycle for Kaidog as well. Three shots onto it already. Penny tore it down and they're setting up perfectly. Two of them slotting into this this uh, bush on the left and Motep's at risk. Pekka's gonna come back in. He's got the pull, but Sweet Dream sends him to sleep. Motep's low and Kaidog cleans up. The Nita Bear's there as well. We might be saying bye to Firecrow, but the sandstorm is up and the last gem spawns. Brutal. Here for F8 Mini Pack is a Sclash. Are playing incredibly well. A couple seconds away from getting a match point as well. They haven't had many of those in the grand finals this year. Pulling to Kayo Dog, but he's still standing and with only Firecrow left alive, he's not going to be able to shut them down. Match point locked in for Clash and out. What we need from FA Mini Pekka's is a full on reverse sweep. They've won every single Motley final match this year. And the last one might be the first one they lose. I mean, this is tough for FA Mini Pekka's considering the year they've had, how meaningful it'd be for them to win six and scare a lot of teams going into the world finals. It all depends on whether they can start something special and start come back now. Residue was placed down on the right hand side there, but Kyodox taking more fire than he was in the previous. It's not going to be the same start for Clash as he falls down early on, but still three gems in hand and two for some wonderful shots. Bear already as well, and maybe I should take that back, but Edinho's low, he's going to go down, and that's going to be four gems on the floor and probably in the hands of Mini Pekka's. Kyodok, super aggressive once again, and he gets tagged up. Beautifully done, as the Gene will be there to close out that kill. Edinho, a bit out of position there as well. Gonna cost him his life, and delivering two more gems here to FA Mini Pekka's at seven in the back for them. The Terra pull as well, and some nice connections from Pekka. As Motep still has a pull of his own. Right now, FA Mini Pekka's looking really good in this position, but we have to remember, a single mistake and the match is going to be fully over. Yeah, I mean, Kaido desperately needs a Sandstorm if something's going to happen now, because that's the pretty much turnaround that they have, getting control and be able to get a lot done. Sweet Dreams is there, but the pull's available too. There's the, there's the Sandstorm, but the pull comes in from Mota, but it's onto what probably would have been a different person than who he was aiming for. But a good few shots coming out of Dino now, four in hand, eight in the hands of those. Kaido can't get a final shot off to get Pekka down, and the Healing Shade's going to do a lot of work as well, but quickly taken down by Adinho, because you don't want that risk. Motep's low, Tufa's coming in once more, but it's just death cycles for Clash. They need these sandstorms to be able to do anything, and they're just not coming as frequently as they'd like. Yeah, once the walls get opened up, it gets trickier and trickier here for Clash. A single gem is all that FA Mini Pickers need to start that countdown, but they're not given that Ooh. despite actually the pool coming through, and that is going to be the countdown locked in by FA Mini Pickers. Clash looking to interrupt it, but they need a kill on Tumota. He's gonna be the only real target here as Tufa is gonna get pulled. The Dino won't get close enough to do anything about it. And FA Minipeka strike back. It's only the second game of the entire match that they managed to pick up. But I mean, it's in the nick of time, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a more perfect pull followed by a more perfect squeak super as well. I think that's the most squeak supers that I've actually hit, seen hit in, in, in a single throw. I think all of them hit there, which is a little bit unusual. We would have just seen it there, but the highlight did clip it off. It's still match point for Clash, but Mini Peckers, they've got a lifeline. Nevertheless, Clash, still a match point. Still an absolute threat right now. Sticky Residue creates a little bit of space here for Fire Crow to try to get a slightly more advanced position, but so far we're just playing it very safe. Not willing to give too much away, but he's gonna give away some positioning as Skyrodoc sneaks up. We'll be taking a shot. But right now, Clash have a lot of control on the board. I mean, it really is just Kyodog making a walk around the back. It is going to go down now, but Clash still have some pressure, and they've got five gems in hand as well. Squeak Super available, and Tufa remains down this right hand side. May, may, might make the, ro the rotation to the left now, but all of them being pinned back by these shots. Kyodog gets a few in the mid there as well, but the healing shade, the shade do take him down. Pack is going for a pull, but he actually falls. Waste there. This is a healing shade and not damage as well. Pull comes in from Motep, and that's going to make it four to five. Well done by FM Mini Pekka's to get back in position. Wouldn't have been easy to pull. It's gonna be a quick one there as Skyrodog falls just to get that final shot to connect and move forward. It's too far. Still alive somehow there. Mortar will find a connection and gems are all even. However, Skyrodog's gonna get a slowdown. It's only a one for one trade. And for now, we are still absolutely tied up. 
Yeah, there wasn't any residue there. And Peck has got this pull now. I think he's going to have to be careful. He's in a bit of a compromised spot. The pull's going to be missed. And Manita Bear's there. Kyron's got the flank. In he comes. The Sandstorm's available. It's there. Beautiful stuff from Clash. Down he goes. Seven to eight. Adinho might be able to get these last couple of gems from the mid. Motep's got with the pull. And we know what he can do with it. But look at Toothless position as well. This is scary here for FB Mini Peck. Skyro is flanking as well. Motep, one HP. And I don't think they can interrupt this countdown unless they get the kill. And that's just not going to be happening here. Clash are going to take their first monthly final of the year. It took them six months to get to this point. But the excitement is there and well deserved as well. Beautifully done. I mean, that was just, it was just great from Clash. It really was sweeps all day long for them and sweeps all day long throughout this portion of the South America region. Look how excited they are. The first win on the board and it could not have come any later considering this is the last monthly final. Pekka looking a bit defeated, but I think they can be pleased with their year long performance. They made Worlds directly. They've had five wins in monthly finals and it really has been a perfect year for them. Obviously, minus this month. Yeah, it's just the tiniest of stains, really, on what has been uh, an absolutely perfect sheet here. So, not really the biggest deal either for Mini Pickers. It would have been nice, you know, to win every single match. But then again, losing one match throughout the entirety of the year, I mean, no one's going to be complaining about that, are they? Beautifully done by Clash. It's definitely going to be a big morale boost as well towards the end of the year. They'll be going through LCQ and every little morale boost they can get is definitely going to be useful there. I mean, after that performance, I've got high hopes for them in the LCQ as well, which is going to be coming up, obviously, in October. And look at this. Look at Minipekka's stats in comparison to Clash. Clash take the win, but obviously playing that objective a bit more and getting the valuable kills, getting the turnarounds. 3, 7, and 6 in comparison to 8, 13, and 7. That's just massive. It's really big that Clash managed to win that, despite those stats being so massively in favor of FA Minipekka's. But our MVP for this grand final is gonna be Kyle Dog on the side of Clash, of course. I mean, what, what a way to end the series as well with just three zeros for Clash. It took the entire year to get to that point, but now that they get that victory, it's an incredibly convincing one as well. Yeah, it really was. Great stuff for Clash, and obviously Kyle Dog being the MVP there as well did deserve that. All of Clash just played perfectly throughout that as well. It was some great, great stuff, I will say, throughout that entire match for them. 3-0 in a thoroughly deserved match for Clash. Mini Peckers, they've had a great year. They're heading straight to Worlds, so I'm sure they're going to be happy as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm sad for my prediction, but I have no doubt that Ark <laughs> is much more upset than me. <laughs> right, and now... Well, you are truly the prediction master, Trav. I, I stand corrected. I will not stand in your way uh, any longer. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. When I get a feeling, I get a feeling. Let's take a little bit of a look at the regional leaderboard, guys. See how things shape up after that 620 still for FA Mini Peckers here. Looking pretty perfect for them still, but Clash did just take the win. Didn't affect any of the leaderboards, so they're still sitting in second place, locked in that LCQ spot uh, from their last game of the year in the monthly final. Super and Agardos and Mystic Esports follow up just after that. We haven't seen the end of those. I'm sure they'll be coming back in future or in the future year uh, for some more great Brawl Stars gameplay. Absolutely so. It's been a super exciting first half, really, of the Motley Finals. We have another, you know, fully fledged Motley final still for the west side uh, of the region. So I'm really thrilled to see what's going to be happening next for the region. Yeah, well, that's going to be it for South America East. Don't go anywhere, guys. South America will be West. We'll be coming up just after this.
to the Brawl Stars Championship here off in to South America West. Now, we've done South America East, and uh, we're stuck with you again, Trav. Great to have you back, mate. That's uh, that's a good thing, being stuck with me, because, you know, we, we, we love to have a bit of banter, Basically. and no, no better banter spot than me being the undisputed predictions master once more. Yeah, moving on. Let's take a look at the regional leaderboards. <laughs> Let's revise our memory on this side of the region, of course. Uh, Datos FA, in case you're unaware, is the former Morakos, uh, former uh, Leave No Wits squad. And they are currently in a very, very decent spot. Reconic, um, of course, Esports SA, didn't actually qualify this month either. Uh, so they are actually the team that are in the prime position. I think there's a bit of a mistake on the terms of the graphic there. Reconic are actually in the top spot. Uh, SK Kalelis today have got a real opportunity to cause a huge huge upset if they can make and win in the grand finals today they will actually knock off Raconic into getting that LCQ spot and of course only LCQ spots up for grabs in this side of the region the question today is for regards to that last LCQ spot will SK Claire's be over be overthrowing things you can see here in the quarterfinal stages blue label actually got the win over Raconic in a 3-2 scoreline I mean going back to July that was actually the team that lost to Raconic in that stage in the 3-1 scoreline getting their revenge it seems this time round in August and making the semi-finals up against SK Kalanis first Shield Gang later on the former level esports squad take on Datos FA again leave no witness getting that rename there on that lower side of the bracket but the big storyline here is today is can SK Kalanis throw Raconic esports out of that LCQ spot to do it they've got to win today in the grand final trap I mean, it's tough to be that team who's watching on, but at the same time, you know, SKC have got a long road ahead of them if they do want to try and take this win. And here are the predictions as well. I mean, I don't know what's going on today, but I just seem to be differing from everybody. Yeah, I mean, you know, feel free to carry on holding the mic, Trav, because you know, we didn't get a little glimpse of the predictions at the end of the uh, previous side of this region. You know, just rub it in further, why don't you? Oh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm never going to say no to that. I went a bit bold, <laughs> I went for Clash, and I managed to pull through for the first time this year. And, you know, maybe you guys should side with me, because I seem to just know what's going on today. Yeah, I'll admit, I did want to change my predictions, but then you accused me of copying you once again. So I'm kind of stuck with it now, aren't I? But you can place your predictions as well over at event.brawlstars.com, where you can take advice from the predictions master over here and get them all right today. As I, I do have a little bit of a feeling today, Travis. You know, you said before you get a feeling about your predictions. I have a feeling that you could be on to a, a good run here today. But of course, make sure you sync up your Supercell ID there, get those in-game rewards, and of course, exclusive BSC assets also pins sprays all up for grabs there by doing so get some uh, predictions right get some answers cor uh, answered correctly as well there in terms of the trivia and get your way through those tiers that's what's most important here yeah it really is i mean you know i'm doing absolutely dreadful when it comes to predictions on the event website i'm quite far behind so maybe it'll be my chance to catch up today with a few more right predictions but looking at the first game blue label versus sk Kalalis, south america nico meliodas jeremy are the first team on the side of blue label and as you said it was a bit of an upset in the quarterfinals they took down reconic esports and made them watch on and they're gonna be now cheering for the team who beat them exactly that having to watch from the sidelines having your fate lie in the hands of another squad is never where you want to be when there's lcq on the line but that is the predicament and it's a huge drop off no less the rockonic esports who didn't you know they, they won last month in the monthly finals this month nowhere to be seen now for sk kalea is a real opportunity for that very reason prosy lakitas and exit today have got the, the, they've got the mastership to be able to do so. They've got the mechanics to do so. But it's been a while since they were able to win in the grand finals. Going back to April was the last time they did. But with five out of five semi-finals appearances, they've had consistency to their name. Can they end the season? Can they end the year on the biggest high of all? That is the question here today. Yeah, you know, there, there's nothing better than coming into the last monthly final with a chance of making it to the LCQ and then actually pulling it off just tops it off even more because this is a big decider for them. They've either played a, a year for, for nothing. Well, well, not really for nothing, right? Because they've had some cash. They've got a lot of cash along the way. But they've played a year to get to those events, to get to the LCQ, to get to Worlds. They've got the chance to do it today. Now the question is, will they do it or won't they? So much on the lines here today. SK Kalenis can take their fate into their own hands. They've got to win it all. That is the prize at hand. LCQ will be a huge opportunity 
And of course, just to rub it into Raconic ultimately as well. Can't deny that. It's certainly on their minds. And therefore as well, a lot of pressure mounting for them. They've got to put that aside and focus on the task at hand. But they've got to get through Blue Label first. And again, you know, a squad that you know have clearly demonstrated that they're capable of some surprises here. They've had some growth. They've had some learnings along the way. They've implemented them. You've got to hand that to them. Certainly, though, got to be said, the underdogs here, SK Kaleas, have been in the semifinals time and time again. But can they make this first hurdle today? Can they get into the grand finals and then worry about things later? They've got to get the drafts absolutely right today. No time for error. They've got to make this clean, quick, and decisive. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. They've got a lot of pressure on their shoulders. And the question is, will they be able to deal with it or won't they? That's the, the big thing because they've definitely got the talent. They've got the skill. They've got the team play to be able to go all the way and win it. But with the pressure added on top of that, could they just crumble all the way down and fold under it? Well... 88% on event.brawlstars.com feel like SK Kalevis can do this. And if that's not a huge boost of confidence, I don't know what is. I mean, it would be a huge storyline to occur. Absolutely so monumental for this region to happen in the last monthly finals. And a great deal of the population feel like they can absolutely do this. And I've got to say as well to that, I mean, it's fantastic to see, but you know, the former Leave No Witness squad have really been a thorn in their side, and they are still to come later on today, now renamed to Datus FA. That is a consideration still, but 88% trap, that is convincing. Yeah, I mean, 88% is very, very convincing for those. And I mean, you know, I, I understand why they do it, because they are so heavily, you know, uh, in control of, of this game, and I feel like they are the ones who probably should be taking it. But as I said, it's just a thing of pressure, whether or not they'll be able to take down Blue Label first. And then obviously after that, as you say, they've still got a very difficult team that they've had issues with all year long in defeating uh, ahead of them as well. And, you know, this would be uh, a big, big thing for them to be able to make it to the LCQ. And if you can make that kind of storyline happen, which clearly you and Teddy are kind of uh, wanting to happen at that as well, uh, is, um, is definitely the, uh, the, the thing that you guys are predicting for, the storyline, I'm sure. Absolutely. So well, if you are just joining the stream, welcome, of course. Here is the narrative behind today's side of the region and why it's so important. That is FA, former Leave No Witness squad, have already locked themselves in for LCQ, so they are safe and sound. But Rakonic Esports are currently sitting in a position where they are in LCQ. There's two spots available for this region. So the fact that Rakonic Esports SA did not qualify to the semi-final stages means that they are sitting on the sidelines watching the events unfold and SK Kalelis can overtake them. But to do that, they've got to win today's grand final. No easy feat, but it is possible to be dethroned. And we're about to see the very team that could do just that if they can get through this first stage. And 74% on event.brawlstars.com feel like they will take the win here against Blue Label. Certainly the underdogs, no doubt about it. I think 26% is actually not a bad percentage to have to their name in all fairness because, you know, this is a place that SK Kalelis have been five times out of, well, now six times out of six. And that is a huge statistic to their name. Going into Crystal Arcade, though, and the picks and bands coming in thick and fast. Ruffs first for SK Kalelis. It's the Crow Band, the Sam, the Tara, and the Nita, the Cordelis, and the Shelly Bands. To be honest, I think the 76% is quite accurate. I think that's quite a good prediction from the community, I will say. Squeak is going to be the first pick there of Blue Label as well. Good answer to uh, to the roughs in reality. Get rid of a lot of those sandbags really, really quick. And if he does bring in that, um, uh, that, that you know, meteor raining gadget, then it's still going to be a decent matchup for him. Got a little bit of a range advantage. But once rough starts to break up, if you pair it with something, it can be pretty solid. And then those top picks as well. I'm pretty sure all of them are still available. Looking quick glance. So they're still extremely heavily on the table. But I don't feel like I really see Max here as much. Must have just had, you know, like five appearances and managed to win four of them. But Gus is going to come in for Blue Label next. I really like the gas here. Absolutely so. I think that's a solid drafting start for Blue Label in all honesty. And that could be something of a bit of a concern and why they've had some good success because ultimately getting that draft right really goes such a long, long way here. But SK, SK Kaleidos playing it safe with that roughs. Still that mid to consider now against the 
the Gus and B wouldn't be a bad shout for me. Bo, though, definitely is a consideration for this region, and I'm still vouching for it. I think it goes a long, long way. But good to see a lot of the big bands already out of the equation. Gene, they're going to come in, take that. I don't necessarily mind it, not my preferred, but it can absolutely do the job. I'll be concerned a little bit for that gush shielding and timing those magic hands right. That is then a concern. I mean, in terms of the side lanes as well, I mean, we've seen the spike already here today. It's a pretty safe idea. Wouldn't be the worst shout. Buzz, though, is a riskier one. That's the flavor of SK Kalein. It's clearly here today, and that excites me a lot. They've got to land it, though. It's not the easiest. It's not the most forgiving of Brawlers to bring in, but one that can get some very good results if played and timed correctly. Well, that's the thing. I don't think we've seen the most DPS from Blue Label so far, so I actually really don't mind that pick whatsoever. I think it's pretty solid to bring the Buzz in, just get the super from standing behind these walls, just winning lane, uh, and then it's going to be able to do a decent enough job, I feel, unless Blue Label brings something in that's going to be able to do a very solid job against it, but the question is kind of what does do that job against them? They're going to bring in the Maisie, and I do kind of like that. I think we've seen it uh, work very well on Canal Grande, which is obviously a bit of a different story to Crystal Arcade at the moment, but I think it does still work pretty well. I'm still to be convinced by Maisie. Certainly, I feel like we saw previously in Canal Grande for Bounty. He definitely had a lot more moments in that respect. It can be a problem on those side lanes for sure especially with that wall, but ultimately that's what the roughest, roughest is there for on the side of SK Kalelis, and the bus will want to keep that and utilize that. The base could be feeding into it potentially if no super is available, so there is something of a consideration for Blue Label, but I think for the most part, both drafts excite me. I think the, the buzz is certainly, if it has its moments, going to pop off and, and look incredibly exciting to watch, but it can also do the exact opposite effect. So Exic has got to land these, and from my memory, he's a very good buzz player, but he has to squeak already, just trying to farm that early super. I don't mind it going on the super on the aggressive so quickly, because ultimately without that super, he's going to be a bit of a sitting duck. Yeah, exactly, but Gadget's obviously still going to be in hand, but Jeremy, if he can get the knockback when he is on top of him, it's going to be difficult for him, but Blue Label with such a great start, residue over the right, and so he does burn down now. It's still trying to work for his super, gets it, but the dash away is perfect oh. from Jeremy, that's gorgeous. Picks up his super along the way as well, and Prozzi taking so much damage. I believe a little bit of a shield was missed there, but it actually doesn't matter. Such a great start for Blue Label. Seven gems. Catch it in there from X6, so he's not going to have the stun available for a while now, especially because he's reset things, and that's not the outcome that they were looking for. So the residue on the right hand side there, nicely placed there from Nico, and now X just trying to come around. Oh, look, this goes down to that as well. Disaster. Can anything come from this? Surely not, right? It's a three versus one, never going to happen. And Blue Label, the underdogs, are making this look easy. <laughs> SKC just don't like SKC. Like, I don't think we've seen anything from in this game. Didn't even see anybody go down. Beautiful from Blue Label. And SKC just could not make anything happen whatsoever. Perfect start for Blue Label. And Raconica watching on with open eyes and feeling good. Oh, they're licking their chops at the moment. It's still early days for sure. But nonetheless, the best possible start to things for them. Who again, require SK Kalelis to falter, to fail for them to go to LCQ, did not qualify towards the semi-final stages this month, but are in the LCQ spot at present. SK Kalelis is a riskier draft. I'm gonna show why it was worth it. That uh, residue on the left-hand side is gonna force Exic into very little option. Great pinch, great awareness then on the side. A blue label and Deos and Nico just made that look very straightforward. Certainly wasn't. Buzz is a threat, but so far it's not really delivering anything for SK Kalelis. Melio just down the mid there. He's got four gems in hand. Nico's got one. The rockets start to rain down. Jeremy's going to go for the dash forward, but the instant answer back from Exit gets punished once more. Follow up shots from Melio just yet again. And what are we seeing from SKC? The answer is absolutely nothing. It's really difficult for them to move out the spawn here. Gene Paul's going to be the only answer. And I mean, he's nowhere near. Got to start to make changes, and Exic is just feeding so much over to Nico as well as Meliodas is just not working. That is the bottom line. That is the headline here. There's still be utility available there. Nico places down another sticky residue, and that's going to force the spawn to be so slow off the onset. And the key has got magic hand that just cannot even close the gap as Cherry goes in on the aggressive, gets value for it. There's no time. Even if Exic had pull, he's going to pop over. There's the gadget there. It's just not going to do anything at all. He's going to be absolutely taking down a nice. Little there, gadget from Meliodas to seal it. The first set goes the way of Blue Label. 
and in a really convincing fashion. Not what we were expecting, but what was deserved, in my opinion. Also, he was giving a bit of, bit of a beatbox there as well, to be honest with you. Feeling good about himself with, uh, with the way yeah. he played in that one, and you can't blame him, because that was perfect there from Blue Label. Honestly, one of the fastest gem grab sets I've ever experienced, and I don't, like, did SKC even touch the gem mine? I feel like they didn't do anything. It was just absolute domination from the Maze onto the Buzz, and the Squeak was dominating the Ruffs, We like, we didn't see anything. We've seen in the past with SK Kalea specifically a little bit of a tendency to be overconfident and it's just dropped their guard a bit sometimes and they definitely felt it that time round. I had high hopes for the buzz. They had to make it work. They had to demonstrate to me as to why it was worth the risk and they just didn't do that. I mean, they are a team which play it very well, but in that particular map mode against the Squeak and the Macy when played correctly, it's very tough to really able to cycle off the back of things and Exit had a really, really tough time and that additional handover to his teammates, they weren't able to pick up the slack and that's what you need to do at this stage of the competition for what's on the line for them. Look at that. I'm hungry, Trev, but I didn't order donuts. SK Clans bring nothing but that to the plate. I mean, DPS was pretty low for the most part as well. Just absolutely nothing to show for things. And that is the, the the worst possible start for them for what's on the line. I mean, that's not good. I was predicting what you were going to say in my head. Knew it was going to be something about donuts. Was expecting a bit of, <laughs> I was expecting something like the stats coming in thick and fast. And we're seeing donuts across the way <laughs> from the side of SKC. But that was just not good from them. And I said, I don't think we even saw a kill. And the stats back that up absolutely perfectly. Safe zone heist is what's coming up next. And we need to see something from SKC and answer back. Otherwise, Blue Label are just going to be walking away with the momentum. You know, I'll be honest, Trav, you know, spaghetti are not really my kind of deal. I mean, I'm always about the donuts, but I prefer to bite into them rather than see it occur in the BSC. SK Kalea now cannot take any chances, and I think that is a good brawler that does just that. Colette Band, Carl, and Bell on the side of SK Kalea as Shelly first pick. I didn't get to look at the bands to see whether it was even in the question. Well, this is still available here. Brock and Shelly, they were such a safe pair of hands. It really, really is for me. Eve, Bonnie, and Colette Band on the left-hand side, but without realistically much to play the uh, Cordelius into at the moment. It's a really risky stage in the draft for SK Kalea to really knuckle down with it, and we've already seen them kind of falter a bit. They're going to go for it, but for that to happen, they've got to make it land better than they were with the buzz, and it's going to have the same weakness in that respect. And if Blue Label wants to double down on it, they can really come back with a set potentially here. I mean, Cordelius is one of the strongest brawlers, and in terms of safe zone, in terms of heist, it's one of his best modes, but it's so better played into a tankier option. Gonna have Colt as well? These are high-risk stuff, and Blue Label didn't even necessarily have to bring in a tank. They can just double down on range. I mean, I don't know about that. Like, come on. I mean, rarely do we see Colt work. It just takes so much skill, and I'm not saying Hexic doesn't have the skill, but against talented players, it's so hard to hit, especially with Shelly's movement speed. You know, Brock's range is so difficult as well, and as you say, they can just take another long-range brawler, outrange Colt even more, outrange Cordelius, and then it's just going to be, I mean, it's just going to be 8-bit, but they're going to go with the roughs, and uh, I feel like it's kind of dampened their comp a little bit, but at the same time, I still kind of feel like I favor them, maybe. Yeah, for me, I think maybe B. I mean, just considering the bands that are in motion here, there's just like less in terms of the long range option. Maybe that's why SK Clarence went with the Colt and just felt like that might be something of an idea. But you no, know, I mean, since the indestructible walls have come into play, it, it, it has had a, a, a massive drop off. Let's just be honest, let's just say it how it is. I mean, it's, it's going to have some kind of value, but like you say, it's such a high skill cap for order to really bring into the equation. And again, for SK Kalea, there's an opportunity here today to knock Reconic Esports off that LC Cube spot. And I just don't know whether it's the time for these kinds of risks. Ultimately, the 8-bit is certainly my favorite brawler of the bunch. Cordelius, certainly if it has those pop-offs, but Lukitas has got to demonstrate that he's able to do that with it and just alleviate a bit of the, uh, the threat and cycle. In the meanwhile, it's just going to be a bit of that stalemate scenario as, again, Prozy and Maliodas would much prefer to land their shots and gain that first sign of utility, that first super to hand. Nico also, again, would love to hand over a supply drop to his teammates early on and have that rock pack more of a punch. If they just close that gap, on the side of Blue Label eventually and work their way forwards. I just worry with that Brock in the safe and the Shelly to zone as well. 
This could go from bad to worse, potentially here for SK Kalelis. I mean, I feel like it's all just down to the Colt. If the Colt does well, SKC do well. That's what it's going to happen in Mize. And he's got to be getting more shots on Zanika. Get a super and get him down. Because he's going to be the one that's going to be able to open up so much here. It's going to be a stalemate across both of the other lanes. I mean... Jeremy's got some clay pigeon, so if he does choose to just go for some damage, he can move forward. Yes, he's going to feed Lukitas a bit, but he will be able to get the damage. They're going to start making the move. Clay pigeon going to be popped now as well. Jeremy's still there. Super's going to be breaking through those walls. Exit getting some shots off, but Rocket Fuel gets the kill. Meliodas can be provided with a super there, and now he has to be careful because that's some valuable kit. Yeah, that damage boost is not the best place. Again, the Brock is just such a good choice for that reason, honestly. I love the drafting, I love the skill, I love that connection from Meliodas as well with the rocket fuel. And Lucidus is right out of position here, just trying to get some form of super to hand to defend against things. No sign of damage on either side at the moment, and that is definitely a saving grace for now, but the yeah, can close in a little bit more. Connection was actually pretty decent there from Mexico to Meliodas, but now the supply drop starts to come down, and this is the concern for me. This blue label buy some time and have everyone powered up. Oh, what a great clay pigeon as well from Jeremy. Now they can start to close their attention onto the safe and start to secure some damage. Yeah, no guy just left though. Lukitas is going for the jump in. Jeremy gets pulled into the Shadow Realm. Mo Mushrooms to heal up as well. Now the push is coming in from SKC. The tourist there as well. The Prozy needs to survive. He needs to keep on getting the damage. Meliodas got the power up and that's so much coming in from SKC. But now there's a time for a turnaround. Jeremy's the one defended as well. That's the perfect scenario but he can't even get the kill. Can they get it? And Rocky Rain comes in. That's a lot of damage. Brock still finds no pathway through, but Cordelia's getting the damage down the bottom. SKC get the defense and they get the win as well. Lovely stuff. It's not too little too late to rekindle things here, and that is a little bit of a sigh of relief, surely, there for SK Kalelis. Very close nonetheless, for sure. And I think if this is not kept under control, then Blue Label could falter or they could bring this back quite easily with this comp. Is these early moments of that that's really quite so key. Just not feeding anything in. It's just kind of like the nature of these comps and quite surprised though. I mean, the way that Blue Label just really valued those supply drops from the roughs. It just gave them the best possible chance and that in itself is definitely a testament to their skill, to their nature. Again, coming in as a huge underdog in this one. Didn't make the semi-finals last month. Lost to Reconic Esports this time around, knocking Reconic Esports out of the competition in those quarterfinal stages. That is in itself a huge victory, but imagine if they were able to do that and also prevent SK Glens from overtaking Reconic on the leaderboards. It would be hugely successful to be looking forward to the next year for them as it's a little bit too late for them this time around, but they are showing some great signs of promise for me. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like Blue Label might be able to take the win here if it just plays out that little bit differently. You know, it was just that last breakaway from SKC. If Blue Label a little bit, you know, they go for that offensive just the slightest bit later and not give SKC enough time for a comeback, then I think they're going to be all right. But at the same time, it is just stalemate, stalemate, stalemate so far. And Melio just got to find some entry blows. Same with Nico to be able to make the move, but it was just the sandbags that kind of opened things up in the last one. Uh, sandbags in the mid and then the push through. They want to feed much over. Ultimately, that's what the 8-bit is going to thrive. Having the damage booster, extra credits onto the safe, ready to pack a punch. And for, for Blue Label, if they can just make it come down to the wire and then just weave their way forwards and place SK Kalidus on the ropes, it's their best possible chance. So I can't really blame them for the play style at the moment. They don't want to feed anything into the core. It's just going to be sat behind that, in, that wall the entire time. Now, the utility starts to shine. The clay pigeons there from Jeremy trying to pinch their way forwards with Meliodas into the mid onto Brozy, who is realistically the best focus. There's the jump over the wall from Lukidas coming in now, trying to get something for his time, but taking down, shut down so quickly. And Brozy and Exic are so low in HP, they might go down here. Yeah, I mean, clay pigeons still in hand from Jeremy as well, and the controls in the hands of Blue Label. Super's going to come through just to break down that wall. Nico exposed, but the super comes through. Shelly's oh. as well. Clay pigeon getting so much the rocket fuel gets a <laughs> blow and now they went to the right time 15 seconds on the clock they're looking healthy they've got a shelly super in hand they've got the lead as well but here comes the turret pros he's gonna be able to tank a good amount with that and get a lot of damage following up another set of sandbags placed down there goes the supply drop and it brings him down too exit's gonna fall lakita's the only one remaining and he can't get it done that time blue label timed it right and they got the win it is the smart play you cannot take that away from Blue Label in all honesty. And it just goes to show that, you know, it might be slow, it might be steady, but it won the race for now in this set. Still one more game to go to make it two above SK Kalelis. 
a tough ask, but I mean, they are just playing very smart. So that ultimately could be the downfall of SK Kalelis here, who are that squad. They like to go in a bit overly aggressive sometimes, and now picking up the pace, actually trying to position themselves in with a better chance. They know they've got to get Prozy a bit onto the safe sooner with that damage booster and take some chances along the way if they're going to have any chance of evening out these sets. Yeah, I mean, X6 gambling there, and the gamble doesn't pay off. Lakita's coming in. Rocket Fuel to shut him down again. This time they've sprung a little bit earlier, but this time they've been punished earlier as well. Jeremy was super in hand. If through comes the Colt Super, but the but the band-aid keeps him alive. X is pretty low as well there. Does go down. The return super's available. Akita's going to get knocked back and kept away because of it. Still, a lot of time on the clock. Bit of damage here for the blue label and not much to show for their, for their efforts, SKC. Final rocket fuel there out of the Brock and... Has get, it has got a lot of value off the back of them as well because the splash is slightly more and now the cycling of Lakita's Picking up the mushrooms for health along the way, but Nico's got the sandbags as well, and that's going to be a huge deterrent of this potential. Yeah, there it goes down, and he is punished. Exit does get a connection onto the safe, brings down by 8%, but again, now Blue Label pushed forwards with the result of the spawn coming off the side of the SK, SK Kalelis. Landing shots, landing damage. Got 30% for their time. They can turn this around on the side of SK Kalelis, but they've got to start just to secure some of these kills. Getting back some area control onto the mid, and just get the hunker down better than just find themselves too often on the defense or on the respawn. Yeah, power up in the pocket of Meliodas as well, and the amount of damage that's come down. We even saw Jeremy win the battle in the Shadow Realm, but this time it's Nico who's been brought into it, and this time it's Jeremy who picks up Prozy over the right-hand side, opening up a bit of a pathway through for Meliodas. They might be able to get the trade here. Melius do, does go down, but Jeremy's going to pick up that as well. Lakita's down the bottom, trying to get make something happen. The damage gear activates on Jeremy. They just probably want to leave this Shelly at this point because they need a lot of damage to win. It's a good defense. The blue label here are holding their own. Only conceding 16% in the great smash there from Jeremy on the right hand side. Prozzi survives on, but for how much longer realistically? Goes down to Nico. And now, very 15 seconds. I just struggle to see how the damage is going to rain down here. Not the way the blue label have been, been playing so far. Able to defend things for the most part. Really nice in there is two. Prozzi, the last one left. He just cannot connect with things. Two sets up. Go blue label. And the S. The last shot's qualifying position spot. The, uh, the, the SK Clarence now is in jeopardy. They're about to get swept here, Trap. I mean, the dream is slowly drifting away. This is not good for SKC at all. But Blue Label playing it perfectly. They're just on top of everything. That time, we saw a little bit of pushback from SKC. They won the first, and then I feel like maybe they went a bit over-aggressive early on in that last one there. You know, the Colt was trying to make moves and got punished so heavily for it so early on. They had to make a play, they had to make a move, ultimately, but you just gotta make that a bit more decisive in nature, a bit more cautious in approach, and that just was not the case. They just kind of fed in and just gave Blue Label so much to work with at such an earlier stage in time, and it proved too costly for them. And now, I mean, SK Glares have got to play these drafts better. You know, Blue Label have got a brain behind this, and I, it really is showing. It just doesn't seem like, like you said earlier, the same SK Kaleida squad that we've come to know, and. They are struggling big time here. A, a great opportunity for Blue Label as well to make the grand finals. I mean, that in itself, what a huge feat looking ahead to next year. Look at the stats. 16 kills for Meliodas as well. And many a time we say how the stats don't reflect necessarily the game mode in terms of objective, but I mean, it really did there. I mean, it, it came through for Blue Label in a big way. Jeremy as well had a great round. So pretty much the same as Prozzi and Lukidas or X combined. I mean, great stuff really it is from Blue Label and considering that 88% on event.brawlstars.com felt like SK Clearless wouldn't just take this one but go all the way to win it today. I mean, just to the 12% that are looking like they could well be correct. Yeah, well, I mean, regardless of all this victory for Blue Label so far with two sets in the bag, we're actually seeing a substitution, which makes me a little bit curious. Portox is going to be coming in for Meliodas, and Melio displayed that last one very well, so we've got to hope that something uh, doesn't kind of waver and that they don't kind of start taking set losses now, because when you're 2-0 up and you've played the first two sets with the same roster, I feel like you kind of want to finish it off with that same roster too. I do, I do feel you on that one, for sure. Paul Tox, you know, began the season out in level esports and is a very good player nonetheless, but I do feel that, that synergy that you need to have, you know, 
Let's see. Let's see how it fares. Ultimately, I feel like there is that opportunity still to make some adaptations along the way. And I mean, that displays confidence to me as well. Let's be honest. Going in to Gold on Gosh then for knockout. Fans are in. Shelly Tick. RT first pick there for SK Kalelis. Mr. P, the Eve, the Sprout, the Gene, the Tick, and the Shelly Band out here. So certainly for me in this particular region, especially Crow, this is going to be potentially a consideration here. Long range ideas, Bonnie for sure up there for me. Squeak massively so as well. Actually a bit lower in terms of the win rates on those stats for me that are a global uh, picture across the qualifying stages of the BSC overall. Ray going to come out for Blue Label. Always a good shout in Knockout, especially. Healing, though, definitely lacking on either side. They get the healing to the back of the TP for sure, but, I mean, Gene, very much banned out there. Nanny coming in for Blue Label as well, and they're just sticking to the win rate brawlers, and why not? Yeah, I was going to say, they've clearly been looking at the stream and looking at the win rates because Nanny's sitting at 80%, <laughs> which honestly surprises me. I don't feel like we see Nanny that much on uh, on Goldarm Gulch at all, really. I feel like maybe on... Uh, obviously, it's quite a long-range map down the sides, but once you start closing in on that mid, it starts to be a bit more difficult to get the value out of it. And the peeps are going to be pretty explosive, obviously, but it's down to SKC to try and, you know, pick something that's going to be able to eat them or tank them, you know, just and be, still be able to move on and fight. They're going to go with the roughs. Not bad, considering the sandbags can do just that, tank those peeps. But I still feel like they're lacking a bit of range in comparison to the to, to the blue label side. Obviously, RT's bringing it in, but if you know they're bringing in Nanny, you might want something else. Yeah, I still feel Bonnie, but it's not a really high pick brawl in this region. Rom available as well for throwing capabilities as Sprout and Tick both out of the equation. Here's probably the best one next in line. Daryl gonna come in. I don't mind it, but I think Cordelis is still available here, and that could be the thought process here for Blue Label. Now that they can see the big picture, it does open things up to a potential hard counter, and that is a concern. Down in the later stages, very dangerous, no doubt about it. They've got to shut that idea down with something strong, something hard. Spike in this region as well, very safe for that reason. Probably their kind of preferred tank counters. It's not my go-to in this circumstance, but as Daryl is showing his face, it might be what they opt towards here, but nonetheless, it is a threat. It has to be taken care of, and the Cordelius has got to be the way. Fang is not what I was expecting, honestly. I mean, it can stun. Sure, it can absolutely pop off in those moments. Definitely. I just don't know if that's the pick for me. I mean, it's got to be a Cordelius, right? Like I've said, I said yeah. in the previous game, like I feel like this region underestimates Cordelius so much. Any other region, you're seeing it coming instantly there. The Daryl will get stopped mid-roll if you use your super when it's coming towards you. And Fang, it hasn't got the DPS to bring down RT or 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 Daryl. You know, RT drop the legs, tank it with the with with the legs, get the kills. Daryl, too much HP. Ruffs, I mean, yes, it can deal with that, but Cordelius is surely the answer. It just feels like they play it in all the wrong maps and all the wrong places and don't get many results with it. And then in the best places for it under the circumstances that present themselves, it, it's just kind of ignored. I mean, we saw yesterday in the EMEA region just how suppressive it was against Reply Totem. Uh, admittedly, that was in you know, Heist, which is called this is best mode against the Daryl, but it's still going to deflate so much of this pressure. Build promotion as well for Throzy, then just bring up a HP over time. And that is going to have to encourage them an aggressive response to Blue Label because the longer they leave things to best to sit, this is going to provide more options for SK Clays, more survivability, and that always goes such a long, long way here. And I just don't know whether things to pick. I'm, I'm all open for Portox to really pop off with it. Uh, there's nothing fine to see, let's be honest. But I just feel like now SK Clays have got a great opportunity to start to claw this one back. Yeah, I mean, Luke Eats and Exic are looking pretty meaty down the side here. 9,000 HP, I think Luke Eats is up to now. 9,500 at that, and Exic over 7k as well. Not looking good. Walking King going to be missed once more, and with this closing down, I don't see how they can burn so much damage through. Jeremy's so low as well. Portox's going to go in there, and Lucas just didn't get the best of rolls, but still, I don't think it's going to matter. Down goes two, down go three, and SKC have been given a lifeline that they've dreamt of here. We've seen some inconsistencies so far today with SK Kalelis, and for that same reason, I am a bit concerned. The connection is strong on the peep, and the fan goes in, instantly taken down, but Exit low, prosy low, and these shots just are not landing there on the side of Blue Label, giving them a much greater opportunity now, just claiming back a game because the healing is there. 
But Exit now is in leg four, and that's not necessarily great at all. The body blocks are going to have to be on point here. Great. Oh, they, they've left it so open. You can't do that. That was the best chance. The Nanny, though, will pack the punch. Gray certainly was just tickling things, but now a two versus two is a much greater opportunity here for Blue Label to turn things around. Yeah, well, Nico has the super as well. Doesn't surely want to use peep at the start of the next round, but power up 9,500 HP Dowel. I'd be scared of that if I was on the side of Blue Label, regardless of making it a 2v2 and having an extra super in hand. So Prozy looking to try and work for his now, looking for the pinch. It's that it's Prozy they want to get down first because we're seeing almost a 10k HP Dowel. It's going to be hard to melt through. But, oh, he's messed up his roll. The TP goes in and it doesn't even matter though. Even if he rolls into no man's land, he still makes it work. And I mean, the power up, the the, you know, the field promotion, it's just such a good combination. And SKC have been gifted this here. A lifeline. Absolutely so. But for SK Kalendis, they cannot take their finger off go. They've got to keep up the pressure. Again, back that confidence. Again, they are two sets down. One game away from being against a match point and their LCQ dream goes out the window here. Great walking Kane. Follow up is almost good onto Exit, but not quite enough. And this is a much better showing, a much better start for Blue Label, but SK Clans will look to try to slow things down a bit or try to respond with aggression here as they're doing so on the Paul Talks. Keeping again that field promotion coming in over time is better odds for them. Jeremy's got the uh, Paul Talks to hand now as well. Can TP in potentially here, but he's going to need the, hand, the helping hand there of Paul Talks. He's still behind in terms of gaining that utility. He needs that super. I mean, they need to go quick here. Uh, what just happened? Did he just walk in Kane and TP away so it came even further? That looked like a gene pull to me. They're low though, and they're getting the word done. Nico's got this return to sender here, and they think they might just go into the gas. Maybe they're just going to try and play for this one, but the roll forward from the Kitas, he's feeling confident. It might actually work. He's getting the damage through, but surely Nico can just heal up here. He's even going to use that TP, which doesn't have the heal through, I don't think either, but they're still in a great spot. Yeah, Nico will potentially use Peep here if he needs to get that knock back onto Lakidas, but it's a two versus one either way. Not the easiest of scenarios for Lakidas. He rolls in, TP away, but Nico straight into the gas. Jeremy picks up the scraps. Just the nick of time, and the round goes the way of Blue Label. Well, that's looking a little bit better now for Blue Label. Started something special. Peep goes in, hits two, and brings them so low. But obviously, he's not there to be able to contest it and get the damage. Jeremy is, though, and he's looking to try and pack a bit of a punch in. Exic, with the power up, is going to be packing a punch now. It's, the damage from range is definitely a possibility for him, but I feel like Blue Label need to attack early on if they want to win. Yeah, time will tell whether that utility that was fed over. It may have been better for SK Kalis just to go into the gas, like you say, but they chose to go on the aggressive. It has given some advantage over to Blue Label somewhat here. Portok's still behind, though. Keep coming in. Could be rolled potentially here by Likidas, and it is, and it goes in. Overshot, though, into the, into the river, river there. Oh, the takedowns are strong, but there's two versus two now. A chance, a glimmer here for SK Kalis to bring things around, but... It's going to be a tough matchup for sure. Can they do it? Can they even up the rounds? Or if they don't, they are up against the match point here. Yeah, I mean, this one's looking a lot better for Blue Label. No return to senders, though, so they're going to be walking through a lot of damage. Jeremy's going to go down. The power-ups provided from self now. Exic and Prozy have got it. He's going to accept this one, and that's a tough one to accept because I felt like they did have a good foot in that until Jeremy went down. But SKC now one round off even in, well, not even in getting the set, should I say. And Blue Label just one away from a match point. Keep coming in, but again, if it connects, it's one thing, but there's no follow-up, and that's the problem. Probably will be able to heal up now, but nonetheless, it will have definitely gone a long way for Nico to get towards the next peep, and that could be much more advantageous. Trying to connect these shots again, Paul talks in this fang. And we saw a little bit of a moment, but it's not really proven to be much more than just that. It's Jeremy now is at the top spot. The gadget pop for Exit surely, but he's got none available, so he'll be able to survive on and heal up, and that is definitely a, a huge relief to Blue Label. But just surviving on here. If SK Kalis can just get this round, they'll be able to just alleviate so much at going against them and just be able to try to buy some valuable time in this series. But remember, can just reset things as well with this one singular round. And Paul Talks now has super, but they need Jeremy. They need the peep as well and really bring this whole comp into motion. Yeah, well, this fan can do a lot of damage if they're piled together, but. And power ups being provided to Luke Eaters. They need to keep him low. They need to keep Prozy low as well. There goes the tip. There goes the lunge from Portox. He finds so much, but Luke just goes in. Follow up once more, and Blue Label take the game. And they are now on match point. What a position for them to be in. Hey!
I mean, if the fine makes moments like that count exactly when they have to, I'm all for it. <laughs> Until that moment, I was on the sidelines a little bit. But that is how you pop off with the fang. Great stuff, honestly, from Portox there. But SK Clans, I still feel, have got the comp. Do they have the confidence to pull it off? That is the question now, as the pressure's so mounting against their opportunity. Again, they can take an LCQ spot here today. They can knock Raconic Esports, who did not qualify to the semi-final stages, off of that position. And they're just starting to fumble it in a huge way. They will look back upon this and just be so disappointed. But it's not over yet. Miss Walking Kane there as well. And a supply drop handed over for then the RT. Another one's going to break things open massively so, and that leaves less of a place to hide. Yeah, that's great for the nanny here. Should be able to scour these, this grass quite well now. And obviously, exit with this power up is going to be very dangerous, especially with the field promotion to go along with it. Lukitas over 9k now. And now the shots just need to keep on falling. They need to keep on peppering them down, keeping them low, especially Frozy. There's the walking cane, and what an entry for Blue Label. Lukitas goes in again, and the peep will be able to defend things. Lukitas survives, but for how much longer, realistically, there? Not long enough. The round goes away, a blue label one round away from doing the unthinkable. Never made a grand final, but today could be that day. Miss K. Clarence do not pull up their socks, and they could be waving goodbye to the LCQ dream if this continues. I mean, look how pinned back they are as well. Nanny Head was available, I believe. So if they're this clustered up, it might be a good idea to use it. And it comes. Will it make its way through? It hits a wall there, I believe. Or was it a sandbag? I think he placed down and it just went the other side of the wall. Jeremy just trying to find some shots. But look how pinned back they are. The wall's available over. Who's he going to go into? There's two of them there. They're pinned so heavily. Oh, he's available too. Where can they go? This is not where they want to be. No, that's all where they need to be. And the longer they are there, the gas will start to close. Price has got a heal as well. They just got to separate, just get out of there and just start to move around the circumstance. And they are doing just that now. Just the nick of time, honestly, but they're not out of the woods far from it. Peep to hand, Jeremy as well with the TP and Portox. There's so many supers on the side of Blue Label, and that's got to be a scary prospect for SK Kalinas, who are fumbling this big time. Yeah, I mean, the gas starting to come in now, but the roll's there. The supers are all there for though. And now if the peep can just knock back Daryl when it comes in, he might be able to make it. He has a lot of damage, but the, the stun misses. The roundhouse king doesn't work. Exit going to be able to drop his legs and get the damage through. Not able to get any charge towards another super, though, but Jeremy has his. Just not a lot of the rest to go along with it for Blue Label. One round for SK Kalis to hold on. One round for the grand finals here for Blue Label. It's all to play for. LCQ on the line for SK Kalis. If they lose this round, they will not have the chance to contest it and it will go the way of Raconic Esports. Good connection so far now from Nico. And again, we've seen how just instrumental that peep has been in this set. Paul talks as well as he had that shining moment. Will he have another one now as the peep comes in? There's no sandbags for Prozzi. It's going to have to be tanked directly by Lukidas. And that is definitely a concerning factor. Phil Promotion still going to lend a helping hand here, but they've got to go on the aggressive now. They want to survive. Yeah, the return send was pop and not getting anything from it. Exic is down here. Don't want to feed Portox. In comes the peep now. Roll should be going past it, but it actually misses. Landstrel on Portox. The, 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 the roundhouse kick there. The super connects from the peep, though, but Jeremy's too low. They surely can't contest this. The roll towards Nico. The TP in, but he's not going to be able to get anything done. He's just going to eat the damage. And SKC stay alive. Oh, my word. That was stressful for me. I can't imagine what it was like. For SK Kalanis, they're on borrowed time right now, let's be honest. But well, they are starting to turn things around. But you gotta wonder, right? I mean, if they are struggling like this in the semi finals, what could be awaiting them if they are able to get this to a fifth and final set? I mean, Pimble Dream is still to come just to make things even for them. And they are looking shaky at best. They really are. But they were gifted, as you rightly said, a draft. They should have done a bit better with it, let's be honest. But I, I've got to say, though, having said that, I feel like that says more about Blue Label's ability to handle the stress of the situation because they're not often in this position, let's be honest. And they are thriving. They are swimming in it right now. I mean, to be honest, like, if SKC have a draft like that and only just win, 
If Blue Label get one of the next two drafts right, I feel like they might still be able to take it. They're looking very good. They're playing yeah. well. I mean, SKC did play that one well as well. They knew when to go. They picked the right moments, got that field promotion, got the power-ups. They just played it right. But the draft was definitely on their side. 4-4-2 for the side of Blue Label. SKC got the kills of 5, 9, and 6. So a lot more on their side, but a lot less damage too. I mean, the stats there just display to me the passive approach that we saw from SK Kledis and the aggressive response from Blue Label, and that's the problem. Blue Label are just showing and exuding confidence, whereas on the side of SK Kledis, they're just kind of like, you know, just taking cover and just like hoping that the threat is going to go away, and it's not. We are hearing as well that Meliodas is coming back in for Portox on the side there of Blue Label, so a bit of a substitution, and things were, in fairness, looking a little bit better before previously in that two set advantage that Blue Label were able to establish so quickly so early on here. They could go back to their winning ways. Good round for Lakita, that's no doubt about it. But for SK Kalelis, I mean, they've got to start to turn things around in a big way. Yeah, I mean, they really do need to turn things around. LCQ's on the line for them. And as you can see here, a little bit of a re reminder for everybody watching. SKC need to win the grand finals to be able to qualify to the LCQ and overtake Reconic Esports. And it's only going to be by a few points of that as well. Reconic got knocked out in those quarterfinals by the team that SKC are faced up against now of Blue Label. Blue Label looking to try and take out two in a row, SKC and Reconic. But Reconic going to be cheering on the team that beat them in the previous round. So much at stake, really, and for Blue Label. What an opportunity, you know, to really cause a problem. I mean, Reconic, if this continues on and Blue Label do the unthinkable, will be those that do go to LCQ. And that was the team that Blue Label beat in the quarterfinal stages as well. It took the loss to them last month, but this time around got the win. And that's why they're watching from the sidelines. Pinball Dreams up next for Brawl Ball. And this is where things could get nasty. Let's be honest, SK Kledis have got to go more than the aggressive and more competently so because they've not been able to do so far. Bands are in Shelly, Cordelius and Nita for Blue Label, for SK Kledis, the Primo, the Macy as well as the Ash. Strong bands all round and this, again, caters a lot to tanks so I'm glad to see a lot of them out of the mix, but Sam's still available if they want to go down that path. Yeah, I mean, good bands from Blue Label, at least in my eyes. SKC do not want to see the aggression at all. And they're kind of doubling even further down on that, or should I say, like quadrupling down along with their bands to go with the crow, slowing things. Tara going to be the answer, though, and I like that. Obviously, with the support from beyond coming in, you can tank quite a lot of crow shots. And the pull can be pretty devastating as well. Bonnie going to be slotting through this mid. Very good mid on a map like this, you know, because you, you can play down the mid, and then you can just jump on the lanes when your teammates need some help once you got that super. Let's kick on this now. Got to add some DPS and start to have an aggressive response to this. Stu, Spike as well. Again, such a prevalent brawler in this meta, in this specific region. Time and time again, this is that safe pair of hands. And there could be a show of tanks on the side of Blue Label. They've got to have a response for that. We go with heals. Not the worst of ideas, but is it the best map for Poco? I don't know whether I'm too convinced on that. Blue Label by far, I've got the better draft shaping up for me. Pro, again, like that is one of the top picks always for this side of things, but I just don't know whether it's going to be enough for SK Kaleidas, especially with the assassination attempts on the Bonnie and the Tara. A lot of pushback potential here. The Squeak is available here. It's one of my favorite brawlers to have on this particular map. So much shutdown potential onto the mid. They haven't really got any range. They are going to go with the Sam. But again, then they're out of draft position to do so. I mean, this could just have a heavy retaliation for Blue Label. I kind of feel like SKC with this draft are just asking to be double pulled, you know? Like, I feel like that's just one of those yeah. things where Poco and Sam, they should be staying together. And if Tara's in a position to catch you off guard with that double pull, then it's a good spot. Surge coming in next from Blue Label. Another tank counter jump on top of them. Get your stacks, get leveled up. And it's good for overtime as well if it goes for that far. I mean, Blue Label, having played the way that they are playing with the draft they have, it's tough to see how they don't finish this off here. I mean, the Sam Poco can be really tough to deal with. They've only realistically got the wall break on the side of the Tara of Blue Label, so those walls are going to be maintained for the most part. That might be something that SK Clears can actually work with here. I mean, the slow on the Crow going to be massively influential as well, and just keeping things at bay, keeping things under control, keeping the ball away from their goal. And again, the knockback on that gadget on the Sam side could save potential goal scoring opportunity. Let's see. SK Kaleidas now. 
back on the ropes, but going in more aggressively. And that's better. Exit clears to the right hand side. Able to heal now. Melia just low as well. He'll go down. That is three. A team wipe there for SK Glens. And that is the way you open things when you're behind. I mean, this is the start that SKC desired. Don't get that support from beyond. Surely going to be able to tank a couple of crow shots at the same time. See a bit of a lane swap. Exit wants the tower instead of the surge. Level two's been acquired, but the heals are still there. And the super is there as well. That was his third gadget, though. A little bit difficult, but level two is used. And has got this jump as well. Tara needs a super to get them out of this spot. And I don't think he's going to be too far off, but the Screech and Solo's there. Prozy goes forward. Pass Khan making its way underneath. He grabs the ball. Might be able to defend this well. Needs to get Lakutis, but can't. Exit's low, but it's not going to be enough. The damage cannot be there from Nico. And SKC getting closer and closer to this reverse sweep. I mean... We talk about you know, having that confidence, having that ability to turn things around under pressure and momentum, most importantly, and that is exactly what SKC were lacking. They've now added to the pot and what better time for it. It could deflate this on a side of blue label, but important heels off the bat from Likides, but still, despite that, an opportunity. Manus goes down instantly though. Prozy can heal, but the shades will come in, cleared up by Exic. And that's a pretty decent response from SK Kalea. Just keeping up with the pressurized circumstances. A good response. I mean, Jeremy needs his pull, but there's just no angles for it. Another rotation coming through as we see Nico level 2 has the speed in hands now. He needs that range and he wants to reach the crow without getting hit himself. Connects one, but not really following up with much else. Pull now available from Jeremy. He should be able to get Sam, but at the same time, doesn't want to risk it. Gets the pull away from the super and still manages to grab it and get the Poco heals. There's a cycle as well. Need to bring him down without using it and then move forward. But it's just not enough. Has to use it. Get them out of that spot. And I mean, you can't complain him for a Nico level three as well now. And Blue Label should start making a stand. They have to show something here. We haven't really seen them have many opportunities, if any, realistically in this set on goal. And... Now it's time to change that. And let's KC. We've got to demonstrate that they are able to defend the aggression. Melio just looking for super. Don't want to be far away from it either. Mika could just sort of pass the ball there. That was not the play. I think just trying to super onto it, but just overshot it. And as quickly as that, things are pushed a bit more to the side. But with that takedown there onto Exic, things opening up more so. And the ball back under control from Blue Label. Another chance, another opportunity here. But they don't get too cautious here. Pros could make a run for things if he's not too careful. Exit though, just going to keep things moving on the right-hand side, push his way forwards here as he should, and now Lakitas has got the heel to hand, they can go on the aggressive more, but yeah, exactly that, given a gift, as it were, Exit trying to, try, trying to come in the right-hand side here, can't really find it, and it's going to be a defense there for Blue Label. Yeah, level 4 surge now as well, I'm sure they might want to just wait this out for overtime, no gadgets from Lakitas, Exit, uh, Sam, which can be quite difficult in overtime, funnily enough. Prozzi doesn't have the slow either, that's the thing, he has the shield, so in overtime it's difficult as well. Lakitas. Now just trying to make a move, but Nico with level 4 exit is going to have to rotate back to the left-hand side. And they're just playing it out for this overtime, just don't want to be overwhelmed in the last 15 seconds. Well, Jeremy's got pull and that is completely wasted. Terrible, uh, 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 abysmal opportunity there. And they're just not going to be able to defend this now. Surely with the aggression coming in, Prozzi gets the jump and gets the takedown. It's just straight on his own and he's just used to it, so he knows he hasn't got one. And it's quickly as that. SK Kalelis bring things back to level, Peggy. We're going all the way and we wouldn't want to have it any other way. SK Kalelis now have got a real chance of turning things around the reverse sweep dream trap being kept alive. I mean, Blue Label have got nobody to blame but themselves. At that point, that Terrible. was... That, that Tara Super cannot be wasted. You need it to kill the, the Sam and get him out of the way because overtime situation, they have so much power in their hands. Level 4 Surge, Tara Super just going into it would have made it a 3v2 into overtime. Bonnie on top of that with a jump as well. And that's a situation that you cannot lose no matter how hard you try. But that one Tara pull being missed just screwed it all up. It's not often that I'm uh, stumbling my words, but that was the moment that I just... I was a bit speechless, to be honest. I mean, it was such a close proximity as well. It's, it's not something you can really ever afford to miss. And maybe some nerves, the first sign of them starting to show a little bit here for Blue Label. That was a very, very convincing set. And that's, the, that's the, my issue with SK Kalelis. They're sometimes hot. They came in so stone cold today, and not in a good way. I mean, they were just very, very, very slow to the mark. But now everyone is doing their bit. You can see there, all sides, four takedowns. 
been pretty balanced, though, to be fair, on the side of Blue Label. Much more DPS, but again, SK Cleanse were just seizing the opportunities better. Found themselves at that side of the map a lot more often. And now we go to the fifth and final set. Blue Label might be choking this trap. Falls across the board. I mean, you can't complain about that, really, in comparison to the Blue Label kills. We just needed to see a bit more in the late game from Blue Label. Their momentum has fully dissipated now, and even subbing Meliodas back in did not work for them. We'll see if they're able to make another swap or if they kind of stay with what they want now. And that is a bit of a difficult one, I will say. It's uh, definitely not the spot that they wanted to be in. They wanted a quick 3-0, but a couple of good FKC drafts have swayed it back in their favor. Can Blue Label finish what they started or are they crumbling before our eyes going into our last map and mode in this matchup? Hot Zone and Shooting Beetles. A very unforgiving map, no doubt about it. If you lose control, you've got to have a response to be able to retake it back and not always an easy thing. That is why this draft is so essential to get right in all honesty. You've got to kind of ban out the Cordelius and the Shelly here as a must thing to have Squeak as well. Very much up there here for me. Crow definitely going to be banned out here for this specific region as well. Mr. P, Jesse and Barley on the side of Blue Label. Crow, Cordelius and Shelly for SK Kaleidos. I certainly prefer the bands on the side of SK Kaleidos, but they have that first pick on the side the blue label so it makes a lot of sense and they've left squeak open they had to leave one open that is the best starting hand the blue label can hope to have well we'll see who is going to come out on top of this one whether skc's dreams of an lcq will stay alive or if blue label will cut them short squeak going to be the first pick obviously of blue label sticky residue great for all three of the choke points throughout this map you need to help lane you can help lane if you want to play your own you can play your own we'll see what skc do choose to go into that it's definitely a difficult broad to play into they're going to go with the bonnie bit of range bit of aggression you can't really complain I'm glad they went with Bonnie because it's it's an underrated brawler that for, for, for any other re region, this region don't tend to pick it, is my point. And you kind of have to on this particular map. It's just, it's going to have a bit of a slow and sluggish start, but nonetheless, you can really have those pop off moments to prevent you coming in off the spawn. Poco, the survivor ability for SKC, but Pam is available as a response here for Blue Label. And I firmly suggest that they highly consider it. Stu as well, left open here. It's going to be not necessarily the best thing going into so many heals, but nonetheless, can dance around things pretty nicely and you know i think they've got to have heels as a response here it just simply is the way to go let's see what they go for but sk Kaleidos have got a very good starting hand here they really do loop potentially here as well to shut down the zone and go a long long way and yeah that is the, that is the best thing the blue label can do right now in my opinion i was gonna say go for a cheeky Lou, you know i think it'd be pretty solid cheeky Lou. cheeky Lou. <laughs> Bonnie and Poco, obviously, you know, they're, they're not the fastest of brawls. And if they get caught up in that little ice rink, then it's going to be a bit difficult. But they're going to choose to go for the RT, which I'm a little bit unusual. I'm a little bit confused about. Like, I do like the pick, but I think they'd be better here. Obviously, if you can drop the legs behind one of those walls, when you get position, it's going to be pretty good. Has the range, has the gadget to finish people off as well. We'll see if it's enough to take down the heels of Poco. SKC back for their last pick now as well. And will they go for a bit of a tank and try and run it down? They're going to be cautious. They've got to be very, very cautious here because this final pick has got so much on the line for this squad. One mistake here, and they will not see LCQ as Stu. And again, I don't know about it now. Not looking into the Pam. And, and the Squeak is going to have a much better range matched up. RT, I don't know whether that is the play. Speed Zone for sure going to lend a helping hand, no doubt about it. But, I mean, look, whoever's playing that Stu is going to have to play out of their minds. Dance around things. It can absolutely work. You know, you just make yourself a really tough target if you just keep landing the shots, landing the dashes with pinpoint precision. But it's going to be tough to realistically land some of these takedowns. And that's where the body is going to have to come in. The hills to keep everyone in the mix. You know, the HP and the survivability, I feel like, despite the Poco, could be on the side of Blue Label here. I mean, who are you siding with, Trap? I think maybe Blue Label, if they can just shut off these entryways through, but I like that gadget from Lakitas instantly. Not going to keep X kill alive, but I like the thought process of it. Super comes in, Froze is the only one remaining now, and Pam should be able to defeat that one. Slow! It's been so long! 
my word. It's, I mean, that squeak. I mean, just look how just dominant it is. It's shutting down everything in that mid. And there's no way that SKC can get out of this. They've got to go on the aggressive somehow, but that's the best they can do. Just get one and then try and bring everyone forwards. The Kiddus has got to get super. At the moment, Blue Label are doing a good job preventing him from doing so. And that is the key to things for SK Kaleidos' well-being. It's just tied up now, but I'm with you. I love to see that slow on the side of the squeak. I think it's so viable in certain maps and modes and just dropped off the face of the earth as chain reaction comes in. But as quickly as that, retaken by Blue Label and they are back in control. I just love it. I just love the slow and he's got another one in hands as well. Residue's there too, but jumps available. Obviously the mobility of X is going to be pretty good as well, but he gets hit hard by that shot. Now Super comes in, not going to make any connections this time. Pros is going to go into the jump and get eradicated so fast. Down goes one turret and up comes another the problem. It's going to be so tough to take care of that healing station and once it's gone it will be long for me. It's just another and he does going back on the defensive as he rightly should in the position that they are in. They have got the lead and a bit there of a cancellation from Likidas there. The protective tunes there just taking away the slow but kind of realistically you need to see that a bit sooner as well and it's just looking like Blue Label are in the driving seat big time here. SKC don't really have much of a response, much utility behind these aggressive motions. And they just end up in the same old story with everyone going down. And Blue Label are in such a great spot. Match point surely coming in here, unless something disastrous happens in the final percentage. I mean, I just, I just can't. There's 2% left and it's done. Blue Label moving on to match point. SKC need two in a row to keep their dream of LC you alive but blue label just look like they aren't being stopped it was a tough position in the draft for skc they went with the crow ban and the shiny ban and the cordelius could maybe looking back at things have left maybe the crow open and just kind of get that squeak out of the way because with the indestructible walls on this map it's just so strong now looking is showing the protective tunes needs to kind of use it yeah come straight through support your team and just get this early sign of control it's worth burning through that utility as quickly as you have to in the early outsets because that is what makes you able to hold the high ground it's literally what it's for you need to get it used Make sure you use it good. Panto is going to come down. He's just staying firm in the mid now, but the dashes from X keep coming a bit too much from Eliotis. Castillo is going to be quite nice as well. Another protective shoes too, but Prozy slow down. Takedown should be there too. Lakita's low, dead. And now it's just X alive. But they have got 40%. But at the moment, with blue label, they're going to be able to heal up, out heal this damage coming in from the Stu Burn. And the positioning is on lock. SK Kalenas could well be waving away their chances of an LCQ spot and it will go the way of Reconic Esports if they lose this set and match. At the moment, it just seems like Blue Label have got the response for everything that is being thrown at them and with so much to hand. It's they're just unshakable from this zone. They claw things back to 50% now. Only 10% in it. Lukita's going in there. There's reaching so much disconnected to Nico there. Survives on, just able to shoot things around here as Prozy takes the mid roll. And SK Glitz are putting up a fight, but they've got to just eradicate things. Get that healing station down immediately. And as soon as that happens, Nico's back into the mix. Prozy now top brawl low. Poco's going to get shot as well. Can't stay next to him. Believe the gadget came in there too to keep him low. Lukita needs a heal and he needs it now. Gets it, stays alive, but he is low once more. Exit there too. Another Pam Turret to the established high. Looking to slow down. Shots coming through as well. He falls. Prozy survives, but it's 5% down, and they're going to be taking the lead. All level now, but no time for SK Galenis to get this response in. They've got to get a team wipe. There's nothing less that they can achieve. Now they've got to go in and just go for it. They are doing just that 3% remaining. Man, the last one there. 1%. It's on 1%, and that might just be one big push in though will be we have to see it. Oh my word! SK Kalanus are able to survive! No words for what I've just seen. LCQ is still on the table for them. They need to win this game. What a comeback. 99% takedowns. Pam almost had it. The healing station could not keep her alive long enough. And SKC keep their dream alive once more. Speed zone placed at the back. And this is the decider. All or nothing now. That might just be a bit of a boost, but with that swift takedown of Prozy, not the greatest of starts, considering the way that that ended. That turnaround was monumental for SK Kaleas, but they can't falter now. They can't drop this gift they've been given. Coming in now, it's full control here for Blue Label, and SK Kaleas struggling to get out of this one. Prozy is in a world of hurt on that right-hand side. 
able to heal now, but if Nico wants to choose to apply his time to it, be back with Queen for the Gan. Great job there from Prozy. That is exactly what they need now, and a chance to claim back this deficit. Yeah, Germany's going to get a few shots off now as well. Yeah. Meliona's pinching in, Exit. Gonna get shots through, damage goes in, he gets taken down over aggression right there, and none of that super hits. Prozy, the only one surviving, has his jump once more. Can't find Meliodas, so he goes for Nico and he gets taken down anyway. Still a 10% lead. SKC need to recollect. They need to play this a little bit slower and not come one by one, because they're gonna need a big play to win this now. Aggressive killing station, Prozy can't find the angle on it either, and may have been better served to save that super now, because Blue Label are approaching 80%, and that is very much dangerous, and potentially unable to defend against it. Closing things out now, and SK can get a bit of a firmer grasp on things into the mid. Melio, this is so tanky though, X is going to struggle. Super coming in from Nico will have to slow as well, and there's one that goes down, Prozy is the next to fall, it's just Lukinas, and Blue Label are starting to really make this work now. 50% it's surely going to be over. There's no way the SK Clinics can go up against this. They are waving away their LCQ Dream. One last final dish attempt, and it is not enough. Blue Label have done the unthinkable. They have knocked down SK Clinics in the semi finals, means that SK Clinics will not be able to secure an LCQ spot. It goes the way of Reconic. What an outcome! I mean, that you, you've got a feel for SKC there, how deep they dug to be able to stay in this matchup. 2-0 down to coming back to 2-2, to bringing it back from a 99% to keep it to carry on to go to that double match point and then losing it like that. That is very, very rough. But Blue Label, they've earned it and they're moving to the finals. You've got to hand it to the underdogs. You know, when you look at their journey, you know, looking back to the last month where they lost in the quarterfinals to Raconic Esports, they came back this month, they got the win over them. They got their revenge and made it to the semi-finals where the SK Glenders had the opportunity ahead of them to knock Raconic off that top spot. You know, it couldn't have been more poetic. Blue Label coming out of nowhere and just showing that they've got the skills, they've got the drafts, they've got so much going for these guys. It's just a little bit too late in terms of their prospects in the big picture, but if you're looking into next year, I mean, these are guys that can realistically go a very, very long way. Great stats for them. Nico with a fantastic round, and just again, that draft was the shining star for me. Really great stuff. Pros get a very high amount of DPS, but for SK Clans, it's a really, really tough pill to swallow. They were inches away from just making it to the grand finals where they had the shot of glory and it ended prematurely. Tough stuff then for SKC. Let's find out who the MVP is and it's Meliodas. Thoroughly deserved, subbed out halfway through, came back in and helped win this game for the Blue Label guys, taking themselves to the finals to face off against one tough opponent a little bit later on. We'll find out in the next match who that will be though. Well, I mean, I am um, out of breath. I, I, my heart was racing throughout that series. It really, really was. That is one semifinals uh, down for this side of the region. Another one still to come. Make sure you go to event.brawlstars.com right now. Get your predictions all lined up for this next one. It's going to be an absolute banger. We'll be right back after a short break.
Welcome back to the Brawl Stars Championship. We're still in SA West, and what a game that was, Teddy. We've got another li a banger lined up next with Shield Gang versus Datos FA. But what do you make of that last one? I, I still can't believe it, man. First, I, I thought that they were about to get swept, you know? That SK Kalelas were going to get robbed from LCQ with a 3-0 scoreline. But then suddenly, they come back, one set, two sets, they even managed to get to match point by defeating them while their opponents were at 99% and still turned that one around. And then the final game, just not quite meant to be. My heart is shattered in a million pieces just because of, you know, how much happened. It was just so back and forth, but Blue Label take that one home. So they're going to be in the grand finals. We're waiting or waiting to start Shield Gang versus Dados FA to see which team is going to be joining them in the Grand Finals. Yeah, I mean, with that one out of the way, Blue Label moves on. It will either be Shield Gang or Datos FA, Weepy, Brian and Todd, or Alonzo, Doritos and Loco. See who goes forward. Obviously, Datos coming in this one, quite the heavy favorite, but Weepy, Brian and Todd looking to try and shut them down. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, we have two very different sides of the story here on the side of shield gang they're definitely a team that has achieved some stuff across the year they were able to get some decent results here and there not quite enough to be competing still for lcq but with a couple of qualifications and top eight placements as well in the region they're definitely a solid team to keep an eye on and that very much could be making it to the grand finals tonight yeah, I'm not sure what's really going on on our screens at the moment, to be honest with you, but moving swiftly on, <laughs> Alonso, Doritos and Loco going to be the roster of Datos FA. We've come to know them, we've come to love them in this region. They do seem to be coming out on top a lot of the time, and I don't doubt that they might be able to do something similar yet again today. What a roster this is. They've they've won quite a few monthly finals this year uh, through several different names, Muecos, Leave No Witness, and now to Datos FA. Loco, you're disappointing us. Where are the shades, my man? Yeah, that's a very valid point. No Shades buff today, it seems like. It's carried them through the season so far. Although, let's be honest, they were betrayed a couple times as well, you know, looking uh, especially at April and July, so a more recent monthly final where they weren't quite able to make it all the way through. So maybe, you know, they, they felt betrayed by the glasses and, and they're moving away from the Shades for now. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, if you've lost a couple of times with them, why not try something a little bit different? He's going to go with the Paris hat today, and maybe that's going to be his new good luck charm for Loco to try and move forward against this one. I mean, they are quite heavily the top dogs coming into this matchup. They've made several finals throughout this year. They've won a few as well, and they've just looked pretty good going through this year. Uh, a dominating performance for the most part, and coming against relatively, you know, not relatively unknown, you know, we know of them, but relatively unknown team. They should be the heavy favorites. And actually, I take it back. 45 to 55. Not sure what the community's thinking with this one, but we're heading on to infinite doom in Bounty. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a reoccurring theme here where if you have a picture of someone as your logo, uh, people just don't like that. <laughs> it was the same with FA Mini Pick as earlier in SA East. Seems like it's going to be the same here in SA West. Regardless, Infinite Doom going to be kicking off Wizards draft. Zems is going to be the first pick here for Dados, and they decided to ban out the Gene, the Poco, and the Crow a B as a first pick here for Shield Gang, and they banned out Cordelius, Shelly, and the Crow as well. Overall, quite happy with the bans across the board. Don't mind those early picks either, although I still feel like uh, B can be a little bit scary to play on a map with this many bushes. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to have some kind of wall break along with it. And I mean, Brock's still on the table, so it might not be the worst of decisions to go for that. But you're leaving yourself pretty susceptible, obviously, with just having those single projectile brawlers to something else. They're going to be with the squeak. Sticky residue going to be revealing a few people in the bush and slowing them down along the way. Yeah, definitely like the squeak pick here. I kind of would have maybe wished to see the amber combined with the bee, just to, you know, get rid of all of those bushes and make it a little bit easier to connect those shots, have some clearer angles regardless the squeak is definitely a solid pick on this map as well that was now with two picks in a row curious to see what kind of approach they want to have paired up with that m's they will take the brock for themselves very valuable brawler on this map there's kind of those two squares of walls around the the mid area which 
you can just remove them and play that long range battle can be very beneficial for you but i'm assuming they'll be quite cautious with that as well considering they have the hams on their side which will probably prefer having some walls around to use as cover now their final pick about to be locked in wondering if oh i was about to say if they're gonna double down on, on some longer range brawlers but instead it's gonna be the max for some extra movement speed an interesting one, but definitely not unfamiliar to the region as well, as Max does seem to be a brother that has remained somewhat in the meta here in South America, whereas in other regions it's kind of fallen off. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind the Max, I think it's pretty good considering they've got the M's along with it and the B's on the other side uh, with the single projectile, you can avoid squeak quite easily as well with that Max speed. But at the same time, you know, if they do choose to break up with the Brock, they're going to be helping the B out quite a lot. Gray's going to come in as the last pick for Shield Gang. And honestly, I don't really hate it. You're going to have TP availability to go towards the M's, the Brock, the, the Max, pretty much anybody you got the availability to teleport on without really having too many repercussions either. Yeah, I definitely don't mind it either. As you said, the TPs can definitely be uh, very helpful to just assassinate someone on the enemy side or close out a kill on a low HP player. We'll have to be just a little bit cautious here and there. I think I'm thinking, especially against the Max, it can still want to wiggle through those uh, slow gray shots but regardless of that i think both comps definitely have some merit and i think it will come down to the battlefield to see how this one goes down as we'll have an early sticky residue down in the mid makes sense block off access to that blue star loco taking a little bit of damage but actually a nice shield a nice face shifter there to stay up and it's going to be a two-piece for Dados instead giving them an early five-star lead as they pick up the blue one as well. Mm, kind of what we expected in this overall matchup, but not this convincing early on. Five to zero with a minute 30 still on the clock. Complete control in the hands of Datos at the moment. And, you know, with these brawlers, I don't think they've got that much break potential unless we see like a TP from Brian or something like that. Weak falls low. Gonna see that walking cane missed again, so no more break coming out of that rattled hive coming through, but shouldn't really be making any connections throughout this mid. Lonzo has super, if they overextend, he'll be there to punish them and kind of uses it very preemptively there. That's a bit premature and not really going to find any connections with it. Loco kind of playing with his life there, needs to be careful for the connection. He runs straight back into it as well. Wow, not quite what that is we're hoping for there and it's only a two-star differential now. Still in favor of Dados, but Shield Gang slowly closing up. Yeah, I mean... Pretty much Doritos is going to be the one they want. The one that will flip the tides with just one kill. That residue on the left-hand side, definitely not the best for Alonso here. But Todd is quite low, still has this big shot still in hand. And, and with the dash, he can go through it. It does come towards him. Speed available now as well, but holding on to that. Only 20 seconds left and Brian's going to go down. He's going to fall. Super available from Doritos now and still. He will be the difference maker if he gets killed, but not anymore as Alonso gets one as well. Nicely done by Dados, but it's not over just yet. TP from Brian is not really going to be paying off as he goes down. Kill from Alonso as well, and pretty comfortable game here to open things up in favor of Dados FA. Well, I mean, good start there for Datos. You can't really complain about that at all. Control throughout the entire match with really no repercussions at all. They just stayed in the grass, got the shots off, got the kills. And if they get another comparable start, I'm sure it'll be more of the same. But we'll see if Shield Gang can make a bit of a break into that mid early on, get into the grass and start making more of an impact. Tom. Tagged up early on, but beautiful kill there. From him was a gadget. Doritos is going to go down as well. And a very different approach here. I was going to say a four-star lead for Shield Gang this time around. But Blue Star is going to be picked up by Dados. And actually, they do still manage to find a kill on Loka that was going just a little bit overly aggressive there. I'm saying a little bit. It was going, being very overly aggressive. Giving away a couple stars. And Shield Gang now is a two-star early lead. Yeah, I mean, Loco was definitely feeling himself a little bit too much, but Super comes in now. Should be able to get that kill on Weepy and retreat nicely as well. Todd falls as well. Great stuff now from Datos. After dropping down a couple of stars early on, they show the power once more and get the kills. Race stars in their favor now. As Loco does manage to escape that slow. Brian with a TP, but not one he will survive. No kills from it either. A nice pickup from Doritos onto Taunt, and suddenly it's 14 stars now to 
to Dados, doubling the star count of Shield Gang. Slow zero is available for Dries as well. Can quite easily catch Weepy in this, but just trying to bait him out, keep him there, and might be able to finish this game before the time hits zero. Dries is going to go down shortly to that shot, though, but actually gets a heal off in time, I believe. There, TP comes in from Brian. He's not going to be doing anything with that. Super available for one zone. Four stars will close it out. One more kill, and the timer won't matter. We might even get there as Brian is going very aggressive, and Loco shots him down. A quick set here to open things up from Dados. Beautifully done, quick and smooth. A nice way to take some momentum early on into the series. And I mean, it's something that happens quite often when you have the upper hand in the first place when it comes to this matchup. Getting those sort of brutal opening sets is going to be very hard for Shield Gang to recover from. Yeah, and I mean, especially I think Shield Gang know that the underdogs coming into this one, right? I don't think they're walking into this one feeling confident as it is. So being defeated that heavily in the first set, as you say, it's going to put them on a bit of a downer. Momentum's going to be all in the hands of Datos FA, uh, and it's just going to be a difficult game for Shield Gang to persevere through. Uh, obviously, going forwards as well, it's going to be increasingly difficult if they carry on this domination and the heads are just going to fall further and further down. But so far, it's been Datos FA, and that was one of the most convincing sets we've seen all day long. Definitely so, a brutal one as well. And in the BFT, it's not every day that we see bounty games and with the star count above 20 rather than the countdown going to zero. And it was a, a very strong performance overall on their end. Just four kills on the side of Shield Gang. That's less than Alonso or Loco alone. Dorito is going to be leading in kills, but DPS wise, it's Alonso and Loco that just had a little bit more impact on that front. Yeah, I mean, it's just not good for Shield Gang there. Only four kills in total. And I feel like that's due to a lot of Locos over aggression, I feel, at certain times. Definitely went down feeling a bit too confident at certain points in that game and provided Shield Gang with a few kills that if he was being a bit smarter or a little less overconfident, probably wouldn't have provided them with. But at the end of the day, they managed to bring in the win anyway. And it was a convincing one at that, finishing that first, that will finish the second game off without even the countdown hitting zero. It definitely... Yeah, it gives a bit of a good omen for Datos FA moving forwards into these uh, into these future sets because, you know, they, they just looked so good coming in. They've been making it forwards to the finals all year long, and I kind of expect them to do it again. We'll see if they're able to move 2-0 up or if it'll be 1-1 after Ring of Fire on Hot Zone. Well, with the way the series started, everything is showing that it's going to be more likely a 2-0 here, but nevertheless... There is always some hope left and a new start, a fresh start here for Shield Gang to try to turn things around a little bit before things get too spicy. Draft quickly kicking in here as Ruffs is going to be our first pick here for Dados. They banned out Grey Poco, Mr. P, Shield Gang taking out Shelly Cordelius and also the Poco. I know we have two picks in a row for Shield Gang to try to both counter that roughs and also prepare themselves for the rest of the draft. Well, I like the roughs as the first pick. Datos going in with that, but I feel like maybe there would have been a few better options, especially with you know a couple of mirror bands here along the way as well, especially with the Poco. Um, I mean, Shelly Cordelia is definitely getting the majority of stuff out of the way, but I think Squeak would have been my ideal first pick for Datos, but it's Shield Gang who do manage to get that one, and that's a lot of zoning ability available right there. Yeah, also zoning ability that is going to be good against those sandbags from the roughs. So directly kind of countering that first pick. So I'm definitely with you. I, I, I would have preferred to see that as well. But let's see what they combine it with. So they could still want to prepare the sims themselves to have some tank awareness. Tara is going to offer that for sure with those pulls. Good bit of damage as well. And great capability of scouting the bushes, especially if you go for some flanks. Definitely an approach I don't mind here from Shield Gang. I was talking about the tank awareness since obviously Shelly is banned. I do want to be a little bit careful not to end up with a final pick of tanks or even two in a row, but it's going to be a call here brought in by Dados, and I really don't mind that at all. Overall, just still a very solid brawler, especially in the right hands. It can absolutely pop off, and on this map, I think it can still bring in a lot of value. Yeah, I mean, 
I like the Carl. I think that's pretty solid. Even against, uh, as you say, you know, even against Tara, it's a bit difficult. You got to keep the range and stay out of the way, and you know, slice through those support from beyond. Make sure you're not providing too much of a super. Gus is going to be the final pick coming in from Datos FA, and I do love a Gus. Uh, throughout that mid, it gives a lot of range. Obviously, outranging anybody that Shield Gang has at the moment. But now the question is, do they go squeak down one of these lanes and play something a bit more long range in mid, or do they just try and gamble it out and play the squeak through the mid and be a little bit outranged? Last pick for Shield Gang. And it's gonna be the RT brought into the mix. Hmm, I, I don't mind it. I mean, it's gonna be nice at dealing with, you know, an overly aggressive Carl. It can still get some good damage from afar, and I love resetting heals as well. With your gadget, or just finishing off a kill on a one-shot player. So across the board, I like the comps on both sides. I actually might even prefer Shield Gang's comp just a little bit, but considering the players that are behind those brawlers, I would be probably still siding a little bit in favor of Dados. Yeah, I feel so too. I mean, they definitely win the, the strategy of just playing something different down the mid and having squeak down one of those lanes, but I do feel like Datos have the upper hand coming into this one. Ruff's playing quite far back now. That should be a residue shot, and it is blocking off that left-hand side portion. And now Squeak will be playing down this left-hand side against Ruff's, which definitely is a good matchup for the Squeak. We'll just see if they're able to do all right. And obviously Tara's going to be decent against the uh, the Carl because he won't want to feed that super. So far, both teams have yet to really get into that zone, but eventually Weepy's going to be the one. Locking in a couple percent here for Shield Gang, but he takes a little bit of damage. Gadget will be popped, and Alonso is taken out of the equation. Moko forced back as well by Brian. So far, very solid stuff from Shield Gang. And I mean, as we said, the draft does seem to be in their favor. And so far, the execution from Dados is not really compensating for that. And Brian in a great position now as well. The little swap they've got gone. You move over Doritos over to the right hand side. Alonzo low. Flying hook to the left hand side now. Got to try and get something done, but Super's gonna be connecting as well. Not gonna have that slowdown value though. And good pickup from Weepy there, but Moko's flown under the radar so well and actually survived that one out. But you've got to question how much it matters with 67% already done and zero in the hands of Datos at the moment. But now the first sign of a break is there. Super in with the Gus Shield and he gets one. Can he get two? He goes in for it. Might be able to get it, but he's going to be traded out there regardless. But a great shot onto Brian and the value was there. Yeah, I nearly got the third there as well. Alonso is tagged up, and the following shot from Weepy will take him down. Brian going in for a flank as well. Going to be a bit scary here for Loco. Weepy back in the zone, and so close to the finish line, that's going to be devastating for Dados as Shield Gang are getting closer and closer to a game victory here. But they still need to cross the finish line, and right now it's lining up very nicely for a team wipe, and it is going to be a team wipe indeed for Dados. And honestly, they're not even that far behind anymore. No, really not. Brian's got no support from beyond either. Todd's got no residues, and this could be difficult. Shield back to Loco once more, and the deficit is very heavily closing down, but Dorito's going to come and get taken down. Weepy's low. Super comes in. Loco's going to get pulled in as well. Taken down, and a big turnaround now for Shield Gang. Gets one, but I don't think Datos are going to be back up in time to stop this percentage being done. And Shield Gang going to take their first game. Great game from Shield Gang. Absolutely. I'm kind of wondering how it would go if Dados maybe applied themselves a little bit more in the early stages and managed to not have as horrible of a start because it was a close game despite them being like 75% behind. So, yeah, if they can just start a little bit better, I feel like they definitely still got a shot in this one. Secure Residue will be placed down and... That is quite brutal on this map as you just really aren't left with much space to navigate through in the mid. Yeah, Loco's in a good position now though, but Todd trying to flank around and get some damage in. Just gonna go for the walking forwards auto aim, never gonna fail. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're that close to him, you can't really miss when no walls are nearby, you're gonna be in a right spot, but Doritos walks into that super shot from across the left hand side. It's close, but Loco's gonna go for a little flying hook in there. Nice stuff from him, but I don't think they even get the takedown. Not really in a position to, uh, to be able to pinch here, Alonso. Maybe even forgot he was there and still not shooting at him. Shield popped, but Loco does go down and still a good position for Shield Gang. 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much just as good of a start here for Shogun so far. Maybe some opportunities slowly coming up as at last the walls on the top right are going to be taken away. A little bit less cover and a little bit more maneuverability as well for Dados. However, percentage-wise, it's not really to be felt just yet. Hello, yeah, Loco moving forward, wants a super here as well, but missing shots. Todd's going to surely be able to get this takedown here, even commits a super to it, but the shield might keep Loco alive. Tara pull from the right to the left, though. Dorito should be able to get the trade, but the healing shade keeps Brian up, and Doritos can't do anything about that. Percentage is ticking away for Shield Gang, over and over and over. Still got a flying hook, but he's going to be shut down by this RT, surely, and yes, he is. Might be able to get the takedown on him, but I don't think they're going to be able to get the win. Incredible gameplay from Shield Gang, holding on so nicely. This Loco is going to get tanked up as well, and this is looking like Shield Gang should be able to close out not only this game, but this entire set. It looks that way. Little pull comes in, and 100% ticks over for Shield Gang. They take the set, and it was a convincing one at that. First game, a little bit of a comeback started. Second game, they couldn't even get that going. So definitely not the game that we saw, well, that, that Datos will have wanted. But Shield Gang definitely in a much better position. Now you can see, even see a smile breaking onto his face there, because that was a convincing set into their hands. 1-1 against probably the, the most favored team in the region. Obviously, the, 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 the highest points in the region, and they've secured their spot already. So, I mean, they're not in a bad spot whatsoever, bringing it back to 1-1 and having some good momentum, wind in the sails going on into this next. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it comes down to bad draft from Dados. I mean, I think the Ruff's first pick was just, I mean, he just didn't really do much that game, you know? He'd get the wall break really late into those games, which still, I mean, it's a valuable wall break, but it's too late. And overall, just not really that much value across the board from him. I think Loco, even though he had some amazing moments in game one, in game two, he missed like 20 shots in a row, which made it very difficult for them to really build up that control that they wanted, that sort of flank strategy they had in mind. I think that they need to be a bit more careful with their next drafts because that one just wasn't it. Yeah, I mean, maybe they might be able to turn things around because that definitely wasn't it. As you said, the draft just wasn't their way. And I said, I didn't mind the roughs pick, but the squeak was much more of a first pick in my eyes. But hard drop mine on gem grab is going to be up next. A very decisive set for both of these teams because one of them after this is only going to be one set away from taking the entire series and moving on to the finals to face off against a pretty solid team who's waiting there for them. Squeak is going to be picked up now, first by Shield Gang once more, but I'm not as convinced by the first pick of Squeak on a map like this. Yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, we've seen so much Squeak in the region as well, which, don't get me wrong, it's still a meta brawler across all regions, but it's been picked really early and very often so far in South America. But Great is going to be the first pick for Dados. They'll pair it up with a Jean, so double pulls here, but obviously a little bit more limited in the amount of pulls for Grey, but they are free pulls, as you don't need to unlock your super to get them. You can just press the green button whenever you want to, as early as you want into that game. But we'll see Lola on the side of Shield Gang, which is a brawler that has fallen off quite a bit across the board, even here in South America. I don't think we've seen any so far today, but it's still a brawler that can do some work, that deals a lot of damage, can tank some gene pulls as well. So I don't hate it. Maze is an interesting approach here. Just a lot of brawlers that we don't necessarily see as often on Hard Rock Mine at the moment, and so far I might be inclined to prefer Dados' uh, Dados draft, depending on what their final pick is going to be. Well, we'll see this again. Shout out to RCN. There we go. Shout out to Raconic, probably for making the LCQ. I don't know the translation, but yeah, big shout out to Raconic in that one. See this last pick coming in from Dato shortly and see if they're able to make a big bit of a turnaround here after that last set. Mr. P is going to be their pick. And I mean, I don't mind it. I really don't. Gonna have a lot of those spawnables coming in. It's gonna make it a bit harder for Maisie and Squeak. Obviously, when they start going towards him, it's difficult for multiple takedowns on them. Datos, I like the comp here, but Lola's gonna be able to tank quite a lot of those gene pulls with the ego being put down. Yeah, I think this is definitely a better comp from Datos compared to our previous set. But even then, I think Shield Gang still have some good chances. Just some odd picks across the board here that I wouldn't necessarily expect to see at the moment on Hard Rock, man. I mean, Lola, Maisie, not really picks I would expect here. 
but I'm really looking forward to how they will make that one work. As early on, everyone kind of stacked down in the mid, but eventually spreading out after taking a good bit of damage. Well, Weepy trying to push forwards now. Maze getting a good few shots off, and Mr. P pushed back over the right hand side. Trying to get those bouncing shots forward, but the pool's available. Weepy needs to back off until his ego's claimed. Brian was low. Pool might be on him, but actually jukes it nicely. Still goes down, so not the biggest waste. But I don't think Loco got much of a uh, much of a charge there. Weepy is falling low, and now Mr. P should be able to push up thanks to his two teammates winning their lanes quite successfully. Dito's still down, but only by one now. Nice shot stare from Doritos. Finally gets his home base. Ready to spawn in those sporters, and he's placing it on the right hand side as Brian is pushing up. And Brian picks up a nice kill onto him now. Those get scattered by Loco. But so far, no gene pool just yet. Weepy just really chilling in the mid. Up to eight gems already for his team. Yeah, pulls there. Ego goes down though, and now this. Mr. P Porter that's beefed up is coming forward thanks to that gadget. Pulls available on someone. Might be worth just using it and trying to keep this control. But does carry on eyeing up Weepy, who has yet another ego. There's the pull onto Brian. Gets him down before he can really use that super. And even did use a knockback with the lamp blow out there. Alonso TPs to the left, gets one. Not going to stay alive. Even the magic puffs couldn't keep him alive with the heals. But it's 7 to 8 now. And the comeback has been pretty solid by Datos. Yeah, it has been, but they are starting to lose some of that mid control now. Weepy not going to be overextending just yet for the jam, but has the opening now getting to nine, which means that this last one is going to start a countdown, and I believe one that that is going to only interrupt if they take down Weepy, which is a bit of a problem considering their positioning right now. Alonso very low HP, able to survive. Loco has pull, but that ego needs to go if he wants to stand any chance to use that pull. But even then, it's just not going to be happening, and Shield Gang are catching us off guard once more as they pick up that game, and suddenly they're in the lead in this match. It might be the day of the underdogs here in the South America West, because it seems like they're the ones succeeding so far today. SKC got beaten in the previous one, who were the favorites going into it, and into going into this one, Datos with a heavy, heavy favorites. But Shield Gang looking very, very good, and Najin could not get a look in with his pull. And Weepy's done a great job of carrying the gem so far. Loco, low HP off the bat and taken even lower by Weepy now. Weepy already on three gems, getting every single one that's spawned so far. Even considering this next one, but does need to be a little bit careful for a walking cane from Alonso. Tom finds Doritos on the right hand side. And so far, things are looking really good for Shield Gang as Brian swoops in, finds a kill into Loco. And right now, Shield Gang up by four gems. And Dados have yet to really get out of their side of the map. Shield Gang, a scary, scary team at the moment. But the bounce is hitting Todd quite heavily. Weepy in a tough position. Has to use that ego. Freeze frame being used as well. Brian's there. Dash in. Knockback also gets the takedown. Weepy's there for the taking, but the pull's missed. The gems are laid on the floor, ready for the taking. Down goes one. Down goes Loco. Brian can claim this one and start the count. But Weepy might be waiting for more. Oh, Alonso gonna get it tagged up as well, goes down. This is disastrous for Dados as Shield Gang should be able to close out this countdown with ease. What a convincing set on their end, beautifully done. And that is gonna send them a set ahead of Dados. Looking really good so far. And as you said, it might be the day of the underdogs here for South America West. Could not say that I was expecting these kind of outcomes, especially after that first set as well. How convincing that Datos FA looked. They just dominated, dominated, dominated. And then from there, it's all been shield gang and it's worrying for Datos. I mean, they've already locked in their LCQ spot, right? They might be feeling a bit lazy, but everybody likes money. Who doesn't like money? You've got to try your hardest. And if that's the case, if that's why they're not winning, then they really need to think about what's going on and get some, uh, get, get the gameplay a little bit more polished up because Shield Gang, they're just looking great. They really are. Their draft's a little bit unorthodox. Been a while since we've seen Lola here. Probably haven't seen here, Maisie here that much, but it just works. That up so far was a bit of a lackluster performance, but Shield Gang making sure to capitalize from that. And stats-wise, I mean, it's a very one-sided story here as well. 
seven more kills for the side of shield gang it was a very strong showing here in gem grab and i mean uh, just looking back at our predictions here as well you know for uh, our, our grand finals i had skc winning because I, th that was we've seen them before playing with their food a little bit you know trying to have some fun and sometimes a little bit too much fun as well and nearly losing out on those big matches and that's kind of what was my idea getting into today that they might choke just because you know they're not as focused up they don't care just as much as they usually do but right now i mean it's taking it to another level as well where they are genuinely struggling to make it work here against shield gang I mean, something's got to change. Pit stop might be the one to do it because it's a bit of aggression and I feel like it can be a little bit more orthodox. I don't know if that kind of helps Shield Gang a bit more or if it helps Datos because at the moment, Shield Gang are looking like the better team. So we, Datos might need something to just shake it up. See the stew as the first pick coming out of Shield Gang here. I like the stew. We've seen some good moments for it on Pit Stop, but also at the same time, we've seen some pretty poor moments. You know, it gets the kills, but it doesn't get the damage on safe. Daryl and Sam with a follow up from Datos and they like a good tank. That's a statement and a half. I mean, the Sue is safe from those brawlers, right? But he's not going to be taking them down. He's not going to be protecting the safe if they're near it. Nita is not a bad shot here. The bear is definitely something that can be really good at shutting down those aggressive ideas. But they still will need either another tank of their own. Maybe a Primo could be bringing brought into the equation here or just a tank counter. And yeah, it is going to be the Primo that they opt for. I think a pretty solid pick overall, to be honest, to try to deal with those two tanks. But that was, they might just try to go for a third tank at this point. And no, it's going to be the Dynamite instead, which has a ridiculous amount of damage on safe, by the way, especially if you manage to get your shield gear, shield gear activated. Uh, sorry, your damage gear or shield gear. Damage gear activated. And uh, they're just, you know, running to try to catch up to you. And they don't have any supers, a, a stew dash or a primo super or a good pinch lined up to take care of you. You're going to be melting down that save. So, honestly, I really like the idea here from Dados. Shield Gang, I think, have some good answers to it, especially with that Primo and Nita. I'm a little bit worried for the Stu, to be fair, that he's kind of just going to be, you know, watching all the action happening. Well, a little thumbs down pin from Weepy coming off spawn. I'm not sure if that's him feeling confident or him feeling a little bit unconfident. But at the moment, they are ahead and they've got a bit of wiggle room. The brakes coming down from Todd. I don't mind it. Doritos looking like he's just trying to weave back and forward against Todd here. Try to play this out. And Loco not got the best match against Brian when he does get that super. The mobility is going to be enhanced and it's going to be difficult for him. Brian dashing around, opening up those walls a bit. Doritos will fall to Todd. Loco trying his best to find something here. Alonso will get the kill, actually. The bear is going to be a bit of a problem for him, but actually t does get taken care of eventually and there is some nice early damage onto that save Dorados probably just going to be melted down here but actually does manage to get a couple shots off on save still not going to be the most damage 25 percent in favor of Dados for now but the entire fight has been on their side of the map and that's kind of going to be the plan here for Dados to keep the fights on the bottom side so even though they kill they, they die more than they get kills they get damage on safe and by the time they respawn they still manage to find around the mid rather than the top side of the map where their safe is yeah well he goes down we're not seeing a lot now the jump comes in from todd this might be the turning point cycles it goes for the safe as well loco might need to help out on defense here so sam's there trying to get something done but a bit of damage coming down super gonna come through from weepy but the, the follow-up from the super actually doesn't get that much hyper bears melting through everybody but it's only Stu who's left on the safe and what can he do they're still around 13 percent behind we've got an alonzo roll here we've got doritos coming forward as well but the defensive jump from todd is worthwhile thanks to that cycle Laredo's trying to escape here very desperately, but eventually does end up going down. Weepy gets another bear onto that save, and it deals absurd amount of damage. Shield Gang now in the lead. Alonso rolling into Brian, but he's never really going to be catching up to him. Low HP now as well as he was burning down, Todd. And Weepy getting some nice damage on save. Not the highest DPS on save in the game, that's for sure. But still an absolute threat here. A bit of a base race happening across the board. And Todd might be the one to pick it up for his team there. As there's only a little bit of 
Health left on the blue safe. It is going to be Shield Gang that picked this one up, and it's match point. I mean, what a base race that was. The fact that the Nita went back at the perfect time and cleaned up was gorgeous. Even used the bear to get the Hyper Bear damage and the cleanup down. Shield Gang in a position of dreams now, wanted to move forwards to the finals, taking down the favorites of the region. And it's this game that will decide whether or not they do. The Raiders and Alonso backing up on that left hand side. The Raiders quite low HP, thought his super is gonna get a clean kill there. Loco also not really sending a chance against Brian. I think their threat there was to try to get a bit of a base raise because they don't care about the suit. They don't care about the Nita as long as the Nita doesn't have bear. Which obviously in the early game she won't. But it just didn't work out. The defense is too strong from Shield Gang, and instead there's gonna be some damage on Dados' safe done by 12 now. And a wall break as well there from Todd. Three people down the right hand side. Sweepy's gonna survive that one. Is he using jump? I'm not sure. I thought that would have finished him off anyway. Doritos moving down this right hand side. Just trying to make the play, but Todd defending nicely. Jump available. Gets it down on both of them. Perfect from him. Might be able to get a Sam as well. Gets one, gets two, but traded out. Now Loco through the wall. I mean, Brian through the wall trying to get Loco. They do have a 12% lead and a need to bear waiting. Bear ready to be set up here for Weepy. Waiting patiently for it as well as the gadget is spawned by Tom. Meteor coming down, opening up some more walls and getting Loco out of position. Brian pushing up and those dashes are going to be brutal for the Dynamite to deal with. He's still... He's not really committing to it for now. Alonso trying his best to defend as well. And so far, even though there's not that much damage onto that red save, it's still Shield Gang in the lead. It's still Shield Gang with pretty much the entire map under their control. But eventually that kill is going to be opening up a little bit more space. The bear is breaking down Alonso, shredding him into a million pieces, and we're back to a bit of a base race. The Dynamite will deal some good damage on safe. We'll have to see if they manage to deal with Stalin, and they will do that for now. Weepy doesn't have super eater, so if they can break through, they might be able to catch up. Do you have a bit of a lead still though? Weepy looks like he's gonna come back. Brian trying to get some work done. Todd's got the jump as well. Defense might be strong. Double jump gets the two connections. The takedowns are there. Doritos falls. They do have the lead though. 20 seconds. We're going to need a bear. We're going to need a jump if Shield Gang want to close it out in this one. Or they'll have to come back and try again. Doritos can't really aggress. Just hitting. Todd's going to feed him. Stuns there though. Gets the super onto him. That might give him the super necessary. Alonso's trying to get forwards. Brian might make the defense. Doritos gets jumped on. Is the bear there up top? It's just Nita. He can't deal the damage without it. 7% in in the hands of Datos, Shield Gang, still match point. Datos won off set number five. Not a comfortable win, that's for sure, but a win is a win. And at that point, that was the only possible result for them if they wanted to stay in this final monthly final of the year. Let's see if they can fend off another one or if Shield Gang can close it out in four sets. It's early on, we don't have that lane stack on left hand side anymore. Brian gonna be chasing the dynamite, and that's realistically where he wants to be. Leave the other two players to deal with those very tanky brawlers. And so far, things are going pretty much according to plan. They do take a little bit of damage on save, but not the end of the world either if they manage to set up nicely. They will have a bear to work with as well on Weepy, so definitely some chances there to get some good value. Yeah, go for the walk, go for the bear over the top. The locos down the bottom with his super and damage gear activated. Todd should be able to pick up Alonso to here. The burn damage will get it. Can they take down Loco though? Still using dino jumps. So the the, the, uh, the demolition's not going to deal as much damage, or at least not using the demolition is going to mean he doesn't make as much damage. But Nita still getting some good hits. 1,400 a shot. And now Brian just taking the damage down. They do clearly are at a deficit. Todd's going to get the jump onto Alonso here. Should still go down, but Brian should be able to clean up. Super's going to be thrown so far back. The Knuckle Buster's not ready for collection. And Brian hasn't got Alonso yet. Just picks him up now. But what a lead from Datos. Yeah, that Super is going to be a waste there from Loco. Doesn't find any value. Probably would have been better spent just on the safe. Doritos in a bit of an awkward position will eventually go down if they commit to it and they will indeed the bear is there to melt down alonso damage wise it's a pretty decent lead here for dados there's still a chance if a bear is placed at the right time that things can be incredibly quick loco jumping around 
utilizing that Dynajump, but actually getting some good value out of it. But Hyper Bear is going to be melting down the safe. And that's what I was talking about. A couple of seconds of that bear and your safe is gone. GG's well played. Dados, they have been the kings of this region. They're going to be out early this month as the semifinals is as far as they get. It's going to be Shield Gang that will be facing SK Kalelas in the grand finals. I don't know if Loco thinks he's in some kind of diner jumping competition trying to do a double jump down the bottom there and escape this too. Like, I don't know, what is the point in that? He's wasting a super. He's running diner jump to start with. And then he tries to, I don't know, impress the viewers with his diner jumping abilities using a super to just move forwards. It was definitely a little bit weird. And I think a thoroughly deserved win there from Shield Gang to take this in a 3 1. Datos, the favorites coming into this, the favorites of the whole region, now stopped in the semi finals. And Shield Gang looking good. A weaker performance from the favorites today and I mean I I love how you know everyone has been wrong with our predictions but we've also been a little bit right you know <laughs> we didn't we were right to not believe <laughs> in certain teams today but yeah it's it's uh it's been an interesting one so far as both semi-finals just went in completely different directions to what we expected shield gang going to be making a grand final appearance just very interesting stuff across the board and look at the the kills and damage differential as well i mean it makes sense because they're facing tanks but still that is very much in favor of the left side yeah, I mean, it really is. They got a lot of kills, but it's still very, very close. The tanks were just kind of overwhelming a lot of the time, but Weepy's going to be the MVP in this game. Shield Gang coming out strong, winning 3-1, and Weepy being a big part of that. I mean, it was just an all-around great team performance. After that first set, I was a little bit worried for Shield Gang, I will say. Complete domination in Infinite Doom by Datos, but Shield Gang managed to come back with three in a row. We're going to be bringing back a, uh, a familiar face to get a bit of a get a bit of a word in from him about what he thought about that game. A better face, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that look. <laughs> I mean, what is going on today, by the way? I mean, this is like a grand final that we've never seen before. But not only that, but one that just in the past has always had one of at least SK Kalelis or Data Cafe. Like we've never had one without both. Um, it's just kind of crazy to me that today has been all about the underdogs. I mean, predictions completely out the window, which Travis, you know, brings me a lot of joy because uh, yeah, you had that feeling, but it wasn't Yeah, but it yours wasn't are wrong babe. as well. Like if yours were right, then I'd be a little it bit more matter. sad. But like if everybody's <laughs> collectively wrong, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you had a feeling, mate. We, me and Teddy were just vibing. You had the feeling, and it, uh, it didn't pay off, mate. It didn't pay off. Um, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And hopefully, in the chat over at event.brawlstars.com, also, viewers are not giving us a hard time for it. But I love it. That's what I, I love to see in a region like this. So it's, this side, actually, has been so much, like, just craziness compared to the east side today. Uh, definitely some upsets there, no doubt about it. But these are going all the distance, and I love it. Blue Label, again, that underdog story. I I, I feel like this team, for me, actually looking uh, aside from our predictions now is what we know to be is the case. I think I got a very, very good chance here today. Nico, Meliodas, and Jeremy. I mean, they impressed us so much earlier today, Teddy. And they are the underdog story of this region, in my opinion, having knocked out uh, you know, Reconic Esports in the quarterfinal stages. And then later on today, SK Kalelis. They're looking unstoppable. They really are. I mean, right now, I would consider them as my favorites to take it all home today. They play phenomenally well across the board. We have to remember as well, both teams here, zero grand finals appearances. Of course, zero grand finals wins here at the monthly finals. This is going to be their first time ever. And I feel like, you know, all we can really look at is their form and shape today. It looks so good on the side of Blue Label. They looked incredible. Absolutely pitch perfect drafts and the mechanics to match. 
And it's no easy feat to take down SK Kaleas at all. They're up against the might of things. But Shulgang are in a very similar predicament, Trav. Never made the grand finals before, but looking now to do themselves justice and see out the season on a high. Weepy Brian and Todd. I mean, where's your mind at? You know, I'll give you uh, one last chance as being, you know, our predictions master at getting it right. Listen, I have actually no clue. Like, I generally don't know who to predict <laughs> the I'm going to say Shield Gang. They've taken down a better opponent more convincingly, if you think about it. 3-1 versus the 3-2. And they were against a harder opponent. I kind of think Shield Gang have played very, very well today, but I also do think uh, that Blue Label have played some great Brawl Stars too. Their drafts were definitely on point. I feel like... In my eyes, Blue Label's drafting's better, but I think Shield Gang have just played better, so it's really going to come down to a bit of a 50-50 in my eyes. As much as it pains me to say it, you, you have a very good point there. Um, it, it does reflect exactly how you've just mentioned, in all honesty. I, I think that Blue Label have got some fantastic drafts, but Shield Gang again, like that, that was a match that I honestly just never expected would go their way. I mean, they you no, know, they are, they are the titans, realistically, of this side, and they were able to do it as convincing as they did. Uh, I mean, I, I've got to wonder though, as you rightly said earlier with the Dino Jumps, whether SK Kalelis were coming in today, taking it as serious as maybe they probably should, and those sunglasses definitely made for me the biggest of differences. You know, having them. You know, not be on. You don't have the sunglasses buff, as we mentioned in previous months, and it really, it really did show. But nonetheless, Teddy, we, we got to say is you got to admit that this region just always brings us surprises. I love that in the monthly final. Absolutely. I mean, it is a chaotic region for sure, with all kinds of things happening month to month. But this month has got to top it all for me, really, because we just had so many underdog stories already. And getting into those grand finals, again, we have two teams that have never made it this far. And one of them is going to win their first monthly final of the year. And I mean, that's just something incredible to see in our final month of the year. And I think, Travis, well, it's going to be interesting to see how both sides handle those kinds of nerves because they're in the same spot. They're in the same boat. And whoever's able to float the best is going to come out on top ultimately. And, you know, in your opinion, in that respect, you know, you mentioned already that in regards to those drafts, you know, it's not just going to be about that. The nerves are going to come into play. I mean, how do you manage that under these circumstances? I mean, to be honest, the thing is, right, like they've already won the games that they weren't supposed to win. So I question if the nerves are already going to be out of the way and they're just playing at this point. Like, <laughs> your point, like yeah. they, they've beaten the teams they didn't think they were going to beat. They're already happy with their performance today. So I kind of feel like the nerves might be lower than they would have been when they were in the semifinals. They've already secured more than they thought they were going to today. Trav, we will catch up with you at the end where I'm sure you'll rub it in our faces when you're right in terms of your predictions. But Teddy, what I will say is the poll over at event.brawlstars.com is very, very close on this one. They are pretty much on exactly the same side as the casting desk. This is going to our first map and mode, Knockout Bells Rock. Gonna be a banger. Certainly is a great way to open up the series as well with a slower pace, but still with enough action to really get you focused up and no oh, interesting bands coming up probably gonna be <laughs> refreshed in a second because don't get me wrong tick is a threatening brawler here on bells rock but don't think it quite warns a, a triple ban just yet it could be right on that one you could be right yeah i mean free my guy tick right there but you know yeah ultimately we'll get that addressed in the background and come back to the draft in the in just a moment but you know ultimately you know a very important one to get right the starting hand here goes such a long long way into giving you that that little bit of momentum going into that second set so for knockout especially survivability is going to be really really quite key here and you know having that kind of long range affair goes a long long way as well but it was like gus for me pretty much up there haven't really been that prevalent in this particular region kind of brock's a bit safer on that side of things but um you know at the same time just getting that balance isn't it really between how you want to approach things in terms of your strategy do you want to take some risks early on and then open yourselves up to potentially getting countered you know these are the times where we start to see whether the teams are able to keep their composure and it comes down to it because if they get this wrong then it could go south relatively quickly Absolutely. I mean, knockout out of all modes is a very brutal one. Well, guess what? Tick is banned indeed, but only once this time around. And Cordelius and Great will be joining him up as Blue Labels just bans. Shield Gang bang it, ban banning out the Shelly, as well as I believe it was a Cordelius. 
and the gray. And their first pick is going to be Sprout, matched by the first pick of RT for a blue label. I love the Sprout pick here. I think he can do a lot of good work, especially with gray and tick out of the mix. I feel like those are two brawlers that, you know, would have been quite a problem for Sprout. But right now, I like it quite a bit. I think Bonnie was going to be better there potentially for Blue Label because that Sprout could be still vulnerable to it. And another brawler which is so so rife in the EMEA region, but not really necessarily in the uh, South American side of things. Mr. P is an option here as well. One that this region do tend to favor quite a lot. Grom as well. You know, I love that particular thrower. Bell, for safe measure. You've got to kind of add that to the throw that they already have. Realistically here for me on the side of Shield Gang. But Brock would be good. I think in terms of a pairing, you don't really want to leave that sort of blue label to open up things when you've got like a, a brawler which is device for walls. But hey, what do I know? Bring it on, Leon. <laughs> Out of their ideas from Shell Gang for sure. Yeah, Leon is an interesting one for sure. We've been seeing it a little bit here and there. Not necessarily the most of Bell's Rock. I mean, I've seen it before, but it's been a minute and still it's some rare occasions. Not entirely sure about that one, in complete honesty. I, I like the bell all right. Don't think it's necessarily the best here either. But, I mean, she's on, eh, at home at least. You know, it is Bell's Rock after all. The Grom can be a very dominant pick as well. I feel like at a pro level, players do a pretty decent job at dodging his shots. It's easier than Sprout. But I feel like the Super can also be such a different difference maker. If you manage to land it on one, two, three players, you, you know where they're going to be pushed towards, so you can just line up the follow-up shots as well and just pretty much get those free kills. Very surprised, honestly, that you know, Brock and Bonnie have escaped this draft, but I mean, hopefully for Shield Gang's sake that they've got a strategy up their sleeve for this one, and Leon can absolutely pop off and sprout. I mean, if left in a vulnerable state, it's going to suffer massively, and they're probably hoping for that to be the case in terms of how things fare, but coming in and be able to just back things up when you need to with that invisibility shield might be able to help our Weepy in that respect. I, I just feel like for me, Blue Label have got the better one and the Grom as well is a great final pick and one that's got some great moments to have. But they'll save this pair of hands realistically that they can have on the side of Shield Gang. But Todd is marked up on the left hand side in the mid side of things. Nico and Weepy are just dancing things out until they start to connect some of these shots. Now Weepy will be able to do that just that. Nice amount of splash. Able to then move a little bit further forwards and it's both sides realistically at the moment. Just trying to earn that first sign of Super M. Paul Talks was the first to gain it and the first to miss it at that as well. Portalks trying to maybe close out that kill onto Brian if he still wants to try something here but instead he will just go down. Brian getting that final kill. And so far, Shield Gang was a strong start. Missed that first round going swiftly into their hand. And now two supers carried over as well for round two. Bit of huge wall here for Weepy. If he can just shoot these shots, but now having conceded that one, can't really risk it. It's got to stay back and heal up. And again, Nico's getting fed here. Bron Bomb potentially inbound here. And it'd be one that would go a long way for Blue Label in the later outsets of these moments as the gas might continue to start to close in eventually as the passive play is going to lengthen things out a little bit. Todd's being very reserveful for this mark and just trying to make sure that he lands it just the right time as again on an RT. It's a really prime candidate for it. It's one that can have great moments in the latest possible stages and tankiness to add to the equation with the legs. So you don't want to mess that one up. But so far, there's three supers on the side of Blue Label, and that's a big concern for me as the Gromagon goes in, and Brian will not come out. Great takedown, and Weepy's going to be weak to it as well, leaving just Todd, and that is going to be a clear up on all five for Blue Label. Yeah, not a very clean run from Shield Gang, to be honest. They came in with more supers, and they did end up feeding quite a bit on the side of Blue Label, giving some very nice opportunities as well. Portox Noah has pulled Jeremy as super as well which in the late stages can be very solid there is still that mark to try to deal with that but so far i kind of stand corrected I, pre I i thought i would prefer the sprout but i feel like nico has been playing that grum so well getting so many connections across the board and i mean it could also be weepy just not really showing up with the best dodges so far but nico's been impressive on that ground for sure 
We well, with the sass, by the way, can I just say? Yeah. Took those shots from Nico, they gave him the thumbs down for it. I mean, I don't know about that because prior to it, he was giving over a lot of value to Nico by conceding the shots, but another one on the right hand side. It's going to mean that, well, I mean, Portos can still just pull straight through it, but it will keep him back at least and at a bit of range. The magic hand has a lesser chance of connecting, but he is running as well. The talk to the hand gear as well. The left hand side, Todd goes down. Two versus three, and now the pull in as well, oh. making it two versus two. No can Brian survive? He's going, to get, he's going to heal off the back of this. Jeremy's going to get that takedown, but when Brian comes back in, he might be able to get the heels off the back of this to survive it, and he does. Wonderful stuff. That was incredible. What a sprout roll here to settle it. Baird was the Inviso heal as well to keep the Leon alive. That was really well done by Shield Gang and giving them the first game. Wow. What a way to uh, get a game in the pocket. A swift takedown there with the lollipop drop. Leaving nothing to the surprise there of Blue Label, making sure that they can see their enemy coming. Jeremy just and Todd again darting this left hand side continuously so, and until Todd gets the mark, he's definitely going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage. Surprised there wasn't a the gadget pop there from Jeremy, who would have been able to then push really far left on the left hand side, but chose to reserve it. Interesting ideas, but it will pay off or not. That pull will have a wheel from Portox, and that's a swift takedown of Weepy. In the meanwhile, though, Portox was incredibly low, goes down, Jeremy left all alone. Brian and Todd can just heal up, take their time on this one, and find the angle support, but Jeremy's not gonna go down without a fight. Consecutive taps on the Todd, and a gadget pop. Beautiful stuff from here, and he's surviving on, able to work around this situation. Brian's gonna be in trouble. Why? Why peek that? That was such a blunder there from Shield Gang. Surely should never have been given to Jeremy, but it seems like Brian will be able to clear him out anyways, so problems have been solved here or prevented, I'd, I'd rather say here for Shield Gang, but they should never have given that 1v1 to Blue Label. Yeah. Hey. Definitely some mistakes being shown. The nerves, potentially the nesting placement there from Todd for safe measure. Shield getting one round away from taking this one. And Blue Label got some catching up to do. Portox does require realistically a superhero as Nico misses his. He's got to earn that back. And in the position that they're in, I don't like their odds on this one. Weepy, if he gets those shots to connect them to Nico, he's gonna be in a fantastic position. Brian, those pretty found out here by Paul Talks. In the meanwhile, and dropping positioning power on the side of Shield Gang here is allowing actually Blue Label to get back into the mix. Oh, is available for Poor Docs. Would love to get a connection on it. It's not easy though, depending on who he pulls to actually close out the kill. Eventful Spirits a pull onto Brian, but he's just gonna get the kill onto the RT instead, and Nico's left all alone. To deal with two players, it's not going to happen as he has to run down in the open and Shield Gang are going to pick up this opening set. Good stuff from them and I look forward to seeing how this one fares because again, I think this is going to be quite a close one that could go all the way. It's a position which both of these two teams have not been in this entire year long. So when you work towards a goal and in the last monthly final of the year, you find yourself being the closest you've ever been to it. I mean, this can absolutely escalate and turn. I think this is far from done here. Bounty up next, of course, as well. Kind of a relatively similar kind of game mode, a bit more forgiving in that respect. Can certainly escalate and spiral out of control. But, I mean, some very, very close calls here for Shield Gang. Managing, though, to come out on top was kind of a surprise. That little pick actually kind of that has worked for me this moment here as well i think in itself kind of allows me to accept it because the back of that invisa hill was the very star power thing that kept brian alive and able to take that round yeah that was a phenomenal play honestly i was super impressed because it's both like you know interesting on a strategic a teamwork and a mechanic standpoint very well done by shield gang and there were some mistakes as well on shield gang's side i mean they nearly gave away a uh, 2v1 and turn it into a 1v1 but they did end up getting away with it eight kills there onto brian weepy was 
a lot more thumbs downs than kills. <laughs> yeah, I mean, adding to some control factor for sure, getting more DPS than Jeremy, but I mean, it was certainly a bit of a mismatch there for me. I feel like the Grom side of Nico had a bit more opportunity there to really land those shots, but you know, realistically, it's kills that matter in knockout, and that's what Shield Game were able to establish more often than not, and ultimately, that's what's won them the set. And moving forwards, we need to see a bit more from Blue Label in terms of things to even things out, but they are a team that can absolutely do so. Again, already having taken down SK Kalealis in the first game of the semi-finals means that they are absolutely kitted to be able to do so. So go to Canal Grande for Bounty. Yeah, I think they need to be a bit more careful on the Blue Label side of the draft because I think the Gene and Grom synergy was quite awful. Like, they, like so many times you wanted to pull someone, but there's a Grom next to you. He's not going to be able to help you out. And at the end of the day, if the Gene can't just single-handedly get that kill, well, you might lose two players to that pool. So need to be a bit more careful about synergy and making sure that everything works well with that comp. Eve is going to be our first pick here for Shield Gang as they band out Squeak, Mr. P and Penny, Blue Label banning out Shelly, Cordelius and Thick. We have two in a row now. It's been a minute since I've seen an Eve on Canal Grande. Really don't mind it. I mean, it has the highest win rate, apparently. So that makes some sense. I personally do kind of prefer the Carl approach here. It's not banned, so I would kind of like to see Blue Label pick that up. You get a, flu blue, uh, a free blue star, and it deals really well with the hashlings as well. So it's kind of like two birds, one stone sort of moments. Yeah, I agree. For one, definitely so. If it's not the second brawler, they might be opting away from it. But Gray's not a bad shout. Um, Tara going to come in. Okay. I, I'm okay with it. I wasn't really kind of thinking it. I mean, there's kind of... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, ultimately, I love what she's going to cook in at the moment. I mean, the squeak ban has to be there. It really, really does. We've seen Macy really show his face a little bit here in Canal Grande for this region. Not kind of my flavor still, but nonetheless, it is translating over. The Tara can certainly get some good value, no doubt about it. But I like, uh, more like Brock, you know, for me, just honestly, have such a strong place. Ems, I still getting kind of a bit concerned for the tankier options. I mean, Daryl did make an appearance earlier today. Might be a deterrent of that idea. But ultimately, you know, I think the bands, for the most part, really quite solid here. It's eradicating six brawlers from the mix, and that does minimize options on both sides of the field. But I would like to see some more sort of an aggressive idea. Like I said, Carl escaping things so far is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, I agree. I, it would have been good as well, like to a certain extent against the tower. And they will go for it eventually. So. I mean, Shield Gang have a lot to work with here. They get free blue star, they have control over the Wolters, a lot of mobility, some good damage as well. I like their comp quite a bit. I don't really know who the Grey would be TPing on. Tara is not bad, but not necessarily my go-to either. As you said, it's, it's a bit of an interesting one here. Not that, like anything crazy, Tara has been making some waves into the meta recently, but... I, I'm still not the biggest fan of it, and we'll see the Maisie, as you correctly predicted. It's gonna be good at dealing with that Carl, but it, I feel like it's kind of where it ends for that pick. I, I don't know if it's necessarily what I love to see the most. Yeah, it's, it's a brawler which, for me, is kind of similar to the Tara situationally here, because Maisie can even just go to town, get so much cycling. And, and just the slow is very, very effective. In this mid region of the map, I mean, Macy can really thrive in that scenario, but it can also provide very little, you know? And we need to make sure that on the side of Blue Label, we are seeing those connections with the gravity for Tara. And again, you know, Macy's gotta be showing his worth. And I've still been on the fence for it. I'm coming around very slowly to it, but it hasn't always been the flavor of every single region. Definitely one that's catering towards the South American side for sure, as the left-hand side, Brian finds Meliodas, and that is already giving a great amount of power over to Shield Gang, and an advantage Nick is too low to really contest, has to come back, and pushing into this comp is going to be a tough one. Yeah, retaking that, that mid control is going to be an absolute nightmare, now that Hatchling's also heading downwards, and finding some good value top very low hp but just jumps back to safety the pool is going to be missed as well nico out of pools which i feel like could still be quite useful if he had some in case brian swoops in and and there is not no one else that can get him out of super 
Just going for a quick pull can sort that out, but it's not going to be an option anymore for Nico. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really hard now for Blue Label. Having lost that first time of control in a map like Canal Grande, you know, it's sometimes won and lost in those opening seconds. And that's why the Eve is such a great pick to have as that first one, just getting straight into that mid position and able to then haste towards both lanes. And the lead extending further. The takedown again. Weeping with the thumbs down still remains. Nico left all alone, has the TP now, but can't go into this and surely won't until the HP's gone down. Otherwise, it will lead to his demise here as well. Jeremy coming in now. This could be the time to strike and a nice boy hook away. TP surely there for Nico. Great timing of it. On the top right, Jeremy going in. Todd low, 300 HP. Surviving on with the hatch. Things coming, clutch. Brian, very low HP as well. He will go down eventually. Doesn't get the trade onto Jeremy. That was close. But it's only one star now making up the difference. Now, there are no supers and very few gadgets left in play for Blue Label to turn this one around. The M super might be instrumental. The pool is going to connect to. Weepy goes down. And he's going to give the lead over to Blue Label now. Is there going to be a trade? No. Blue Label, take the game. That's what we needed to see. That is the kind of moment where Atara can thrive and absolutely cut all it was worth there for Blue Label just in the nick of time as well. But again, kind of risky if you, you know, don't land those moments. And we've seen fumbles already today with those Tara pulls, you know. It's happened a fair amount. The Melvin here has kept us cool, and that's what matters. Nice walking cane to kick things off for Nico. As now, Blue Label get a much better start here, being much more cautious around dodging these shots and not giving anything over. But, oh, Nico gets a bit too close to my liking. Weeby punishes it. We forced around to the left now, and that's not great for him. But nonetheless, he didn't give over any stars, and that's what's important. Silk the blue star giving the lead to Shield Gang. Meliodas is going to fall, but there's a kill from Jeremy onto Brian as well. We beat teasing the super, eventually actually goes for it, finds Nico. Big kill there. Three stars now in favor of Shield Gang. There's going to be hatchlings available for Toto as well once he's done healing up, but it's not going to heal up just yet, actually. Rather keep distance with Meliodas, but Meliodas uses that opportunity to try to push forward, and Nico with a TP in, suddenly it's going to be three stars in favor of Blue Label. Yeah, Meliodas just found the card there. And that's a very important turning point now. It's Shield Gang that have got to push into this mid. And they have got a flying hook on the left-hand side for Brian. That could absolutely open up some space. But it's got to be a calculated and coordinated push in here. And they are doing just that. And Meliodas and Nico push behind this wall now. But the gravity now for Meliodas is potentially there as a turning point. When we go for Todd, it will absolutely be weepy that he wants. And there's support from Beyond as well. And the follow-up is beautiful. Great stuff. Extend the lead. And the from Jeremy on the left-hand side gives him more stars. 12 on the side of Blue Label. What a turnaround here from Blue Label. Shield Gang are in trouble. They don't want to give away that set lead, but there's only 15 seconds to turn it around now, and it's looking less and less likely by the second. 16 stars for Blue Label. Still, I think it is mathematically possible, but it's not going to be happening as we have a victory for Blue Label. 1-1 in sets now as they even things out. Yeah, it was going to take an entire team wipe and the clock was against them. But Blue Label responded. As I said, coming into this set, you know, this is a very, very close matchup. Both of these two teams pretty much identical on paper. When you look at things, both have taken down absolute giants on this side of the region, finding themselves into the grand finals for the first time this year. This has been their goal the entire time, and they're seizing the opportunity. They're not giving it up easy. The drafts are really decent for the most part for me as well, not making too many mistakes there, and that makes for an exciting grand final. Absolutely. So, so far, we went from a pretty dominant set from Shield Gang to a pretty dominant set for Blue Label. And set three is going to be thrown wide open. I was feeling after the first set like Shield Gang might just have this match. But now suddenly it's much more competitive kills wise. Same story there. Blue Label definitely with the upper hand here. 12 total for their side. Shield Gang only have a mere six. So pretty different picture. And even though damage wise it's fairly even, it's about getting those kills in bounty. Damage is not quite going to cut it.
Well, in that set, we saw Melio to sub in for Portox, and he has got the lowest stats on the side, but it's all about the feel of things when you're playing as a unit and whether they make the change going into this next set, we'll see. They have done so when they've got some momentum in the past and it worked out well, so switching things up, it seems, for them does tend to work out, and they're looking a lot more pumped, no doubt about it. And that's always a great thing for a team at this stage of the competition. It's just all about having that adrenaline running through your veins. Going into this next set, again, a chance for a fresh draft. And I just feel like it's going to be back and forth all the way to the fifth and final, to be completely honest. Going in there to gem grab and double swoosh. A really important time to get things right. So much really on the line in terms of the pride of these two teams. And of course, the cash up for grabs. As, as Trav said earlier, you know, who doesn't like cash? <laughs> Trav, who doesn't like cash talks is going to be my new name for him for sure as the bands come in. We could this Shelly and the Mr. P and the Mr. P squeak and Tara. I quite like what I'm seeing, but Amber going to be open for sure. We've seen Gene M's earlier today too. But the squeak band is really quite essential and the Tara actually as well. Crow though is a huge pick for this region and it's left open here. Yeah, I think that could definitely be a good shout. And I mean, you're right. absolutely right. First pick here for Blue Label. That's a good one to lock in. Amber is still going to be open as well. And it's one I'm looking particularly at here for double swoosh. We'll see the rough switch. It's a bit of an interesting one. Not really a brawl that we see much of at all on double swoosh. Not much of a fan of it, to be honest. It obviously over time will lend a great deal of helping hand to the squad. And if Shield Gang in that respect have got something in line, then I'm all for it on some level, but they're going to be able to pair it, and that's going to be quite the key realistically here. And a lot of the big ones out the way. I mean, is it going to be Ruff's mid? I mean, it's kind of a bit weird, but I'm all for it. That's the M's that I was thinking about as well, and I do kind of feel that pick can assert a lot of pressure, but the Amber's going to be a response here. M's is so good in the bush, you know, when she's got that to hide and behind and pushing into it very, very tough, but if there's nowhere to hide, I mean, that's really where the Amber's going to be able to thrive on things and then a mid to match things on the side of Blue Label. Again, I do love Bo here, snarled at by some across the global scene, but I think it's got a real place, really great against the Gene mid as well. If that's an idea that Shield Game wants to float later stages, exactly. Blue Label are onto something here, and I love the smell of what they're cooking. Yeah, it just makes sense, right? Stu mid also very valid. Like, it's a normal draft on their end. I just still don't understand that, Ruffs. It is a map where you have a ton of zone damage brawlers that are strong, and some of them are banned out, right? You have, I mean, Mr. P in a way would be considered as that. Squeak is out of the mix as well. They'll go penning for their last pick, which is a really interesting one too. I I mean, I'm assuming that it's going to be the penny mid and, and the roughs on a, a lane, but I feel like in theory, roughs should be getting bodied. I'll be honest, I wasn't going to talk about Penny. I came around on this map earlier and I wasn't a fan, but then I was watching where the turret placements were and stuff like that, and it was getting some value for this region. And it's such a slept on brawl now. Obviously, we received a lot of nerfs along the way, and it was so, so strong in the meta. Drifted away across many of the other regions now, but it does feel like it's been hanging on for dear life in South America. And I'm, I'm kind of warming a little bit to it specifically here, but. The question is whether we'll get that same value. Bring the roughs in onto the Amber pick is going to be a tough one. Brian swapping lanes for that very reason. I don't think he's going to find much more there, to be honest. Sandbags, if he can push himself forwards enough to really assert his authority, that's a huge slow from Meliodas. And it's mid, though, the stew. It's been kind of long forgotten about. It can achieve some great results. Dashing into the mid, dashing back out, and getting the value for all it's worth. And Todd, as a result of that very thing, incredibly low. Yeah, I, I, I still don't really get the rough speak. I mean, I get the sandbags against Crow are good. Jeremy, a little bit of danger there, but he's able to get out of there in the nick of time. Nico will be hit by the mortar, but so many bushes are out of the way now as well. They're making it much harder for Shield Gang to be a bit discreet with those bushes opened up. They lose their gem carrier, but there's no one really to capitalize and pick up those gems. Jeremy does need to be careful, get stagged up a little bit by Brian. Todd has been buffed up, so that's going to be helping him just stay alive a little bit easier down in the mid. But even gem-wise, it is blue label in favor right now. 
wave you with a thumbs down yet again, but for a different reason this time around, because yeah, there's it, it, not really much that he can contribute when there's no pushes available and he's struggling. Now, Meliodas did not jump in there, could have chosen to do so. Friend zone is for sure available still, but would like to alleviate the pressure on this right-hand side lane, but goes down himself. And on the left-hand side, Brian gets to pick up there. That's a fantastic result. Jeremy's done a massive scrutiny. Gonna push into the gas. I don't know why he did that. Gems drops in and disastrous. So much time has been bought. Now a shield gang have brought this one back. One jump away from countdown. That would be a huge countdown as well to lock in. Slow is gonna be there on two players. Weepy not quite gonna survive it as he burns down. But still so much utility to work with. There are enough gems now on Blue Label's side to even things out by picking up the next two that spawn, but the next one will spawn on the side of Shield Gang. They have control of the mid for now, but they need to bear that in mind. They'll pick it up now, so a bit optimistic from Shield Gang to just completely leave the mid there and let them tie it up, not even fight for it, not even trying to punish Jeremy. There's gonna be the countdown now as Shield Gang finds the next gem, finds the next two actually. Well done. And now, Blue Label, they need to go on the hunt. I don't know if they'll have time to just sit down in the mid. I think they have to go for a kill there and uh, they're not gonna get it. Yeah. Uh, crazy decision making across the board, really. Just some mistakes here and there and some indecisiveness as well there. Towards the end for Blue Label to just not really commit to that push whilst really it was their final chance. Love to watch it back, just to kind of see exactly how many seconds were there, and it, it, it was a bit close to call, to be completely honest, but I think they played it so well as well. Blue Label punished a little bit. I mean, Jeremy as well, was playing the Stews, one of my least favorite of this comp, and he was getting so much value, and, and just bringing back the gems for safety and helping out every single witch lane, and in the day, Blue Label, by playing a little bit too passive, will punish Shield Gang now, one game away from a set, that could be a fantastic spot to find themselves in. Brian, just, I'm not sure whether what lane he actually wants. In the last game, he was just going all over the place between them. But I mean, that's a pretty decent pickup on the on the right onto the crow, and I suggest that if he keeps playing it like that. Use those sandbags early again. The more time that they waste here, the more time Amber's got a chance to really open everything up. And getting things done in the early game for Shield Gang here is a priority. Absolutely. So the quicker. Blue Label can get set up as well, the quicker problems will rise for Shield Gang. So getting that early start going the way of Shield Gang is instrumental to their success, making the most out of it. But a big pick up there onto Jeremy Meliodas, gonna pick up just a singular gem and jump out. Not sure if that's the move. Todd is low HP though, and he's gonna burn down actually, but Weepy is there to pick up the gem, so a bit of a crisis of board to... Of Wow, Nico still manages, manages to get the kill there. That's actually quite big. Taunt under fire as well, even though gem-wise, it's still all shield gang. Control-wise, they don't have much left to work with. Lovely pinch onto EP, honestly. Everyone just really doing their bit and just keeping him low. Yeah, Nick, just tap away at this. Hasn't even got to secure the kill if he doesn't want to. I love that. Just kind of spread it and just buy time. They've got to get the gems the mid back into a level pace. And you know, by doing this and just keeping everything on lockdown, it's putting a lot of pressure on them to Shield Gang, who are going to be getting frustrated. And again, Weeby can't help out much. They've lost that early game advantage now, and Todd really can't push into this. Gems that can be spawning from the mid. If Jeremy gets one of them and dashes away from it, they can't close the gap, and it's going to be a favorable spawn on the side there of Shield Gang as well. They can actually reset the thing. Maybe not actually. Now they've got to push in. Maybe this is actually going to be incredibly low. It doesn't go down, though, and Shield Gang get it. My goodness, what a turnaround in this one as well. It was such a huge lead for Shield Gang. But Blue Label now able to turn this one around and have momentum with them in this final game. This is huge for them. But can they close it down? We'll see the roughs back on the right hand side. So Nico is pretty much going to be doing the same job. I actually burns down his own bushes. Which surely has to be a mistake, but I mean, and not a really good moment for that. Yeah, no, I agree, it's gotta be. I mean, ultimately you wanna utilize that and cycle into your super and just lay it down and rinse and repeat, but I mean, I guess he just kind of didn't quite manage to evade it and it's gonna expose a lot of that side. I mean, that's definitely not a great start, but 
Let's see how quickly they will recover or if they can recover from it. Jeremy's taking a lot of heavy fire here down to 400 HP and that's going to allow a lot of control over to Shield Gang. Get themselves hunkered down. Brian gets a bit too close for comfort but top with some good value as well. Able to get everyone whittled down. Five gems to Shield Gang and Blue Label have got to retake this. Uh, the, the next burn from Nika was also pretty much as awful as the previous one. Like, missing out on so many bushes and so much potential value there. Very confused. Uh, so far, Shield Gang, absolutely dominant. And, I mean, setup time doesn't even matter anymore because they didn't set anything up on the side of Blue Label. What a disaster. Countdown running out and shield gang running away with this one final seconds here to get the kills but it's not gonna be happening shield gang stay up and they lock in set number three they are back in the lead yeah i'm not really quite sure towards the end there like meliodas like could have I, i'm sure just collected those gems but they just kind of gifted them over and i mean that was what gave them 10 for the countdown and that would have been enough time to buy to get back control i just don't kind of know why they just deflated themselves so much on the side of blue label potentially nerves that we saw you know, on the side of the abbot certainly were showing themselves in that game and i guess just that that prospect is i was even chatting with players just about this very thing last night about teams that kind of are usually finding themselves in the grand final stages and you know it, it's like you know that adrenaline that excitement of potentially getting a lead and being that close to, to victory it, it can do some strange things to teams and it just felt like blue label were playing it so well in game one and towards the end in game three just very much the opposite story to be told there I think a lot of nerves, I think a lot of nerves, a lot of mistakes across the board. I, I still can't get over the Amber place, you know, bringing down your own bushes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, mistakes happen, right? But then afterwards, he, once he got his super, didn't really burn anything down besides bushes on their own side. And like, I think two tiles on the enemy side, no players caught in it either. Like, just very weird stuff. When you're already lost value, like, it, it, you just can't afford to make those mistakes in grand finals and uh, i'm not saying that those specific mistakes cost them that game but it certainly did not help and paired up with some more mistakes yeah i think you're right when you're talking about nerves and pressure and you know you, you, you're a set and a half away from winning the monthly final uh, of course when you've never been in those shoes before it's got to be incredibly stressful well, Lona first pick on Gaboon Canyon and Crow available here, but into the Lona, it's going to be tough. Bonnie, B, and Brock banned out on the left side. Shelly, Cordelius, and Colette banned out by Shield Gang. Bell, love that. Really do love that for Shield Gang. Mark can just be so resourceful here. Eve, yeah, don't mind it. Kind of warming to it a bit more. Just being able to get access directly into the mid here, but again, not really sure on the squeak percentage on win rates here. I mean, I can understand it for sure, but the evil will absolutely alleviate that. It's just the blue label stay away from it. But pro certainly to pair with this loader would be a great thing. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe they might go for a penny or something along those lines as well to try to deal with those hatchlings. They'll go Carl, which will do the job uh, for sure. And I prefer it over the penny. I was saying just because we've seen a lot of penny uh, across the region. I prefer the Carl approach though much more potential i think mechanically and to pop off and get a lot more value the skill ceiling is going to be a bit higher as well final pick here for blue label and then we'll have our last pick of that draft has to be a good one because blue label are behind by a set now might be going back towards some more comfort picks and they'll go for the squeak which as you said, like I don't think it's a bad one, but it's probably not one of my favorites on Kaboom Canyon. Just doesn't quite have the range. What I do like about it is that once you get that super, if you throw it on the safe and get every shot to connect, I mean, it's a huge stack of damage. I believe 8k or something along those lines. Just ridiculous damage you can land. And oh my, I think that might be a checkmate here from Shield Gang because what's going to be dealing with that buzz? Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, 
Squeak, like, I, I agree. It, it's never a bad pick. It's never a bad pick anywhere at all. It's just simply that if they're trying to choke point those left and right hand sides, the Eve is going to be able to work around those. So if that is the lane side, which she'll gain in courage, I mean, and that buzz now, which we know can just cause a great deal of havoc. I mean, ultimately with Alola as well, it's just with the ego just able to just make that the hitbox even larger. It's hard to miss realistically here, but as we know, a very high risk brawler. We said it not pay off just today as well, and already shut down immediately. So Blue Label, if they just continue to do that and take a, a commanding role in this mid, and there's two bodies dropping like flies already on the side of Shield Gang, but it's when they lose control, which they could suffer. That's a great connection, actually. It's a very broad, like I said, uh, could work around it. There is an opening still to be had, but with three bodies in the mid, I mean, there's not really much the Shield Gang can do. It's just, like, just trying to buy some time in this scenario. Tom looking to get that pull and he's... Did he just throw it completely blindly into the mid? <laughs> like, no one Seemed shot. That way. No one shot, you know? If someone shoots or there's, like, something to be based upon, like, I get it, but so far he's been just shooting blindly into the bush and just praying that something connects and that's not really how you play Buzz. Very confusing. It's only a 14% lead for now. There's hatchlings coming up as well, so things could arguably be a, a lot worse. But it's definitely been a bit of an underwhelming start for the buzz. I mean, tell you, when you're in the lead, mate, just use the force. You know, that's what I always do in Power League. But now, a chance, a shield gang do clear house and get some taps. As Brian has been really landing these shots on this Eve, and as time dwindles down, only one more, I believe, residue available to Nico, and I think that is the last one now down. So after that, you know, then really the opportunities arise with one minute on the clock. I mean, I feel like at the moment, Blue Label might be calling this a little bit too early in terms of their utility. Great connection from Jeremy, gonna be then going in on the aggressive. Weepy is shielded though, and that is gonna be something to, to slow things down. And again, Brian tapping here. Nico in the mid, able to hold something firm, but the shots are not gonna connect. So far, 1% giving shield gang the lead jeremy pushing up not really able to close out the kill on brian just yet but they might do that now never mind brian gets the kill instead and that super is going to be used onto dawn which doesn't really find much value but it is enough to give blue label a one percent lead as one of the little squeaky bits managed to connect onto that safe top gets a kill though and that one percent is not nearly going to be enough because there's every single player from shield gang onto that blue safe and it's going to go down all the way to 49 percent as shield gang lock in their first match point really great stuff for me, I mean, again, Brian was making so many moments happen for his team, and I want to see a bit more from the bus, but nonetheless, it did clear up that left-hand side towards those final moments, and that is ultimately a very important thing to do. I think Blue Label just utilized too much too soon, and they've got to play the longer game approach here, as, you know, it's a little bit against them in some ways. Many of us now pressurized by Top, top, top comes out on top there as well, and Juking now takes a shot. Somehow the trade is there, and both players turn to dust. Yeah, I'm not even sure if that was worth it as a trade, because uh, he just used the super to get that, and I mean, the, the supers are going to be quite valuable to get back into the action. Regardless, he's in a good position to charge a super anyway, so he'll get it in no time. But Yodas will go down to the hatchling. Todd does get scouted by Nico. Nico trying to get the follow-up, but not quite gonna land it. Nico gonna die to another hatchling. <laughs> Seems like the, the hatchlings are as strong as the porters in the, in South America. And right now, the blue safe is in trouble. Yeah, this is what I was saying coming to the set. I've really kind of warmed to Eve here, actually, and you can just see, like, it's working really well. The hatchlings provide a great deal of pushback potential. Todd, though, here, making moves, making plays, but not able to get the kill on Meliodas, but able to juke the shots, and oh my word, I spoke too soon, did just that, and the safe is getting shredded down. 20% oh, oh. now, and Nico coming in as well. <laughs> He's been alive for half an hour, just sitting on that safe, and no one finishing him off. That is insanity here. Blue Label with some mistakes and Shield Gang making sure to punish them and it would have been poetic for Top to close it out, but he may have already sealed the deal. 14% left. It's hard not to think that Shield Gang can't seal it. 
but they're going to clear a little bit more space. The hatchlings coming in the right hand side are going to be something familiar to be distracted by and not healing up in the process. Tom has not got gadgets, so he can't just go in here. Needs to earn that super just off the back of proximity. And now Weepy and Brian on the left hand side trying to land the shots. They're doing so 8% and trickling down. They cleared it up. Todd is the last one standing. Not anymore. He goes down. 20 seconds left, and it's a massive. 80% lead still in favor of Shield Gang as we head towards our final countdown. We need a miracle here. Jeremy will survive. Meliodas is very low HP, but I think that Shield Gang are already celebrating because they know this is over. They know that the August monthly finals are going to be theirs. South America has a new king here in the West region as Shield Gang will be your monthly final winners of august against all the odds it was finally theirs again a long-term goal for them they finally been able to get their hands on and i'm really really grateful for them to be able to just demonstrate that this region has still got so much to offer and twists and turns and surprises along the way you know blue label as well i think they had a commendable performance you know they did they just kind of left things open a bit too much the shield gang there and the shield gang really did come out and just give a great showing here it's a very rare thing. I mean, we haven't seen it all year long to have a grand finals without Dektox FA and SK Kalea. There's these big names that have really dominated the leaderboards on this side of the region. But nonetheless, great stuff when you consider that, you know, next year is still around the corner. And I think these guys have got a lot of prospect ahead. What a crazy final month across the world, really. If we look back at the Asia Pacific, Part. so many upsets so many upsets here now as well with just none of the even grand finalists that we expected to make it be here brian with 15 kills here as well not only got the six but still absolutely popped off shield gang doing a wonderful stuff but my point was uh, across the board just so many upsets clash winning earlier today as well just everything that we took for granted going in a completely different direction and it is gonna be the protesto pinner champion weepy to be voted <laughs> out your mvp for today well i for one agree but i think brian again on those stats had a uh, a great showing towards the end of that final set 15 kills great stuff from him and shield gang yeah i've got a lot to be proud of today a great result for them one that they'll be absolutely cherishing for sure and Cannot wait to see what they bring next year. Again, not in contention for LCQ. That went the way of Raconic Esports and Data Safe had already locked it in. But um, again, a huge moment. And we're going to bring back in as well, Trav as well, to give us his thoughts on that grand finals. Go for it. I mean, it was a good grand finals. Don't know who said Shield Gang would win. Don't know who would have said that. Don't know. Don't know why, mate. Know. We, won't, we, won't say, why. we won't say anything more about it. To be honest, I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite sad for Blue Label as well, though, because they had beaten Raconic and then SKC to make it to the finals. They had overall a tougher path. But at the end of the day, Shield Gang took down the number one in the region, Datos, in those semifinals there. Let's take a bit of a look at the bracket now. And as you can see, we didn't even see the quarterfinals today, but what a banger of a match that would have been, that 3-2 up top there, Blue Label versus Raconic, who then beat SKC 3-2 as well. Bit of a stressful time for them. Blue Label then lost to Shield Gang, who progressed by beating Datos FA, the number one team in the region. Yeah, Teddy, I said from the very beginning, Shield Gang were going to take it all, and he proved to be correct as we go in to our region null point leaderboard. And there it is, Datos FA at the top there. 526 points, by the way. Recorded Esports dodged a bullet today and a big one because SK Kalanis could have overtaken them. They could have earned that LCQ spot if they had just won the grand final state, but they didn't even make the grand finals. Of course, Shield Gang there and Blue Label just down the very bottom were in that grand finals. Our contention for it, but all the clout for it, the money, as Trav said earlier, you know, who doesn't like money? <laughs> But a great year, of course, for Data Cafe and for Reconic Esports SA, your LCQ finalists. As we move on to our play of the day, Trav, take it away. This one, honestly, absolutely blew my mind. 
Yeah, it was it was a bit of a weird one, really, because we were kind of expecting such a firm victory here as well. But what a pushback this was, uh, I will say as well. That was really beautiful stuff. They managed to take them all down, get Melio just down in the split second, and that turret got melted so fast, couldn't keep him alive long enough. And then just not enough time, he even dropped his legs to get that extra speed to get forward faster. But it just was not enough for Blue Label. However, you know, they did go back and win this afterwards with two in a row, so you've got to give them that. But at the end of the day, SKC, they put forward a great performance, almost reverse sweat but was sadly cut short. Fantastic stuff. I mean, that, that honestly was so insane. And I'm sure no doubt about it. The stream tech going wild for it. Let's take a look at the World Finals race as we approach our final monthly final. NA still to come today. But Crazy Raccoon for East Asia. Zayt's division reply totem locked in for Worlds. But esports will be decided then, of course, in the, uh, in the SPS Challenge Finals. At the moment, they are in that position. That could potentially change, but they're in a good spot. FA Mini Peckers, of course, for South East, uh, South America East, of course, Luminosity Gaming for North America West, and for North America East, that is the battle that I just cannot wait for later today. At the moment, Chaswick in that spot, and United Trick of China for the mainland China region coming out to show themselves in the World Finals, guaranteed. Now, the LCQ race, try gaming there for now in NA East, but again, it's going to come down to the wire. STMN for North America West in South America we've concluded with Clash, Datus FA, Reconic Esports, SA also. In the EMEA, we've locked in Humble, SK Gaming, ANR, and Navi. They are going to be sat there and staying there for East Asia. Reject, Chasma Gaming, EA for East Asia also. For SEA, Team Flash, Rising Sun, SEA, Revenant Esports for India, for Button also. And Fennis join the mix for Mainland China. They are some seriously stacked names as we approach our last chance qualifier. Do not miss it. October the 7th and October the 8th, a group stage this extravaganza. Honestly, I cannot wait. It's the first time we've already seen this in the BSC. Everyone's been asking for it year upon year. And finally, we get what we've been asking for, a chance to really have that round robin and see who is going to come out on top and make it to that final day where four golden tickets await for the world finals. Make sure you watch it live at event.brawlstars.com. There's gonna, I'm sure, be a ton of goodies there waiting to be had. But my word, what a year as we come to today's close. I mean, we've had it all, honestly, haven't we, guys? I mean, this is our last stream together. Trav's unemployed. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, uh, I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. Let's not joke about that, please. Let's not joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Trav. <laughs> Feels like money talks. Um, but in all seriousness, I mean, this year has really, really been so, so enjoyable. We're not done just yet, guys. North America, monthly finals will begin um, at 8.45 UTC. So hang on, that's when we that long. We've just got to get the other team in and get things set up for you there. But, um, you know, stick around for later on. Um, closing thoughts for the day. I'll come to you first, Teddy. Actually, closing thoughts for the year as we approach the finals of what's to come. <sighs> Tell me. Uh, an incredible year, really. Almost uh, always just the, the best time, really, uh, here at the BSC. I, I think I already ad addressed some of the stuff, you know, during EMEA, but we get the chance to work with the best people in the industry behind the scenes, the best talent uh, to, to join me for every show. And everything is just so incredible every single time. And honestly, I can't wait for next year already. Even though there is still a LCQ, there is still Worlds and so much excitement on the line. The best parts of the year, really, is always a little bit sad to be done with the monthly finals because it just comes up as a routine at this point, right? And, and we take them a little bit for granted at times as well. But we get some phenomenal matches from the best players and just some overall great excitement across the board. So I'm very happy and I feel very blessed to be a part of the, the casting team. And I want to thank everyone for, for the support uh, behind the scenes and, you know, making those shows as incredible as they are. Well said, mate. Trav almost shed a tear, but I know he's not capable of it, you know, but <laughs> final thoughts from yourself, mate. Yeah, it's, tra it's, it's Trav no emotion talks now. We've moved on from uh, <laughs> who doesn't like money. But no, honestly, I've, I've enjoyed every second of this year. Uh, this stream has been absolutely incredible and a massive congratulations uh, to the team that won. And obviously, 
It's been, it's been a long year. I've been, I think I've done 10, show with, 10 shows with you guys. So obviously a massive thank you to both of you for being absolutely incredible as well. A couple of shows with the guys over in North America as well. So a big thank you to those two. But it really has been an absolutely incredible year and I'm honored to be in the Brawl Stars Championship for all of 2023 monthly finals. A big thank you to Supercell and obviously the guys at Esports Engine for keeping all the cocks turning and allowing me to be here. Could have said it better myself, mate. Honestly, it's been a blast as we approach the end of our show today. Again, tune in 8.45 for the North American Monthly Finals. They are going to be absolutely insane. Get your predictions in over at events.brawlstars.com. That is it. We are done. We are out. We'll see you all, fingers crossed, <laughs> at the LCQ. Take care. All the best. Peace. Spins are coming out, Pekka, the spins are coming out, everybody on the side of Minifek is now and surely heading for the gas or heading down would be the best idea. Get the Triton in the left Shadow Realm, he wants the 1v3 and honestly, you know, you, you can never count uh, according to this out. Motep's going to walk into the gas to try to out the Shadow Realm and yeah, that's what's going to happen. The RT drops his legs, finishes it off at the FA Minipackers are moving to the finals once more. Beautiful attempt from Mystic Eastworks in this game, definitely their best game as well, all day. But the Porter is going to be our MVP for this one. As Clash take it home with a clean 3-0. Moved at 1 HP. And I don't think they can interrupt this countdown unless they get the kill. And that's just not going to be happening here. Clash are going to take their first monthly final of the year. It took them six months to get to this point. But the excitement is there. And there's one that goes down, Bruce is the next to fall. It's just Lukinas and Blue Label are starting to really make this work now. 50%, it's surely gonna be over. There's no way the SK Clinics can go up against this. They're waving away the LCQ Dream. One last final dish attempt, and it is not enough. Loco jumping around, utilizing that Dyna jump, but actually getting some good value out of it. But I prepare is going to be melting down the safe and that's what i was talking about a couple of seconds of that bear and your safe is gone ggs well played i think that you gang already celebrating because they know this is over they know that the august monthly finals are going to be theirs south america has a new king here in the west region